Hardware partner, I'm your host Yingsu, and I'm very excited to be bringing you guys some quarterfinals action here alongside Lothar and Tom Biz. Guys, I was telling you, I was talking to you guys about this earlier, but today on stream we have the four champions teams going up against each other, and they will definitely play the same maps as in champions. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that might have been sarcasm. No, I'm, I'm excited to see maybe the maps that we don't necessarily get to see quite as often, and also a few spicy picks here and there, but that's the point of the tournament, right? Be a little bit different. Well, it's all gonna, it's gonna be all about the maps today, and for you guys at home, here's a reminder on how the format works. Red Bull Home Ground is back. A Valorant tournament where map picks mean everything. 15 of the best teams across EMEA plus one wildcard qualifier will face off in a day one, best of one group stage. 
The teams making it through will enter a best of five single elimination bracket where the rules get turned on their head. Each team chooses their strongest map pick as their home ground. Home grounds get played first. If one team is victorious on both home ground picks, they instantly win the best of five and progress to the next round. But if both teams win their home ground, they continue to duel out a best of five. The winning team will be crowned the new Red Bull home ground champions. Now, yesterday we didn't see the home ground rule come into play because it was the best of ones. But Tom, all you've been speaking about for the last two days is how excited you are for this format. Now, talk me through why you're so excited. Oh, because <laughs> obviously I love best of five. No, I, realistically, <laughs> I think it, it's a cool concept in the fact that obviously teams don't necessarily get their ban instantly. So you might have a map that you never really play and the other team can just try and lean into that or for the stronger teams i would say you're going to go for that pick that you nearly always win so it gives uh, what i would say is the best teams the deeper map pool the chance to actually win the event or have a higher chance but then it also has that small upset potential if you can take your opponent's map and still have your like cheesy strategies on yours for a few upsets with some of the smaller teams it's actually very interesting because it's uh it has either the dynamic of someone being completely punished mm -hmm. or it stretches out the, the game to actually all five maps. So uh, it really shows the strengths and weaknesses of any particular team. Although I have to say that in this particular tournament, because of the timing of the champions, we can't fully say with certainty, oh, this team is picking their strongest map because they think it's the strongest map, but might actually pick it because they do believe that they're gonna do, fair, uh, do, do play well on it, but they still want to conceal some information from the Champions Tournament. I mean, this is exciting because for the teams that have a permaban uh, and maps, we literally never see them play. This is where we could be seeing them, uh, especially if two teams have very different map pools as well. But Lothar, you spoke about uh, punishments. I think we should speak about some of the teams that were punished maybe by the best of one system yesterday, or maybe they were having an off day because the defending champions at G2, they're not here, they're out. Yeah, they lost the all, uh, every single match yesterday, right? So it, it, I think it was surprising to everyone, but after seeing how they are playing actually in the tournament, and you would be like, well, actually, well, now it makes sense why they lost. They looked a little bit lost in the game. Uh, maybe the morale was low on, in the team on that particular day. And also it's a best of one and, and everything, uh, everything can happen in it. As I said yesterday, if you lose two pistol rounds in a follow-up round in a best of one, there's 80% chance that you're going to lose the entire map. And those matches that were lost like that in that, in that um, let's say, uh, way, were actually dictated by the fact that you lost two pistol rounds. Yeah, I, I think there might have actually only been maybe one group that actually went even close to the way we were expecting it to. <laughs> I, I think that was the second group, Group B, where we had Ascend and Ten Star making it through first and second. I, I think that's the only one we even came close to predicting. And even that second spot was still very much up for grabs throughout the majority of the group. So it was elsewhere where we saw Gambit actually lose a matchup because that was on Fracture, which, as, as we sort of mentioned, we don't know mm -hmm, how mm -hmm. well they have practiced that. And the fact they almost got eliminated by Supermassive players who aren't even a team anymore. Yeah. So <laughs> that, that was mind-blowing oh, in itself. G2 completely out, didn't even win themselves a match, I don't believe. So that incredibly surprising. Even if there are some things going on with the organization at the moment, you still had some of the best players in the world playing against teams that either recently changed players or like with Big, where it's, it's sort of almost like a new look on the team. So for them to not win a single matchup is very, very surprising. So I, I think that the groups in best of ones have already been shocking. And yeah, so much so that <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to assume that was when uh, Mitch was watching BDS because he was definitely not happy with how things are going at that match. Uh, but also your boys, uh, Tom, Eccles and Friends. I, I know you wanted to back Sad. them all the way, but they're not here either. Yeah, I, I think that whole group was really interesting because you had the fact that the team that they beat in the open qualifiers 3-0'd the group, which was just, I, I think that was completely mind-blowing how well London United have done it and showed how upsets are very much possible like you think even going into this next stage well okay you have to win a best of one if you win your opponent's map choice you're in a very good spot to potentially do that so i, I think that they have definitely surprised me i've been impressed again with 10 star and yeah although we've and we've got a lot of the top teams the champions teams against each other so some of those are definitely going to be in the semi-finals
Mm -hmm. From the secondary stream, we're definitely going to take a look at later at uh, Giants, who are performing very nice in yeah. this tournament. Uh, many people were expecting that the latest, let's say, um, appearances of, of that team were a fluke, or maybe just, you know, a, maybe some luck was added into that. Uh, Honeymoon period. Uh, yes, that's exactly. That thing. But it seems like after watching the games yesterday, Giants are just looking like a very solid team, and they have the fundamentals in place. And again, David P with the lurks or just awkward positioning actually works, and no one counters that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I'm sad that David isn't here in, at the Rebel Gaming Sphere because the rest of the players... Are oh, here he is. You just haven't seen him yet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's just lurking around, yeah, permanently. <laughs> That's his brand now. Um, uh, but yeah, Giants, a team that, like you guys said, back in the days uh, when they first started doing really well, everyone said, could be a honeymoon period. This yep. could just be uh, what teams go through. Uh, but by the sounds of it from both of you, you don't feel that way anymore. This is just a top, top team in EMEA. Definitely, 100%. Right now, I'm very happy to see that they are performing very well and consistently. When we were doing predictions yesterday, I think that was the group when where, where three teams could have just progressed, right? Yep. But it seems like Giants are above everyone else, even if that was just the best of one. It seemed that they have the protocols in place, and even though we don't see them in Champions, they're actually very trying very hard here to show that they are a top team. Well, we saw a lot of really uh, good top-tier Valorant action yesterday, but uh, before we jump into the action today, I want to talk to you guys about a giveaway. It's competition time. Yay. I know how much Woo. you guys at home love this. Uh, and uh, thank you to the Levo Lenovo Legion, the official hardware partner of Red Bull Homeground. Uh, they are giving away a Legion Y2525 uh, PC screen. It's one of the fastest on the market with its 240 hertz a rapid refresh rate. The images are crisp, free from motion blur, and let you see every detail you need to get the drop on your opponents. And if you want a chance to win one of these, here is what you need to do. Now, head to Twitch chat. I see you guys in there. Uh, make sure you use the command exclamation mark a legion. You can also go to win.gs forward slash legion or to Twitter to answer this question. Are you guys uh, ready at home? The question is, how many Valorant agents are there in the game? The competition is now open. You must be 18 and over to enter and situated in UK or Europe. The closing date is the 7th of November at 11 p.m. GMT. And that's how you can win a Legion monitor. Uh, best of luck to everyone that is entering. But like I said, that's a competition for you guys, a giveaway. But we have a big, big day ahead of us today. It is a quarterfinals, but it feels like the semi-finals to it's me. It's crazy to the quality <laughs> yeah. of matches that we should have had a, ahead of ourselves, right? First, yeah. Liquid versus Snatic is just a derby that we had so many times or, uh, already in our scene. Uh, but every time I'm looking forward to this game and I know that it's going to be something fun to watch. And it's specifically in this tournament where we're going to see most likely the maps that those teams are not particularly playing a, a lot. And uh, it's in a very interesting moment of the meta game where the chamber agent, the new agent, is not yet added. So we might actually see very odd choices in the compositions. It might be very interesting to watch and see how they are being used in relevant, uh, like when it comes to like the the competition. I think the cool thing about this matchup for me is the fact that in best of threes, in most cases, Fnatic normally win, and then in best of fives, Liquid Always normally win. Liquid, so yeah. it's, it's, it's kind of like if it goes past the first two maps, if you're a Fnatic fan, you start just slowly high, like <laughs> phasing into the background because it's like, I think they've won one best of five, and it was still in a quick fashion 3 1. So I, I think that realistically, we could see this actually go quite quick depending on the maps that actually come up and how well versed some of the others are in maybe the others' permaban, which. I, I think that's actually going to be the most interesting thing is actually the map pool. Well, we'll talk about that a little bit later and have a look at the rest of the bracket and um, because we are showing two games here on the A stream, but also uh, other games on the B stream as well. Oh my God, this bracket is way too stacked. Uh, of course, Ascend versus Gambit is coming up a little bit later, but a uh, 10 star versus London United. That is an interesting matchup because Lothar, you and I were having this conversation before. For the champions teams, you know, the narrative is very, mu very much about practicing their stuff, mm -hmm. uh, trying to hide information, but for teams, like London United and Tenstar, they have a lot to prove. They want to win this tournament at all costs. 100%. This is the, this is the uh, let's say, occasion for them to showcase that we are a good team, we are here for a reason, and we're here to stay. So for Tenstar, uh, for London United, for the ex-NIP friends that are not currently in the, in, the t in the tournament anymore, that was the moment to prove their worth. And I feel like this, those matches will be very interesting to watch, specifically the next one, because 
either London or United or Tensa will be playing against Fnatic or Liquid, right? So that will be a fierce competition. It looks like they're trying really hard to get a British player into the grand final. <laughs> <laughs> you just got Fnatic, Liquid, and of course the guys at Tenstar, and then the other team's actually called London United. So yeah. it, it works out either way. I'm going to be happy, but yeah, I, I think there's some serious competition. Like for both the teams on the other side of the bracket, you know you're going to be fighting up against one of the four champions teams, no matter what you do. So uh, it, it, I, I almost hope at least for maybe a Giants, for example, that if they are going to be able to win this tournament, I almost want to see them dominate Footballist, although I don't think Kiwi's going to allow that. He is someone I'm a huge fan of at this stage. Let's talk about that real quick, because Footballist, you know, before LCQ, again, a lot of people didn't think they even deserved to be in LCQ because mm -hmm. of the form they mm -hmm. had this year, but we're seeing some consistency, and that's something I feel like every Turkish team has lacked the, over the last 12 months. Well, when I was watching Footballist, I felt like they show up big when Kiwi kind of spearheads the entire team. But yeah. it, it, he's kind of like, no, it, it, it does he's sound bad point. when he's like, he's not dragging because he's carrying, but he's like, when he is on point, he motivates the other players to step in and help him kind of achieve like the goal of winning the match. But whenever Ki Kiwi doesn't appear in the match, it feels like everything falls flat. And it's not because he needs to drop a 30 bomb, it's just keeping the team in t like in place. So it's an interesting dynamic, uh, especially when it comes to Turkish teams that have this particular vibe of, yes, I'm gonna get the three kills this round and I'm gonna peak this angle that no <laughs> one will peak ever. So if I win that 50-50, we win the round. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think it's good. They almost have a lot of their strategies centralized around someone like him. So if he doesn't perform, they have to try and come up with other stuff. And I don't yeah. think that other stuff is as <laughs> quite as good as when you're centralizing around Kiwi. So I think they need him to perform. And on the other side, Giants have had a lot of depth. Like that was the thing that impressed me over the last couple of days. I wasn't just looking at Fatinho popping off and just uh -huh. dragging them through games. Like Ambi has been incredible all the way through. Meadows had some fantastic matches. Don't even need to mention David P. So it, it's been a game and a half for them. And I think out of all the teams, in terms of the most informed team, I would actually say right now, I think it's Giants. Yeah, I do agree with that because it seems like every single position that team is a stellar player filling it out, yeah. right? And uh, what really impresses me the most is that there's a huge consistency in Giants when it comes to the, the executes. They always seem to have exactly planned yeah, retakes out. Retakes were sick yesterday. Retakes as well, although Fnatic did drop some balls. Yeah, wait, 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 wait. What can I say? They've got the record buff. <laughs> They've got the gaming sphere buff. That that, that's true. what I'm saying. Uh, but those were the schedule for today for you guys at home. Um, and yesterday, you guys were appalling with your predictions. I'm sorry. There was Mitch Man level of predictions. Actually, Lothar was yeah. too bad. Right, like, you like, you weren't too right. bad. Tom was, I don't know, what I Mitch Man was FTX telling you behind hopium. the scenes. I was hoping um, for Eccles and Friends <laughs> to do well. But let, let's let's talk about today. Let's talk about today. Which of four teams do you guys think will be making it to the grand finals? Not grand finals, semi finals. There we go. I'll say first so he can't copy me. Okay, so, <laughs> 10 star. I'm copying mm -hmm. that one. <laughs> Then I would say Liquid. Yeah. Uh, might uh, copy that one too. Giants. Yeah, I'm copying that one. <laughs> and in the last one. Hmm. That's the interesting one. That's the anything can happen depending on how much they want to troll. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure about that one. I feel, I feel like just 50 50 in that last one, to be honest. You've got to pick one. Come on, Black uh, Okay, I'll let you go first with this one and I'll, and I'll wait. Well, obviously, seen at Astro, so I'm, I'm going to go with Ascend. Okay, okay, Ascend. <laughs> like that. So, but, but you're copying the other three. So you think yes. Tensar, Liquid, a Giant. I'll, I'll say Gambit because there, there might be some trolling here. So. Uh, might be. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, we'll I, I'll, I'll pick Zeke's Gambit. KO is going to absolutely destroy. Well, I, I, think, I think that's judged by when Haven comes out. Like if Haven is the one of the first two maps, that match that could that be trolly as hell. <laughs> yeah, I think that sets the tone for the entire uh, series. Gambit's permaban and the one that we saw <laughs> CNET Astra on. Yeah. I don't think it's going to get weirder than that. Well, Gambit. Stark's on Jet is not a surprise to me. No. But that Astra on CNET was very, very odd. <laughs> That's the nicest word I've, I've mm, heard you use to yes. sum it up. But uh, Ascend and Gambit, they're going to be in action a little bit later. But now let's talk about Team Liquid and Fnatic. As we know, three things in life that are guaranteed, life and death and Liquid somehow facing Fnatic at some point of every single tournament. They are both in. They're very, very familiar with each other. Uh, but let's start with Liquid because uh, a lot of other players, you know, Avova said in an interview that he feels like, uh, while Gambit are the favourite in this tournament, Liquid are very, very close second. They're, they're, they're if, if anything, neck and neck at this point. Uh, would you guys agree with that? 
I would say that the liquid with Nivera on board are, are that team. You know, because with um, previous iterations of Liquid, I always felt like they tried really hard to fill uh, the needs of the meta, try something new, get the new agents, and try to outplay their opponents with a neat plan in mind. But the players were never fit enough to execute those plans. But with Nivera, who uh, has very star strong fundamentals or, or, um, level of play in, in, in himself, he's able to play the support characters, support agents uh, for the team that are required to keep the team, let's say, focused on what's, what's the plan in, in general. So Liquid seems to be way stronger on uh, the strategic um, way of playing the game right now with this player in their composition. I, I think the thing I'm really loving about Liquid is I think that Sliggy finally got his wish of like, <laughs> I can now just get any yeah. player to play any agent at any time. Like we now have Yumpy playing Astra on Split, for example, and it looks good. He like played with, Brimstone and Fracture. Yeah, he's played yeah. Brimstone. Like I, I was looking through like the different agents, and I think the other than Scream, everybody plays at least like three or four agents each, which is kind of absurd for a roster to be able to do and do it to such a high level. And you have the fact that in terms of firepower, Navira has definitely boosted that and added in a secondary orb, which is not something we've really seen mm -hmm, too mm -hmm. much in Valorant as a whole, like a team running a consistent double op setup as they do on Ascent. So I think Sliggy's basically just, he had a Swiss army knife and now he somehow added extra tools to it. So he's almost spinning it like some sort of fidget spinner. It's, oh, it's kind of ridiculous. Can you imagine Sliggy spinning it? Spinner. I could just imagine for, for two seconds. I could imagine him spinning a Swiss Army now, like just, <laughs> yeah. just the whole thing, all of the blades. Yeah. My only worry about Team Liquid is that Scream might not be that flexible player that will be needed in the future. Right now, he, he can headshot. Everybody. Yeah, that's what I wanted to say. That right now in the game, <laughs> if he hits his shots, it doesn't matter yeah. right much. But in the future, he definitely needs to step up in the way he plays. An example, Jet, or or when if he sticks to playing Reyna, that will limit the ability of the team to progress in the future meta games. And that my, that's my only worry about Liquid right now. Let's talk about Fnatic really quickly as well, because it feels it feels like in the past, every single time these two teams have faced each other, there was always one that was slightly more favor than the other or slightly yeah. stronger and I know in this scenario you guys feel that's team liquid but uh, what are your main concerns about Fnatic after yesterday? Fnatic are always the innovators, and as of right now, I think we haven't seen any innovation because they don't want to show it to us. I, I'll, I'll be yeah. brutally honest with that. Like, the fact that, I, I think you actually said it, that there was a rule in Fnatic that Dome is never allowed to play Reyna, yeah. and yesterday we saw him play Reyna, so it's almost <laughs> like, yeah, no, we're definitely not just mocking this event, <laughs> but we're doing the one thing we said we'd never do. It's like, it, it, it seems like some of the stuff looked a little bit disjointed as well, like a few misplays here and there that we didn't normally see, but we basically watched them completely dominate <laughs> two teams that they were clearly better than and then play against Giants who are a very good Ascent team and are trying their hardest in this event because they're not looking to go to Champions and they got smashed. So mm -hmm. I don't think we're really seeing the true colours of Fnatic just yet, but we still saw some of the stuff I enjoy, like Durka just popping off to a ridiculous standard. And I think we saw some great games out of uh, Magnum as well in some of the early stages. Yeah, my only concern when it comes to Fnatic is just that, um, especially in Ascent that we have watched, uh, there was a lot of flaws in the fundamental level of play from them. A lot of uh, peaks that were untradeable, which is a very huge issue, especially when it comes to like retaking. It was a 5v3 for Fnatic and they somehow they lost it. That was like uh, really unprecedented. And when it comes to post-plan situations, there were multiple situations on, on Ascent where they didn't cover the bases, they didn't cover the just standard angles that you should cover when you play a post plan situation. And because of that, they lost a, a lot of rounds. So if they step up even on that level of play i think i don't think we're gonna have problems but if they're just gonna just you know kind of troll around that <laughs> might be a problematic match for fnatic well we'll see we'll see uh tom this is the time we have to say goodbye to you the saddest oh. time on the desk i know uh but that also means that we're gonna have to talk about the map vetoes for today i know that you guys are both really excited about uh have fun with the cast tom this is gonna be a banger uh but as you guys can see from uh, this uh, the graphic at home uh, the home ground map chosen by Team Liquid is a Split and the other home ground map chosen by Fnatic is Icebox. And if we were to go past those two maps, we're going to go to Ascent, Breeze and Haven. And Lothar, considering all the context we spoke about mm -hmm. uh, teams not wanting to show stuff, this makes a lot of sense, especially when it comes to the home ground maps. Well, I'm not surprised that Liquid is actually picking Split because First and foremost, it's a map that they are eager to play themselves, yep. right? But also, it's one of the earliest permabans from 
Fanatic. Fanatic. I, right. I think it still was their perma ban until uh, quite recently. In the yeah. best of seven, sorry, in a, in a seven map pool, I would say that Fnatic will gonna ban Ascent and Split typically, yeah. right? So I'm not surprised to see Split being picked first by Liquid, and it's like a signal that Wes, yes, we want to beat you too all. <laughs> yeah. right? So Fnatic uh, has to respond with a map that they feel comfortable with, mm -hmm. and that will be Icebox, but let's focus on Split first. And not, not a single one of those teams played Split yet in this event. Yeah. They played three maps each, that was for Liquid, Haven, Breeze, Fracture, for Fnatic, Ascent, Breeze and Fracture. So this is going to be the first time I'm going to see them perform on this map here on Red Bull home grounds. In the previous appearances of those teams, we have seen Liquid play double duelist uh, with Razor, uh, Ra Razor, Razor Reina uh, set up Reach, Viper, Astra. So a very, let's say, focused uh, team on explosive attacks, which is great because I feel like on Split that is that brings a lot of value when you can um, time all of that utility from Breach and Astra for the stunts and flashes and then you have those aggressive rays just uh, satchel in but I'm not sure yeah. if they're gonna pick it here. Uh, we're into agent select now and uh, Yumpy has picked in what he played with before and as you can see from the side of Fnatic uh, they've gone with a, a slightly different look uh, Boaster back on the breach. Well, this has been a while since we've seen Boaster back on the breach, but they've decided to ditch Viper for this uh, specific matchup and moving Magnum from Killjoy mm -hmm. to the Cypher. What do you make of this, Lothar? I feel like uh, not playing Cypher, uh, sorry, not playing Killjoy makes sense because mm -hmm. in the previous iteration of Liquid on this map, we had the breach being picked and now breach on this patch is able to destroy the lockdown with the Aftershock is actually very, um, let's say, strong play that changes the way you plan your rounds. You, you, ha you cannot really initiate rounds with Kildra anymore on Split like you could do be doing that before. This is why we're going to see more Cyphers. This is also applying to Fracture in general. But what is going to be interesting is that in the future where Chamber is going to be added to the game, I feel like this is going to happen over and over again, but instead of Cypher, we're going to see Chamber. So this is a very interesting uh, meta game uh, that we're Ooh, currently seeing. Okay. And for Liquid, we have that Raze Reina, Breach, Astra, Viper uh, combination I was talking about. So this is the standard composition that they played. So pay attention to that Viper on Liquid. I feel like it's going to be insanely valuable, although Nivera was hogging a lot of vents on defense, and that can be exploited a lot. I mean, what do you make of the changes on the side of Fnatic? Because, like I said, Boaster, it's been a very long time uh, since we've seen him on the breach. They decided to uh, ditch the Viper and the Rays, so Durka is on the jet here. Is this uh, that, what we spoke about then, maybe hiding stuff, or is this the so. new look? I, I think this is actually more like hiding strats, or just the fact that they will probably ban Split on a Champions, and this might be just the way they feel comfortable right now. But Bosa typically plays on Viper and Sova, right? Mm -hmm. And Viper is a very strong pick on Split in yeah. my eyes. So I'm actually kind of surprised. Maybe they have something uh, prepared for this map that I don't see yet, but so I'm going to be paying close attention to the minimap to see how Bosa does his utility on that bridge. Also, talk me through the nuances on Split explicitly when you play into a Viper Com and, uh, and when you're a non Viper Com playing into a Viper Com. So, on defense, there's a few ways that typically you will see a Viper play, uh, and the most common on, in, to, uh, in pro play is that you just try to solidify the defense on A side with a retake wall that goes through the entire side but also blocks the A main. And then you have a toxic orb that can be used either on mid or on vents. So essentially you can block any kind of fast push with just a Viper on A which conditions the enemies to just respect that, right? And on attack, when you have a Viper, she essentially functions uh, like the old way of using Cypher on this map, which put, put typically on A side, uh, on A main, puts two Cypher cages on the cross from uh, CT and the ramp, and just consumes information if someone's crossing from the attackers to ramp. But here you have a Viper, and she does that with a wall and a smoke that is, can be used over time and during the entire round. So it's essentially way more useful than a Cypher. And typically you will see a lot of teams just do precisely only this on attack. So I'm very, uh, like, let's say, um, paying close attention if the teams are doing something to condition and then change the plan for the attackers, uh, because that will actually insanely um, boost up your win rate in particular rounds if you catch your opponents off guard. Right, well, now we've seen the comms very quickly. Who's your money on? Uh, I would say Liquid. Ooh, oh, well, Lothar is saying Liquid. We've heard from Tom Biz as well. And Mitch, as usual, I want to know what you think. What do you make of these two comms? 
Well, uh, I don't know that we'd see them in the VCT, let's say, on some, but uh, I'm excited. You know what? Because if it gives us something new, something different, you can't really complain, can you, Tom? Yeah, I know. Obviously, we, we always have the, the biggest Rainer fanboy over there on the other side, but I'm actually really excited to see a little bit more Rainer coming in for Scream. Just just for Scream. Yes. There's not really anyone else where I'm going to be like specifically excited for, but Scream just makes that agent look better than maybe anyone other than Niso. <laughs> Well, we haven't seen that for a little while as well. Starting it out, fittingly. There you go, we'll see? Best agent the in the game. Because we've jumped in. Split, attack side for Team Liquid, and a 5v4 to kick things off. They're going to slow the pace completely. That initial mid-peak, there's no intention behind it. They're going to start shifting towards B main. It looks like we've only got one player on the B side, but still three close by for Fnatic. Yeah, they, they at least have the right players in at the right time. Now the Viper's going to make things a little bit more awkward to push through. The, the timing's not bad, but the trades still go in favor as Link is able to find himself a couple of kills. Scream still going strong. And well, rotation from Magnum a little bit far away. Yeah, it seemed like a little bit of a misread from Fnatic that the players in Liquid hadn't pushed out just yet, hoping maybe that that wall was put down as a fake. They were going to try to sneak through, move in towards B main, and you saw Breach was setting up a flash to pop in to allow that peak to happen. Unfortunately, uh, well, Team Liquid were already on the site, so they just easily traded that out, took the site, took the round, as it is now 1-0. to zero. Yeah, this is still a map where I... I I, I would favor Liquid very, very heavily. I think going into the next one, I believe we have Icebox coming up second, and uh, then I'd do the reverse. Like, I, I think that's the thing with the home ground. You're getting it two maps off the bat where realistically one team should be incredibly favored, and then we start getting the much closer matchups from then onwards. I'll also just be interested to see what Fnatic are going to be playing, because as of right now, it seems like they've been using a randomizer to pick a lot of their agents. Yeah, and I'm not too surprised. Again, we, we gave the caveat coming into this event. Your teams like Gambit, Ascend, and Fnatic are going to be coming in, trying to hide a lot of their strats. They don't want to give things away here because, sure, there's a lot of money on the line, but for them, Champions is going to be the end goal. And that gives teams like Liquid an opportunity to potentially cause some of those upsets and make it deeper in the tournament than we would normally expect out of them. That said, a Fnatic-Liquid matchup is always going to be a tight game. Just wanted to take the scenic route a little bit there. Tom. Sometimes you gotta let the game breathe, man. You know what I mean? It's, it's it's all good. It's all good. Big push out of Fnatic, though. They're coming down mid four players just with Classics looking to try and uh, use their numbers to their advantage. So far, hasn't worked out too well, losing their A Lurk that was coming down through sewers. But Link's in a lot of trouble, and he will get dropped immediately. Only a ghost on the floor. I'd be much more concerned if Scream died, but of course, he's got that disengage of the dismiss. Remaining. Yeah, and it, it, he's got his brother alongside him as well, Navira. Just to. Uh, and up a couple of extra alt orbs, of course, for Scream and Empress. Eh, eh. It gives them a few extra dismisses, I suppose. On but Scream, that's very it, dangerous, it, to be honest. I, I don't know. I feel this like insta heals, ability to dismiss and heal, well, and go invisible. I don't know. I'm not messing. With I feel like the way it works for Scream, though, is either his opponent's dead or he's dead uh, by the time anything like that goes to happen. Actually, that's actually <laughs> how most duels happen, to be yeah. honest. I've noticed that. I, I, I would say I take that a duel, either I'm dead or my opponent's dead. I don't think he needs dead. the Empress. I suppose you're a gold, right, Tom? So like when you oh, take yeah, a duel, definitely. you just like you no, spray I'm not. at them, they spray at you. You both run out I'm of ammo. I'm not gold. You'll, you'll mix me up with Ding. Dinko. Like, D Dinko's oh, the one. Sorry. Actually, you know what? He's silver. Never More mind. Even lower. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, part of the plat gang, you know. Is there, the a, is there a. There's, there's a limit for casters, right? You have to be a certain rank. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm for that. hosts. I'm for hosts. I'm for hosts, I've heard. Uh, because I'm immortal at heart. Ah, I see. Okay. That's, that's what it is. As long as you believe. Yeah, you're about as toxic as my immortal teammates. I'll that's say true. That. that is true. <laughs> what, <Well>, Hypoc? <laughs> <laughs> that said, Tom, I will say I've never seen anyone rage quit a game of Mario Kart before. Until I met you. Ne ne neither have I. I don't know what you're talking You've about. You've not seen it because you're that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I witnessed it because I was there. Oh, it was a good day. It was a good day. Well, coming into this round, it is a very, very slow approach. And we expected that out of Team Liquid. You just look at how they're positioned. And it is heavy defaults into a late mid play. And they're currently trying to fight for that little bit of control in towards the vents it looked like. But there's a lot of players out of Fnatic here as well. A three-player A stack is not normal at all. I think this might catch Liquid off guard if they do decide to go A, which at the moment it does kind of look like they will. No dash online for Dirk or anymore. So the risks he can take are a little bit diminished. And this duel could actually work out for Soulcast. The timing's going to be everything. And Bob peeks in. He's got Mystic alongside him. Easy early pick for Fnatic. And the time now starting to tick down. Now, they haven't spotted anywhere el anyone else around the angle. And Scream currently lurking through mid could start to try and cause them problems. But 
I'm more just worried about the clock at this point. And in fact, I think Fnatic is starting to wonder if they're actually coming in this direction as well. That shot from Doma was dirty. Now, what a shot. Eliminating Navira, Navira right away means that you're not going to have that Viper utility for the late round. But Link does a good job of at least making it costly for Fnatic. A 4v3 retake left. to be set up as the spike goes down. And Team Liquid have got some decent positions. You look at the, the control that they have towards Heaven, it's going to cost a lot of time for Fnatic as they come back in for this retake. They've got to be super slow. The stars are down as well. It's going to buy even more time for this Liquid side. But Boaster, ready to blitz out. Fla in fact, it's a fault line in hand, not a flash. That's going to give them the vision. They see Doma Liquid scream, takes him down right away, and then dashes over towards his teammate with the dismiss. Still, though. No. They're just trapped in here. All the utility coming for them. Time of the essence for Fnatic, really. They've got to pick up the pace on walking through. Luckily, Magnum has the off angle, and they'll quickly deal with Link to put this round on the board. And they've got plenty of time there to get that defuse. Uh, I think it was actually the patience of Magnum there that wins it for them. Because uh, uh, there was a little bit of a, an overpeak pushing out initially. Uh, by, you could see Scream's angle wasn't really checked at all as they went to go through the left-hand side, and he's able to get back to the teammate. But Magnum was just patient, waiting for someone to try and get a little bit more aggressive on the other, fr uh, other flank. So, 2-1. to one. Still not an awful round for Liquid. They take a couple of players with them and they'll be able to buy back into this. More importantly as well, because of the early kills and plants that Link has been gathering up, he's got his Rolling Thunder, which is one of those ultimates that it, it's so impactful on this map just because how tight a lot of the angles actually are. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, uh, with the exception of Fracture now, I would say this is going to be your favorite map to play it on. Boombot coming towards Mystic. He's going to get that destroyed right away. I'm curious if Fnatic are playing heavy towards the A side. Wait, 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 wait. Go back to that cam. Go, go back go back to Yumpy's cam. Where did he, he, had, he had Roger Federer standing behind him. What? Was that just a glitch or have I gone mad? I'm sure there was... A, he just got Roger Federer in his background. What? Why? I don't know. <laughs> why, why is that there? Is this a reference? Am I just not getting it? <laughs> no, I don't know. Maybe he just really likes Roger Federer. That's really random. What? What is that trap wire? I mean, you can just jump over that. I, I think Boaster wants them to. I think he's beckoning them in so they can maybe try to sneak through, but they're not falling for it. Instead, breaking it, walking right on in, and Boaster's going to be in trouble. A fight that is in, under a lot of pressure, and as these players drop down below, now so many angles to clear as he comes on out. Solkus at least deleted, but Scream's waiting for him. And of course, Scream wins that fight, spots Magnum on the backside, but Magnum's still good for one. Sprayed down through the boxes to 18 One HP. It's only a matter of time. He gets tagged up again, but somehow with a sliver of health survives. And a 4v1 leaving Navera all alone. What? what? Exactly what? looked doable. What? I don't even know what that is. But I'm hungry now. Uh, it's a lot of cake. <laughs> it is a lot of cake. I've been trying to lose one. I've been staying away from cake. I can't even escape it in Valorant. Oh, God. <laughs> The worst thing is, he's, he's, he's in the light. It's such a bright That's background that almost yeah. he's sat in the dark. Genuinely, most of the light on his screen there was from his Viper wall. Oh. The screen being green. <laughs> two to two. And then we jump on in. And look, Fnatic are doing well here on the defensive side, building up some of those rounds. I want to see a lot from them. I want to see a strong defense just to really get out the gate because they looked a little bit shaky yesterday. And I feel like Liquid haven't really had the same kind of trials and tribulations that the Fnatic roster have in this tournament and it is very important to yet again say that Fnatic not likely to play this like if we go to champs I would say almost every single map will look completely different than what it does here yeah unless something here works amazingly true yes and then, then maybe they'll be like actually we can just kind of use that It'd be one. like a secondary or tertiary a tertiary lineup yeah yeah depending on how things go I it, that's the thing I never although I don't believe Fnatic are going to show us too much I will never believe that they're not going to learn things from what they're currently doing have you ever seen a setup like this in the early round one player on B and 4A up in heaven I mean maybe on an eco sure you'll see that come through but these guys have rifles right now and they are heavily stacking the A side it almost feels like they know Liquid really like to go towards A right now and they are actively trying to counter that and yeah, they've also got so much utility on that B side that they'll be able to delay for an awful long time. Like you're going to have the initial spot from Magnum, yeah. then you've got the star to either smoke or pull them in as well. And now they're just going to clear the corner of the utility. Sok has actually still got one there while running away. Although Boaster, I don't think he's going to mind too much getting a kill with an Aftershock. No. No, I, I wouldn't imagine so. Sulkus on the 1 HP already starting to rotate, and the rest of the team moving as well towards the B side. They're going slow, though. 
They're going very slow. Of course, not aware of whether there's players already pushed down on mid, pushed out of B. They've got to clear everything. They have no map control with the exception of A. And now with 30 seconds, seconds left on the clock, they have to just take the gamble and make that rotate very quickly to B. Luckily, Fnatic have just stayed in position thus far. They might just run out into a pretty open B site. Of course, still on that site is Magnum, and he has all his utility left. 15 seconds. They need to go quick. If Magnum can just delay them a moment, moving out of main to plant that, he will win the round single-handedly. Six seconds. They need to plant now. If Magnum cancels this, the round is over already, but he's going to sit in position, take a couple of picks, and the rest of the team rallies around him, leaving Yampi all alone. And with a 1v4 and... Very little HP and not exactly the best weapon for it. It was a foregone conclusion. Three rounds for Fnatic. It, it honestly is so impressive to me how good Magnum is under pressure. As I said, we saw a couple of rounds ago just the patience that he has. Like, they basically waited until, like, I think 16 seconds left while nades were falling into the side. goes, now I'll pop my cage. Yeah. Now I need a little bit of cover. Now I need to delay them a little bit. And, and that's so valuable in a player, especially in your Sentinel, to not just have those moments of panic where you just, I've got to pop everything early. I've got to make sure that nobody can get into the site. I've got to stop the plant. As you were sort of saying, he stops the plant, he wins the round. Well, he doesn't stop the plant. Everybody on his team survives and they boost their own economy. It's like just those split decisions that he manages to make makes it so hard to play against him. And so far, even in this tournament, I actually think he's been their best player. It's very easy to make those knee-jerk decisions to go in for those aggressive fights in yeah. that position because you know hey if i drop the planet it doesn't matter if i die i get traded instantly if i get that one shot off for sure of course very yeah. different on the b side having that box that's impenetrable very difficult to actually get around there when they have teammates with them he made the right call 100 percent but i'm saying a lot of players would have been tempted into making exactly. that decision and might have thrown the round away for sure for sure and but well, again it would have been a rifle it would have been so much more over to liquid if it hadn't worked out for him this round though a little bit more of a, a slow approach once again for liquid just taking over control, obviously looking to try and find any trips that are left there. But for now, they're still doing the same setup. Because they haven't necessarily been pushed off of it, I think they're much more comfortable taking risk over into A and just the reliance that they currently have on Magnum. Although I believe Boaster is now backing him up. Yeah, a little bit of support towards the back of the side this time around, not the four-player stack on A, but I think that might be because the read was there from Liquid that they were playing light on B previously, and now maybe they'll try to execute in. Fnatic seem to be ready for that. With Magnum down below, the star is going to force him out of position. You cannot stand there. You can't turn your back on Scream either, as he proves instantly. Now they know Boaster's backside as well. The information easily workable. Rolling Thunder buying him some space, some time. He is really trying to stay alive on that backside, but Mystic goes down trying to get in to help him. Now Doma, the Vandal, not going to be able to spray it down. No one can support Boaster, who falls back sight. And Liquid have easily overrun B. Yeah, they played that really well. I think they were waiting to try and bait out that Rolling Thunder. You see how far back the remainder of Liquid were actually playing. Even though they were deep within the site for a minute, they actually all fall out. None of them get hit by the Rolling Thunder and run straight back in to just put the pressure onto Boaster again. Boaster played it fine. They just played it better. Yeah, absolutely. They were aware of what he was doing one step ahead the entire way. And that's what Liquid looked like, at least in this round. But before that, Fnatic had better read on them. And it almost felt like starting this round out as well. They knew what Liquid were going to do. Yep. They played for it. But it didn't quite work out. Yeah, I, I think the timing of Scream actually going before they pop the star, it, it's one of those things that you see a lot of teams do. Like, we, we've had it for years and years in other FPSs where you throw the flash to bait people in, but you're actually peeking before the flash goes off so that then the player's not going to be looking. You're trying to avoid whatever piece of utility they put down. So yeah. they can just use Scream because if he gets one kill, he's straight back out of there and none of the utility affects him anyway. So very well-structured round from Team Liquid. and. We're now sort of waiting to see... Oh, actually, we're going to get a pause. Mini, he, he, he wants some words. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Doma seems in, uh, very serious right now. He is focused in <laughs> listening to his coach. <laughs> As no doubt, Fnatic are going to have to have a little bit of a deep discussion around how to play this one. I think one of the main problems for them is the fact that Liquid have almost got a free round. If they Rolling Thunder into Viper's Pit, uh, they get a site, they get a post plant, and it's very difficult to fight back in. Finding a solution to that for Fnatic right now, do you play outside of the Rolling Thunder? So if they pop it, you're not going to be losing players to it. Do you try to aggressively stop it? There's a lot of things that Fnatic can do with their util as well. Having an Astra, having a Cypher, and of course having that Sky to really slow them down. Maybe even a few Breach Stones going in. Have they you got definitely any have the stopping is? potential. I know you have a Viper outfit. Do you have any cat ears? No. Sadly, I, I don't have any cat ears, Tom. If you were sent some cat ears, would you wear them? 
If Fnatic want to send me some cat ears. Mm -hmm. I know, I know the the, the, the V1 guys. They've got the cat ears as well. They do. They're... Yeah, I don't think I'd wear them. Oh, really? Purely because I don't think I could represent in North American region. <laughs> North American team. <laughs> What's well, so, against V1? Love the dudes. To be fair, uh, you could you I mean, can wear them at Champions because you're not really repping V1 because they're not there. <laughs> yeah, I suppose coming into semi-finals, we want to have NA teams anyway, so it'll all be fine. That, that is true. There you go. Then then you can wear your lovely cat ears and you're not really... You're, you're almost saying like a, a goodbye to them. Yeah, so. we'll have EMEA, Korea, maybe some Southeast Asia, you know? Or just EMEA. Or just the I guess it depends how, uh, how the groups that, are done this it. time. It's, it's you know? because of seeding and stuff, we'll end up having... <laughs> obviously, they make us eliminate ourselves. Exactly. That's, that, that's the only way EMEA loses, is by eliminating themselves. Now, playing outside of the Rolling Thunder, one of the things we brought up and look at Fnatic, nobody on the A side. They're giving up complete control, trying to play retake and fight in from heaven. It's a good call versus this kind of a, an old setup, but now we'll start to see some of the problems we were talking about, especially with Magnum going down. That's showstopper Welcome online. But there's the Rolling world. Thunder start of the round. There's the Viper Pit after. Now they've got solid points most plans to play in, and the Seekers have already been used up, which seemed like a little bit of a waste to me. We've got Yumpy trying his best to survive here, but picking him off actually makes this a little bit more interesting. They've removed the players at least outside of the site, and now they've got to try and deal with the ones within the pit. Now, the first point of contact is going to be the Tiger, which will at least spot a couple of players out, but whether they can actually deal with them is a different ball game altogether, and someone's going to have to try and either just spam through this pit or find something alongside it. In fact, they're even going to throw in a showstopper. They really are just closing the door on Fnatic in this round, not allowing them out of this site, and the spam through is even going to kill off Boaster. So many ultimates committed here from Liquid, and you know what? It's going to get them around. I guess Solkus learned a lesson there as well. Don't spray inside a Viper's Pit with a Vandal. It's, it's not a good call. You maybe hit them, but they'll definitely hit you on those tracers. Four rounds on the board for Team Liquid, I have to say. Overall, the way things have been going for this attack side, they keep on just grinding these rounds out. They're going to look damn good when it comes to second half. Fnatic need to find a solution here and now. And The, the good thing is that that, well, that was a round one for Liquid with three ultimates used, with a Viper's Pit, yeah. with a Showstopper, with a Rolling Thunder. Those are incredibly high-impact ultimates. Now they don't have those. And so we'll see how they do in a more traditional round, let's say, and up against Durka's Operator. Yeah, he had it in the previous round. I think maybe they were hoping they could do a little bit more damage to the economy. Not going to connect the shot, but he will escape. He's going to go back for more. And you know what? Scream was ready for that one. So isn't going to manage much. In fact, Scream has just gone walking through. He's taken full control of the B site. Solkas is lost trying to push into mid, but Scream's position could be everything here. Because I don't know if they're going to expect him to be here. They almost certainly won't. It looks like Durga's a little bit conscious of this, though. He's holding the close angle, but not walking out to retake that here. control, even with the player in heaven watching out. But now I see attack go down, and I'm starting to get a little bit worried. Viper wall up. That sort of robs the information away. Like, at this point, they could have just walked out. Yeah. Scream could be here, so they'll be a little bit more conscious of it, you would imagine, right about now. They'll try to get the jump on them. There's the first, and oh, the dismiss saves his life as well. He is out of there. Oh, somehow, the second shot not connecting either. I don't know how Scream is still alive at this stage. What I do know is it's a 3v3 retake for Fnatic, but they have plenty of ultis to use. Still, not very high-impact ones. They can't really open a round for you, so this is going to be a scrappy fight back in. I think they're waiting at least for the smoke out the back to fade, hoping they can potentially find someone looking to come in on the flank, but it isn't there. The Cosmic Divide also not really going to help them too much because there's two players up close, so they have to try and clear these angles, and they haven't actually spotted for Scream. They're going to scan for him just moments later. The Neural Theft will reveal the final player, and they'll have plenty of time to get that defusal. I don't mind the setup from Liquid. I like the idea. Scream just trying to almost fade them in, but the Neural Theft, for once, was the game changer even though he did also kill someone. Yeah, I don't... I don't think he would have shot them if it wasn't for the neural theft. I think he would have let them Not at that past. moment. Not at that moment, yeah. He would have waited a second, sure. And then I, I believe Scream would have won that. Really? I, 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 be I, neural, I believe he would have won it. The neural theft saved it, yeah. <laughs> oh, look, a message from Kukuka instantly. It's <laughs> a second it happens. It's amazing she's, how she's done that because there's a delay on this stream. I know, yeah. <laughs> she's hacked into she's the always feed. watching. <laughs> Oh, four to four. We're tied up. And Tom, I got to say, for Fnatic, coming into this round, after the previous, going their way decently enough, they win this one, I'm starting to have a lot of faith in them. Because they're playing an off comp right now. Like, this is a tough one to play with. And, well, Dome is falling right away. It, Scream's early skirmishes have been on point so far. Yeah, it's, it's also one of those things where I, I understand trying to, like, 
Okay. Let's, let's ignore that. That That's a distraction even for Solkas himself. They've still garnered an awful lot of control. They've used that early aggression to almost try and get Fnatic to fight elsewhere. They will kill off screen, but Solkaz, oh! excuse me? Just within the smoke, around the smoke, just finding headshots here and there, and I think this round is already over. Yeah, it started out with a great nade from Solkas. Obviously very intentional. He oh. naded behind him. Why would he nade there if he'd already walked up, you know? 300 IQ. Well, Dirk has dropped Nevera, but I don't think they're going for this. <laughs> Running away towards the B site to save these weapons and Fnatic. We'll at least have that operator coming through the next, because by the looks of it, Liquid are not looking to hunt them down. They're happy to just gain this round, put five to four on the board. Yeah, and this is starting to worry me for Fnatic more so because these back and forward rounds, they do a lot of damage to the defensive side more so because you don't have the extra credits you get from plants, etc. Obviously, you can save a little bit more, but the other thing as well is we, again, look at this map being slightly more defensive. Like, in fact, out of all the maps in the game, this is probably the one where you expect the most defensive rounds to actually come up. So I do start to worry a bit. Obviously, I think the composition from Liquid is one that does allow for a fair amount of the attack. They don't technically have a Sentinel player, but with Astra, Breach, and Viper, I think all of that is going to be filled. And also, you then have that aggressive duo of Soulcast and Scream, who I guarantee are going to win them a couple of rounds on the defensive side. So this is already starting to look a little bit shaky for Fnatic. Yeah, definitely not the, the way you want things to go. I think at the same time, I'll give credit to Fnatic for losing the pistol, still being up five to four. They are definitely yeah. fighting for it. They're not down and out just yet, but yeah, they're by rounds. They have to find a little bit more to, to work with. And normally we say towards the end of the half, that's where the attacking side normally comes out and starts to look a lot better because they're feeling you out the whole time. They're trying to sense exactly how that defensive side is playing and then they get to really exec in on it. I will say Fnatic setups have changed a decent bit, but now it seems to be defaulting back towards just completely giving up this mid control. Team Liquid have just walked up and found it the majority of the rounds, and this time you can see that they're very conscious that Fnatic are not playing because they are running up here right at the start of the round and looking to seize that space. Yeah, they're checking for any utility, just waiting to see if they can bait out anything from Fnatic, but I, again, they're holding on to a lot of that utility very early on. We've seen a, a slight change in where they're actually placing down the trips, but again, these are such classic positions that Solkas is just using my new pieces of utility to counter it. And again, we're going to see Seekers popped, and although it gives them some early information, they'll now know that the likelihood is they're leaning in towards the A site. There's so much time left on the clock that Liquid could still change things up. Oh, they definitely could, but they like the A-side. We've seen this from them again and again, and I see Breach down in sewers, lining up that fault line for them to push in heaven. Oh, no. Take Durka down, another missed operator left. shot. This is not looking good for Durka. Let's see if Mystic can recover it, and he absolutely can't. Now things for Fnatic are looking pretty grim. In fact, Doma fights out. He flashes through the smoke, regains sight control, and falls shortly after. And at this stage, another save is on the cards for Fnatic. Liquid are building up these attacking rounds again and again. And even pushing to six, they've already gotten more than enough. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure I'd like this this setup currently as much for Fnatic, like, as, especially on the A site. That looked like a domino effect setup. Like Mainly, they needed Doma to completely destroyed. defend off the ropes. If not, they're surrounded. Yeah. And it, it didn't help the Durka that missed another operator shot. He's been having a bit of a rough time with it so far, which is surprising. He's normally one of the most consistent operator pl players in the entirety of the scene. So the triggered. fact that he's having a quiet match is definitely a worry. But yeah, as said, like Mystic knew from that point, I've got to either kill all Cage the people triggered. in front of me or somehow turn around and kill all the people behind me. Doma, after being forced off the angle, left Durka in a spot where... He had to kill two players with an operator, which is not an easy thing to do. Even if he gets the first, it's tough. So I don't like setups where it's so reliant on, like, this shot has to be hit, otherwise everyone's dead. Yeah, oh, I'm, I'm with you 100%. Look at Team Liquid now, Liquid now, 6-4, to four, constantly seizing mid for free. I have to say, it, it is not a normal setup from Fnatic. It's not reminding me of Angel. And stuff, but yeah, but see, Angel does it when, when teams are trying <laughs> true, to hold true. it. That's the thing. He'll, he will sneak up there and seize it, but Fnatic are literally playing on site. They have two players on B, three players on A most of the rounds. This time, a little different. They want to fight for heaven control. This is the round that they haven't stacked up A like they normally do, and Liquid walk out on A. Seize it for free. They've burned up a lot of utility in the process. Their Cosmic Divide, their Viper Walls up. They've used nades. They've used flashes. It doesn't matter, though, because they get the plans, and now they can hold on in the post plants. Durka, though, doing well to start with, certainly not to finish with. 
Yeah, they've actually switched things up. Now they no longer have the Viper's Pit. They've gone for a much more passive hold of the site. A couple of players waiting to try and deny ramp control because a retake without it, eh, it's nigh on impossible. It's going to make things incredibly difficult for them. And Navira, well, he's having his cake and he's eating it too. Yeah, most definitely. This Operator Viper play, not something you see every single day, but certainly something I'm happy to see this time around. He'll be caught right off the bat, but Doma traded out. Yampi up close will be caught, but time is too low. Rolling Thunder still online. They've got to get in there right here and now, and Mystic's going to be left alone to try and make it work. Link shuts him down quickly to put seven for Team Liquid. Looking to push up to eight by the end of it, and then with the way things have been going, I'm believing heavily, because they still have that Rolling Thunder to start out this round, Tom, and that's a big advantage to have for a team that so far hasn't really needed those kind of advantages to win rounds. Well, yeah, you mentioned that combo earlier of the, the Vipers pit alongside it, and they're one orb away. So if they just fight for one orb, they basically have that exact same execute. It's something that works on both yeah. sides of the map as well, so it's not like they can't use that going into B and just make it an impossible retake again. So I, I almost think Fnatic need to try and be a little bit more aggressive in this one just to try and deny some of that space and I, I feel bad for them because they've gone for the a gamble once more and they've gone on the wrong side of the map again yep rolling thunder comes in knocks all the players out of B, the two that were there and then as you said the gamble towards the a side well they ain't really paying off <laughs> fanatic seemed in the first five rounds to have a decent read on how Liquid were playing, but since then, they have been well and truly lost. Viper's Pit activated, that's good post plant already, and the plant will be easily found. From here, Fnatic have Rolling Thunder to get back in, but they don't have Mystic or Durka to do it. That's, I mean, even fighting into this Viper's Pit is going to be incredibly difficult if you manage to hit them all with the Rolling Thunder, and there's a lot of space for these players to move to. None of them managed to avoid it, but even still, there's a stun. Rolling Thunder is now no longer in effect. They're just about to fade, and these players are super low from the Viper's Pit. Absolutely easy for Team Liquid. Textbook play, and eight rounds on the attack on split. And in case you don't know, this is a very defender-sided half, normally. Yeah, th this is one of those things where I, I feel like it it's just going to be Sliggy with a smile on his face. I feel like every single one of their executions was really solid. Like, we had most of the openers coming in for them as well, where I was just really impressed with how they were able to isolate different jewels, use the Cosmic Divide to good effect. The Viper screens as well coming out from Nevera were on point to make things very awkward. And then it, I can't think of an ultimate that they used which didn't have high impact. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's the thing. They're using their ultis really well. They're Utility is, sure, sometimes burned up on empty sites, but they still have enough for post plans. There doesn't seem to be a lot of flaws in Liquid's play. And I think, honestly, that's because they're coming in, they're playing 100%. They, they want to win this tournament. They want to get that cash money. Ain't got much else to do. Fnatic, on the other hand, they've got things to conserve. That's why we're seeing such weird setups out of them. That's why we're seeing them look so uncomfortable. At the same time, it is also split. Yeah, it's also a map that they just don't really play. It does. I think Ascent might be the third map as well, which I also think that they're going to get boomed on. I'll be honest with what we've seen so far. I, I don't necessarily mind seeing a Doma Reina, but it's not something I expect to see at Champions. So maybe maybe they'll go for something even more wild on Ascent. But for now, at least they need to have pretty damn incredible attack side, and I don't think it's going to happen. No. No, that's that's fair to say, Tom. I think that's a, that's a good assumption. Uh, making this comeback from 8-4 will be tough. It starts with a pistol round, and oh, it starts without Doma. beautiful. Grab well into a nade. Backside Durka dashing past. This is being chased down by a boom bot. Running out of ammo here. Four bullets left. Quick reload, but the whole team's there. Scream already dominating in there on a 3K and leaving just Magnum alone in heaven, trying to come in and split with his teammates, but he hasn't got any left. And Scream, well, he wants the 4K. He's sending it up on the rope, and he won't get it. Lighting Magnum to 40 and pretty much confirming the round. A valiant attempt left. and a good close to this round here. 9-4, to four. Team Liquid almost secured the game on this. I mean, if they manage to win the first buy round, game's already over. I, I do think that there should be a role that Scream is not allowed to play Reyna because it's not fair on everyone else. Like it, it, That's it, a good call. It, it's just like the fact that in that round, it wasn't even really to do with Reyna, but it's almost just like the mentality of Reyna is like, my job is to just kill people. And then that, that's what he does. That's what he does. He goes for hardcore entries, spinning on a dime, finding headshots. Like, I, I just don't think that should be fair. He should be forced to play like Astro, so he has to think about all his utility. <laughs> oh, so you want him to join FPX? Yes. No, he's a Brim main now. <laughs> oh, good damage out of Scream. He can heal up as well. He doesn't even Excuse need this me. Scope. Just swing it out. <laughs> Excuse me. Fire headshots. All right. 
That's what we like to see. He tagged up Doma as well in a little collateral earlier on. And so this should be a nice, easy cleanup. And honestly, yeah, look, having Empress online early, not that impactful really compared to most of the other remaining. ultimates on his team. Spike but down, getting those kills is very important for the simple reason that it stops Fnatic from having the potential of dealing any damage to the liquid economy. Those early duels now almost guarantee a flawless round, considering it's only Mystic with a classic left, and these players are very spread you out looking for don't these believe in Mystic? I'm, I'm, when I'm really disappointed. And Link are staring at him with rifle. Full. Oh, okay. <laughs> you almost said oh. the your words there. Oh, that was close. Six, <laughs> Six HP. HP. Oh. That's just how good Mystic is, man. He's a 1v2 <laughs> in that fight with a classic, no armor, still manages to come out and almost get a By kill. By the way, is the classic nerfed? Tom, listen, stop it. <laughs> I've had 70. It, it is nerfed, okay? We know fundamentally. Oh we went and checked. <laughs> Lothar's tweet, Hypox misinformation, everything that was coming out about this classic. It's it's been a so what you're saying a is roller coaster. You're blaming Hypox almost entirely. Hypox and Lothar, yes. Okay. I'm blaming a hundred percent. Everyone blame everyone's fault It's other not than my yours. fault. Okay. No, no. Not even slightly. Alright. I'm not sure they'll agree. I'm not sure they have to, because they don't have microphones right now. <laughs> so that's unfortunate. Wait, I thought Lothar was sat on your lap. Well, of course, I told you he's not allowed to speak during the game. Oh, okay. Okay. He's perma muted. Yeah. I think he's I angry because he's, I really he's don't stroking my hair. If so. Yumbi gets a kill here. Oh, the full line is so good. Boasted didn't stand a chance. And he's actually going to get into a more aggressive corner. Mystic will clear. So it's not the end of the world. They've managed to at least find an early trade. But it's forced out some positioning and Scream is going wandering. He's going for the P- Oh, he's fake flashed him! <laughs> Dover's made him look like a fool. There's not many people could do that to Scream, but hey, it's worked out and it's given them the man advantage here. You love to see that, man. Yeah, Team Liquid now, man disadvantage. And very spread out, giving up control of the A site. And Fnatic haven't set their sights on anywhere in particular just yet. They do have a lurk outside A, getting a little bit of space, but they're walking up middle and Solkus is here, still with the nade online. The Spectre in hand, ready to catch them off. There's Mystic dropped and a good attempt on the Durka. A fair amount of damage done. Even when you look at this Marshal in play, there's now two players that are one hit to the Marshal. That gives them a big chance of fighting back in, considering it's a bonus, and of at least doing a little bit more damage. Yeah, I think with an open A site, it's going to be a little bit more difficult, though. I, I, I would almost want to see Liquid try and just hold them on the exits, or maybe even just go and pick up some rifles. Like, they're so far ahead that realistically doing damage here, it, it's not the most important thing in the world. And there are some guns still to be found, which is exactly what they're looking for. So they've already managed to pick up one Phantom. If they go back towards the spawn and just try and kill off a player or two as they leave, this could be one hell of a round for Liquid. It definitely could be. It looks like they're going to spread out decently and look for these exit frags. I thought you were going to say clues. Scooby. Do. Be do. Okay. <laughs> I didn't think you'd carry it on any further than that. I'll keep going, Tom. I can go all day long. Do you know the full theme? I think so. <laughs> We're not going to find out. If I had the ha handheld mic, I'd go full karaoke. Okay. Right now, but I'm sure we can get you that for later. Okay. Yeah, if, if you want to subject the viewers to that, Tom, I, I, I'm willing. As long as I'm not wearing a headset, it's fine. Oh, no, you'll be on the mic with me. No. You're in the backup vocals. <laughs> There's backup vocals? Yeah, dude, you don't know the Scooby-Doo theme? Come on, man. Get with the program. Oh, God. Well... It is a round onto the board for Fnatic. As said, though, Liquid bringing through a couple of extra guns, it just gives them an even bigger boost to their economy. Like, you can see Navira right now. He'll have an operator in the next round if he desires it. So it's it's a scary spot. And, of course, they're on the defensive side, and they now have a purchase. So it, I'm, I'm not feeling too confident. Empress, I believe, is also online if Scream decides to pop it, which eh, he might not, especially in this sort of round where just looking to get a little bit more aggressive. There's not going to be anybody spotted outside of A just yet. Just the lurk from Fnatic. Most of the pressure, I, I like that they're, so they're lurking with their Cypher and then they're spread out in duos trying to take some duels. I mean, this is very kind of ranked-esque of a strat in the early round, uh, playing those defaults in a map like Split where you've got the three lanes and well, it's already netted them one kill. Surprisingly, not the duos that were taking the fight, but in fact, the lurker of Magnum catching them completely off guard and Solkus forgot to pick up his mouse on that one. Easy kill for Durk and a two-man advantage for Fnatic. They might get their way back into this, but they're still running into B where there's two players waiting. Oh. Double flash. Link didn't stand a chance. And he's hunted down quickly. 
That's a beautiful utility usage to get into the site. They've still got Yumpy to deal with, but he is completely surrounded. They've got the aftershock trying to force him out. I thought for a second he was going to be able to get three kills, but two and a half. It's not bad. And now it's left on the new boy on the left. block. Navira try and pull off. Looks like a nigh on impossible clutch. He's going to hear the drop down, but the Cypher can will give him away. He's got some Viper util to clear out, but the flash will... What? Well, it should have allowed Doma to escape. He actually waited a moment just in case. Still, though, he's going to have to try and isolate both of these players. And there's a wraparound still coming in from Boaster just to make sure there's very little chance of him getting back in. Yeah, the flash in hand from Boaster, ready to just allow that peak to come around. You're about to have a guiding light right in Nevera's face, confirming that he's towards the spawn still. And this round is indeed locked down for Fnatic. They managed to find six, and Team Liquid will, will definitely be upset with that. Losing the opening pick towards A was one thing, but once the Heaven Control fell, the round was under heavy threat. Yeah, I, I, I do also think, though, that there was a lot of aspects in that round, which I don't know how recreatable they're going to be for Fnatic. Like, firstly, the, the 1v1 duel that was lost by Scream. I don't know how many times that's going to happen, considering how much we've watched this game so far. And also just Soulcast being caught a little bit off guard. Still a good round, and I love how they actually entered into the B site. Like, the pot flashes, like, Link didn't stand a chance. And there's not many times when I'm watching a game of Split or watching Link at all where I'm thinking, He's been absolutely wrecked there. Because it, it, he's normally the sort of person that you can guarantee at least a couple of kills from. So if they're able to isolate him throughout the rest of the map, hey, maybe they can bring it back. Now we're going to have Liquid Yampy calling in for a timeout here. AGL Yampy. Not surprised that it's Liquid after that previous round. Don't want to sort out a little bit of that defensive side, but it was a couple of unfortunate picks, to be honest. A lot of the time, as you said, Scream's going to be able to win out that 1v1 towards the A side. All of a sudden, you lose your Lurker. You lose a lot of the control you have, and sure, they probably still do end up falling in heaven, but... Or he just won't be in the 1v1. I, th I think that's the other thing. That like, as well. I, I do prefer when... It, like, I understand when you have Scream on your team, you can definitely have rounds where you just go, hey, Scream, you want to go try and kill someone? Like, they did, but I think in a lot of cases, it won't just be as bread and butter at that, and you'll have, like, some a fault line or something alongside it to give him more of a chance to the opener. Now, this round, buy is going to be mixed. I, I Seeing Soulcast actually buying up a shotgun kind of pains me a little bit because I know that he's almost definitely going to get a kill, and that does annoy me. You've also then got the Operator onto Navira. Now, we know that Yumpy has played this a lot in the past, but he's so competent with this gun, I don't mind it at all, even though he's a Viper currently peaking mid. The reality is, and something that I think a lot of teams forget, just because you're not playing a Jet doesn't mean you can't op. Like, Counter-Strike does it without a dash, you know what I mean? It definitely limits your ability to play aggressive. Just don't miss. Exactly. <laughs> right there. Shout out Durker for that one. Uh, that's why he's playing the Jet right now. He's had a couple, couple of whiff shots. But... Honestly, you know, it, you still, seeing a Viper is, it's definitely strange because you're not going to want that player to take opening duels a lot of the time, but on defense, it can be okay. That time it was not. He falls next to his brother Scream, who now wants to push up and try to get that control aware that that was the lurker of Magnum finding the kill and that they might be rotating over. You're going to see Liquid reinforce the B side as well. Two players now here to stop them. Yampy having all of the stars to play with. And a little bit less HP. That was very close if the spray was continued. Link able to take down Durka. Yampi gets the, that's the spike drop. Great information, but there's a flank coming around. He watches it just in time. Oh! Raised them for four. The final player coming through heaven. Magnum will be gone as well. And Link aces out the round. 11 to six. Team Liquid barely holding on to be there, but man, Link. Oh, I poked the bear. <laughs> I poked the bear. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I was like, ah, oh, you know, if they can continue to isolate him like they did in the last round, maybe there'll be an opportunity for them to bring back this map. And yeah, they didn't isolate him this time. Oh, and that's the problem. Isolated them. It's, it's very, very difficult to isolate Link. He's, I've said, like, when it comes to the most valuable player on this team, I genuinely believe it's Link. Even with all the talent that they've got, I, I think he's so good at holding down a site. The one time they managed to own him, I feel like he took it personally. It could be. It could well be. He said, all right, guys, I'm going to actually play this round. Let's go. Let's see what you got. 11 to 6. Rolling Thunder available for Team Liquid. Not much outside of that in terms of impact, but Bladestorm active for Fnatic. Scout destroyed. Let's see exactly where that's going to be used up in the middle. Looking for the control. Dirk is walking on up. Liquid. Much the same as Fnatic did. Completely giving up control of mid, of B Heaven even. They have a star down, but that can just be walked on for Fnatic. 
Well, Dirk is making a hell of a lot of noise, but again, it, it's almost part of the plan. Try and bait someone in, use up some of that utility. A few stars getting placed here and there, knowing that mid control is currently given up. And for Solkas, just playing a little bit of an off angle. Still, though, Fnatic, they, they've gained a little bit of ground, but ultimately, haven't really achieved too much just yet. Again, they've left Magnum lurking, though, and the push through from Scream. Right looks here. like a freebie kill, exactly and they'll take it eventually. So now the rest of the team are going to start pushing back in the other direction. The spike's still very far behind, and Yumpy has already managed to find a kill. Now, for Boaster, it becomes a little bit awkward. They've got 20 seconds to either continue their push in towards this side of the map, or try and fall back, and instead they just walk into Nevera's crosshair, and he finds both kills. Now, very easily cleaned up by Nevera at the end, getting the Rolling Thunder online, and 12 to 6 we go. Team Liquid looking to close this one out easily, and I mean, realistically, when we came into this map, we knew Fnatic not too strong yeah. on it. So when, permaban. Exactly. Permaban, we look at their comp, we look at how they're approaching this tournament in general, and you can just get that sense that this isn't something that they're living and dying by, right? They're yep. in this tournament, get a little bit of practice, and maybe even test out some things. What happens if we give, give up mid-control and split, for example? Let's see how teams react to that. Let's see how Liquid reacts to that. It's a very valuable learning experience, even if you're not running a proper comp yourself, if you're just looking uh, to feel out how other people play a map you don't normally. And, well, you know, with Scream, a lot of the time, Liquid <laughs> are gonna play it by sending them out to kill someone. And that's exactly why. Yeah, he's able to fade back what through a nice guy smokes. You see that? He just, he just gave his weapon away. Oh, I'll play him with a Spectre instead. What a cool dude. Cool. Fair enough. Solcast has died, and now they can maybe retrieve one for himself. Scream, he's caught out. Oh, there's no way. There is no way he should get what? away with that. What just happened one to Doma? A little bit of dancing from Scream, and he's able to dodge his way out of a scenario where he should have been dead long, long ago. It is left onto your man, Mystic. I think he's about to walk straight into the crosshair of Scream. I thought for a second he was going to go for a knife, but instead he'll execute him honorably. They do talk about his one taps, I've heard, and right there we saw it to close out the game 13 to 6. Team Liquid predictably win map number one, but do we expect it to continue in this matter? Fnatic now getting the permaban out of the way. Because remember, if you're just tuning in or if you didn't see the pre show, the map veto. The veto works very, very differently here. It's not a system where you have a ban, ban, pick, pick. Not that kind of BO5. It is you pick the maps first. Pick, pick, pick ban, your ban. home ground. So there was no ban. You have to play whatever map your opponents pick out of the seven. And in this case, it was the permanent ban of Fnatic. Good choice for Liquid. They easily closed this one out. But now the challenge begins. We'll be back in a little bit with uh, map Ice number box. two, Icebox. But before that, the analyst desk.
for Team Liquid. They take their home ground map after a brilliant performance on split against Fnatic. I'm Ying Su and I'm back here again with Lothar. Now, uh, what a choice that was for Liquid. They were completely prepared on split and you can tell why that's uh, Fnatic's permaban. Yeah, you can definitely tell, but at the same time, I feel like there was a lot of small stuff happening for Liquid that not many people started paying attention to yet because it's on the new patch. There's a big difference when it comes to the way that Liquid approached the game economically on attack. First and foremost, on the pistol run, they chose five ghosts, no classics at all. And then in the second round, they actually went for uh, one Phantom, mm -hmm. one Spectre and three pistols with two ghosts and a, and a Sheriff. Because of that, they were able to build up economy and play full by rounds on round three and four. And even though they lost it, uh, they lost those two rounds. They were able to bounce back pretty quickly because they uh, build up economy in a different way than we had been building up economy in the previous patches. So I'm pretty impressed with how Liquid uh, played out this map on attack. It does help to a team for a team to win a map when they won two pistol rounds. Like that's a big thing. I mentioned it already a few times. It's like around 80 percent um, of the map is being won by the team that wins two pistol rounds. I mean, Fnatic, they felt like they were getting into the swing of things on their attack side. Yes. Uh, but why do you think they weren't able to close the gap even further? Um, I feel like there's a combination of just having a, a good plan on attack, but it wasn't executed perfectly. Like I really liked how Fnatic tried to fake one attack on um, on A side, sorry, on B side, while doing a cosmic divide. But it was so done so slowly, it, the fake wasn't sold, and Liquid didn't over rotate. So those small situations, like the, you seem to to um, to watch a plan unfold, but the plan is not unfolded correctly or in good timing, and that might be one problem of uh, Fnatic right now. But you cannot ignore the fact that there was a lot of whiffing on the Fnatic yeah. side, and that is I a mean, big this, problem. This one, we're about yeah, to this, see. this one is pretty tough. Not only scream, use the dismiss in the vents where you cannot go while being uh, while in dismiss you cannot go up the rope mm -hmm. so you're essentially a free target and at 30 hp well he should have died right and there was a lot of situations like that where derek goes with the knives sh like kind of glides through the air and with with like four knives those things shouldn't happen right but they do tend to happen sometimes and then you're getting punished for that specifically on a map like split where uh you can snowball pretty easily uh it, it might be a problem for a team like like fnatic right now also you can't do that against scream like scream is on form and, and he's just gonna punish you and he had a great game and he's on right now right so he just yeah. snowballs even harder on the piss around on the on the second one when they won defense he just snowballed like three kills after getting an assist right because he gets a 150 hp buff after the first kill assist, and then he just duels everyone. Mm -hmm. Because he's he knows that he cannot be killed in just one lucky shot, so he can take every single duel, so he can just snowball the defense uh, for that pistol run. So it's way easier when you have um, Reyna on, on, on those pistol runs, as, as always, but it's also gonna be interesting when we're gonna have Chamber in the game because he's like a kind of Reyna without the condition of getting an assist or a kill. Yeah, that's gonna be even scarier yes. uh, once it gets into the game. But um, we speak about teams maybe trying some new stuff here and it felt like for Liquid on that map, they had a good plan and maybe they were trying uh, to, to execute, execute their executes. Does that make sense? Yeah, <laughs> yeah it does. Um, but you've got a round to break down to illustrate yes. that. You know? Yes, yes, yeah. I do have a round. Let's move to the TV screen. Uh, typically, you have seen Nivera uh, use his wall on B to condition their opponents on the attack that the smoke was being put on default here to allow players to go through tunnel. And then a wall was just cutting the, uh, the side in half, so it was denying a lot of information for the defenders. Now, when Liquid was trying to achieve something else, they tried to convert the ultimates on A side because there's more space to take value out of it. This is where Liquid just goes onto A side. They use the Viper Wall to cover Ramp and Haven, and uh, Heaven, and then Astra Stars are really the focal point of doing this execute. One is used for the smoke, second one is used for the stun, uh, and then one used for the gravity well, or the other way around, which allows the team to combine that with these Astra, uh, sorry, with the bridge ultimate. Let's play the clip and see how that goes. And we're gonna pause it once the plant uh, is getting done with the spike. And that's where Nivera comes in with another ultimate. So it's like a chain of events that is happening and is gaining space for Liquid. But not only that is happening, it's just kind of hard for Fnatic to make a comeback because of the ultimate, uh, sorry, because of the utility that is still being in place. The Viper Wall still he being here. And then the smoke on CT is being replaced by uh, the Toxic Orb that is being put in Elbow. 
And that's very hard to retake because you still met with essentially a defensive setup by attackers. So the roles are reversed and Fnatic will have a very, very hard time of being successful in that round. I mean, they had so many of these executes, right, where yes. they just don't give you a way to get back into the game. And Lothar, I'm going to have you come back and sit down next to me because we're going to talk about the next uh, map, which is Icebox. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, this is Fnatic's um, home ground. And uh, very much like the first one, I feel like they've picked something they're comfortable with that they know their opponent might not be comfortable with because I know you love a great stat, Lothar. I've got a stat for oh, you. Um, so, uh, Liquid, they've played the same number of times on Icebox uh, as they have on Breeze. And of course, as you know, Breeze came out quite a few months after Icebox, uh, which really tells the story of how little they like playing on this map. Which also kind of is interesting because it feels like um, Icebox kind of falls into place of typical liquid approach to the game because, you know, it's like the plan sometimes is just put Scream on Reyna. Mm -hmm. So um, Icebox and Breeze are one of those maps when uh, he would actually benefit the most from it, from even not having a, a like a convoluted plan to execute. Uh, but I really like how Fnatic plays um, Icebox so far because we have the very meta uh, composition unless we're gonna see something else during the tournament because it's typically Jet Killjoy, Sage, Sova Viper which covers a lot of the angles uh, that you have on this map even though Sage is not that much needed after the change on the B side with the box not being penetrable anymore uh, but it's still probably the best choice until we have Chamber in the meta game. Now I'm gonna be surprised if we're gonna see something else from Fnatic because it seems like, like tested out but I do think we might see something surprising from Liquid here when it comes to team compositions. Yeah I love how on, on the ticker it says that uh, the times where Liquid have beat Fnatic the last time they were in this uh, home ground tournament of course they were summon FC at the time they won Fnatic at the time uh -huh. and they they did play Icebox and this is one of those times that Liquid actually managed to beat Fnatic on Icebox and uh, Lothar I'm going to read out the team comp because you want to see something different we might have some surprises. Yeah, yeah. What do you make of them potentially running of course on a different roster uh, potentially running Jet, Raze, Viper, Killjoy, Sage. So Raze instead of the Reyna. I would love that because mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm not a big fan of Reyna in general on the pro level. I just don't feel like she puts enough um, effort to help the team unless she's just snowballing people like sometimes Swing does, right? And then it's impressive. But if it doesn't happen, then the Reyna is very detrimental. And Reyes is one of those agents that can benefit from open spaces. Uh, with the Satchels on A side, it's going to be very hard to stop and execute when there's just a Reyes and Jet just moving to, uh, together in tandem, right? So you put a lot of pressure on your opponents, which also kind of triggered um, a, a change in Viper metagame on B side on defense because there were a lot of Vipers using the Viper wall just straight through long to stop yeah. people going from garage, but that was be just being stopped by a jet updrafting and dashing on B green while a Sova drone is just pushing you out of B long. So then Viper started doing a retake wall on B side to combat that. So you see those small, uh, like, kind of hooks and, uh, and, and, and punches being thrown mm -hmm. by, by two teams and that is like progressing the entire game in the big picture. Well, uh, we're going to go to Agent Select now, but you know, speaking of the Sova and Viper, uh, Nevera, how does he fit into this? Because in theory, he should be on, on the Sova to fill the shoes of Cryptics. T kinda, but well, we might actually see him on Viper. It's, it's a big question mark. We didn't see him yet, so we'll, we'll see. Uh, Doma gets to play Reyna two days in a row, so I'm sure he's having a very nice time. Uh, okay. On the side of Liquor, we see some hovers, but let's not uh, let's not discuss them just yet because we know they <laughs> love to bait us. But yeah, and uh, Ray's coming in instead of the Reyna by the looks of it, and not on Scream on Soulcast, Lothar. Okay, so Nivera is on Viper. Yep. Yampi on the Sova. I, I kind of like everything here, um, apart from that. Reina? Yeah, uh, which, I mean, it's Scream, so probably he is going to lock that in. I wouldn't be surprised, but we haven't seen Liquid play Icebox all that much. That's, okay, he, ha he has to go for that jet, because if you wouldn't play the jet uh, on Icebox, then you lose the potential of putting that pressure on B Green or on Tube in mid, which you can play around if you have to raise, but it's like kind of playing a substitute for something that is overtuned. This is also a very different look for Fnatic, I just realized that Magnum yeah, no Killjoy. is on the uh, Sage, not Doma. So yeah, no Killjoy this time. Yes. No Sentinels on both teams uh, if we ignore the Sage. So essentially Fnatic fell back on, let's play our comfort picks for the duelists so they can pull their weight, but Doma on Reyna... I, I, well, he had that 3K with the yeah, Guardian maybe. yesterday and everyone was He's like... He's off the leash now, yeah. Yeah, if he has, um, again, 
clips like that, that, that that's sick. But um, it's, it's a composition that was the, one of the most picked compositions in the beginning of the Icebox metagame because it was so simple to play. It's like whenever a team just feels like, ah, we don't have like really complicated plans on this mm -hmm. map, just play Reyna, right? So uh, a player can put more weight to himself uh, with that character. And it feels like Fnatic's just doing that right now. Well, uh, Fnatic, they have to win here if they want to stay in a Red Bull, a home ground, Mitch and uh, Tom, over to you. Big challenge for sure. I mean, jumping into this, I, I got to say I'm a little bit worried. Obviously, the home ground of Liquid going their way to start it with. And yes, this is Fnatic's home ground, but the likelihood is with how we've seen them play on the previous, Liquid are coming in here as favorites as well, in my I, opinion. I, I, yeah, I, I can see it in terms of just the individual brilliance that we've seen from Liquid so far, their strategy, but I've always had a lot of confidence when it came to Fnatic on this map in particular. So okay. I, I think that they definitely can win it, but at this point they have to. That That's that's what we're looking at right now. This man is not about to double shock dart these guys. Oh, scream, get the hell out of here. One second into the game and he's already one tap Durka. Double shock darts coming through a little bit late. It's all right, they've got the opening pick. Fnatic now at a man disadvantage, but it yeah. looks like they've gained control of B with the wall down. That's gonna be an easy plant. Yeah, this is the classic Link already though, managing to find yeah. one back. And I imagine he's gonna save his own wall to try and go for the retake as well. So it, this is gonna become very awkward for Fnatic very quickly. And you can already see they're trying to play a little bit more around the wall itself. Like try and deny people this extra little bit of space. Sova. Oh, it's a little bit awkward of a booster, but he'll find the kill nonetheless. It was necessary, but Scream is just connecting everything with the Sheriff. Magnum has one of his own. Oh, it's not quite as crisp. It's not quite as crisp. It's going to be Liquid taking themselves the initial pistol round and getting off to a strong start on their defensive side. Now, I know Lothar has been talking a lot about the pistol rounds, obviously, with the classic nerf coming in. But by the way, the classic is nerf pump. Is um, it? Yeah, it is, apparently. If only someone had told us. I know, right? But coming into this uh, event, obviously, Lothar has been very interested in that. And I know we're going to hear a lot about it uh, from him later on. But the conversation was around classics and ghosts. Uh, we're seeing Sheriff spot up here on Icebox. And with the long-range duels that are on offer, I guess it makes sense. But even more so when you look at the fact that this player's like Scream on the server, who's now picked up another one-shot headshot weapon. He's coming in here with the Marshal. Yeah, Fnatic, though, are actually going to force off this. So they're coming in slightly weaker. They don't necessarily have the shields or maybe a few pieces of utility missing, but they do have Durka. And this is the map where he's always been phenomenal. Not quite the shots he would have wanted to connect in the early stages, but he does get at least a little bit of a tag. We're also going to see them garner that early control, maybe realizing that with Liquid currently playing somewhat of a retake setup on this side of the map, they could actually get a plant down relatively free. Maybe. Yeah, no, it looks like it. I was waiting for the timing on that for them to put the wall down, but Spike this landed planted. in. It looks like they're getting away with those pose plants nice and easy. Huge advantage for them in a round like this. And force ball it up. Let's see what they can do now that the fights come in. The scrappier duels, the wall. Going down momentarily. Good shock dart on the dome. A decent damage done. Sulka's coming up behind. Has been spotted. Great head peak angle. The blast back up above doing damage to Mystic. He's now just 47 HP. The defuse halfway gone. Boaster caught in the open, lacking with the shock dart in hand. Still down into a 2v2. 1v2, in fact, now just leaving Mystic to try and stall them a little longer. Sadly, Sulkus comes up behind him, and with just about enough time, they will get away with that defuse. 2-0. Not quite the second round they were looking for, but at the same time, they didn't come up against an eco. No, like I, normally when we talk about like, oh, you want to be keeping like four players alive, yeah, yeah. But you're, you're versing like classics, maybe a ghost, a sheriff here and there. That was not the case for Fnatic. They invested everything they had. So now they're going to come in with the sort of sheriff buy once again. But this is the real chance for actually some cash to be farmed up. And you can see for Scream now, this actually becomes more of an interesting purchase. Because you're looking at this thinking, oh, he's actually buying up a Phantom in a round where maybe there's a little bit of a risk. If he even gets two kills and dies, he gets a Blade Storm for the next round. It doesn't even matter that he lost the gun. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's a, a big, big danger now for Fnatic. It's the risk of the Force Bite. You know it in the second round. You roll yep. those dice and... It did nearly pay off, in fairness. The round came pretty close in the end, but with it going the way of Team Liquid, they are now 2-0 to zero up on Fnatic's home ground. And well, that initial pick, one of the, or peak rather, on one of the few strong weapons they have in the form of a Marshal, leaves Durka down with a little bit less HP than he would have liked. That could have been very close indeed, and very escaping with his life, though. Yeah, for the remaining players, 
going to need to try and achieve quite a lot here. Still leaving Magnum on the lurk, even though he is playing the Sage. I don't believe he would have his wall in this scenario anyway, Spike unless he's just brought it up B. to use in the next round. And yeah, Navira, well, we spoke about Scream earning up ults. It's actually going to be his brother getting there first. Still, though, a little bit of cost cause. Like, it, it's not ideal for Fnatic, but they've even earned up a res, I believe, onto Magnum already. So uh, they're going to have an ult or two of their own. 3-0 down, they'll definitely be happy to have those as well. They need to, by the way, back into this series, or back into this, well, yeah, need this series because they're already the 1-0 down, and although it's a BO5, it can end 2-0. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly, and, and this is the, the danger zone, I suppose, now. Fnatic having the res, having their Viper's Pit, but it's more Team Liquid. They get to actually play this round on a much better econ value than you would expect because they have that Viper's Pit online. At least they're given the option. You can just play a Spectre, uh, put the Viper's Pit down, start of the round, and it's just, it's free low. Yeah, as well with having like a, a three round buffer, you're going to invest a little bit more here because you've actually just earned up more economy anyway. So it's it's a bit of a weird round where normally Fnatic would have a huge advantage instead. There's actually not much at all. Link, he's going to get scanned up running behind them and oh, there's the realization. Doma with a freebie kill onto him. And now they actually have a sandwich almost perfectly onto the players around this B site. Yumpy at least able to find one. But I, yeah, I was about to say, there's not really a chance of Soulcast here with just a pistol. Remaining. Be honest with you, man. Uh, not, not really making a lot of sense to me Spike with how this round went down. I think Liquid have, uh, have had a massive oversight. Nevera playing with a Phantom. Meanwhile, you've got a player pushing mid with a Spectre. He's the one that's actually going to take fights for the most part. No one's going to push Nevera. They're not going to run into that Viper's Pit to try and fight him. He should be the one playing with the Spectre for those close range duels on players that are already low HP and his, his teammate is actually holding the mid and, and making those he pushes. Has, he has the Phantom, changed. Or maybe on the uh, B side and so on. He has changed what food is in the background. Oh, he has. That picture. This must be like a thing, like a YouTube <laughs> series or like, I don't know what's going on. Oh. Uh, like, I'm not getting the reference. I Maybe some people in Twitch chat are. Maybe is this like someone who does like mukbang? Let us know. They, they I don't know what that is. Food. So, I, a mukbang is like with someone like a YouTuber, they do like, they get a load of different food and they just eat it on YouTube and like talk. Oh, okay, right. Yeah, I've seen the dude with the like all the crabs and. Yes. Guy that just has an insane amount of food in front of him. I've seen that. Yeah, there's a lot of people who do that. Yeah. I do that, but without the camera. I don't without know the camera. It's <laughs> not a career. It's just kind of like and You're probably dinner. not as happy as the people. It's like, oh, God. <laughs> That's why I'm eating. Oh, God. <laughs> so much food. Uh, well, three to one. I'm sure but someone would watch it. <laughs> I'm not sure I want to. Someone in Twitch chat right now, like that's the content I desire. That's what I'm. That's what I'm missing. I want to see Yampi just hitting up the courts with Roger Federer. That's that's what I'm up getting the dial in there. Yeah, I I would say that might be a bit of a reach, but if he can pull it off, fair play. Hey, Liquid, Liquid got connections, man. They do. They do. I'm not sure Yampi would do very well in that matchup. No comment on Yampi. Just they they hit those balls really fast. <laughs> it's like. Mitch man wow. on tennis. They hit those balls. I'll say, man, really I played one tennis competition in my life. I played for like a year, and, and then I went to my first competition. I was so excited. It was round robin. Got knocked out as soon as possible. I uh, lost every game. I don't think I scored a point. So I, I stopped playing tennis after that. Um, and that's when video games started. Yeah. And, and also, you, you became a, a jockey in the horse riding. They're always very small. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, but I don't think they're usually fat, though. That's, that's the problem. I think that, that horse wouldn't be running. I, I doubt he'd be standing, I'll be honest. They're starting to make a push over towards the A site. Fnatic moving in towards it, but they're leaving a lurk out on mid. Early in the round, we saw their jet get up on top. Oh, little bump. No plan to be found this time. Sulk is just running them down, and that has not worked out. Magnum Durka in there for the picks. Durka's mid lurk planted. working perfectly. And Scream, well, he's going to have to dive on into that Viper's pit. Potentially, why is he in Boaster's face? <laughs> Boaster's going to be so mad with that. Yeah, he's managed to bypass all of his teammates. He's also caught Doma on the outside. This goes from being basically an impossible position to lose from Fnatic to now into a three versus three. They're even baiting out the res and trying to get Scream to jump in. How is he still finding these kills? Navira's dropped another the time. However, it's ticking. They need to what? clear out the One remainder and it's left remainder. all on to Scream. Dashing away, but Mystic will keep them in it. That is an incredibly costly round for Fnatic and they scrape their way through it. If he aced that and closed it out, you would just forfeit, wouldn't you? You'd just, you'd bail. Like, what was that from Scream? The dude catches Boaster perfectly gets the rifle, and then I, I, I don't even know. It's like he was invisible. So he was just strolling around the different plane. He was in the astral plane just shooting people. They, were, <laughs> they had no idea where he was. That's insane. Three to two, Fnatic. Get away with the round just about, and they've 
Pot Liquid in a bit of an awkward spot. Not everybody has the, the kind of funds that you'd want to get a full buy up. And I'm curious to see how they even decide to distribute that. A lot of players with classics right now. Yeah, the thing is as well, Fnatic's way. own economy also kind of sucks. So I I'm really wouldn't be against Team Liquid gambling here, especially on a map that historically has not been a particularly good one for them. One where they rely very much on their individual players to drag them through. Getting a huge boost from economy from something like this would be great. Scream though has been completely caught out. And while Doma just seems to be running around and killing everybody in this round. So I, I, I don't think there's going to be much realistically for Liquid to play with. I do believe they put a couple of rifles on the board though. So I'll be curious to see what their economy looks like next round because Yumpy has nothing. You can see Doma kind of second guessing some of these fights. He's like, oh, I don't really need to get aggressive on that. That's why I love watching Fnatic, man. They're smart players, but so too are Liquid. And they're damn well skilled. Yeah, be moving around the backside inside the cloud burst, waiting for to fade. And so too are Fnatic staring right on at him. It's a nice closeout. Three versus one. Link, just a sheriff. No time. Snake bites everywhere. The question is, does he manage to do a bit more damage? Does he get out with the rifle? And the, the answer to those questions is no. Fnatic walking away with the three to three, tying it up. Attack side looking good for them on Icebox here. Dark are looking a little bit different than what I remember. I'm hmm, pretty sure that was Soulcast, but close enough. Same team. Same team. Same match. Same team, yeah. yeah. No, not, 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 well, maybe they are now. Maybe it's Elite. Are you the one doing the player cams? Is that what's going on? It's like, oh, yeah, he's on the same uh, team. They're all the same. Boaster, <laughs> he's on Ascend, right? Oh, it's grand. Don't worry about it. He'll come up with the player cam for the next match. <laughs> <laughs> just Boaster, he's just eating his lunch. <laughs> just, just on camera. He has no idea the camera's on in the background, in the kitchen, washing the dishes, <laughs> just going about his life. Oh, God. Uh, after his potatoes and sour cream. Yeah, and what is it? No, it was salad dressing. Salad cream, yeah. Sa or salad and tuna. Sorry, what's the difference between salad dressing and salad cream? Or is that the same? Have you just said a weird word? No, salad cream is like the... You get like this, the squeezy bottle of stuff that's a bit like mayonnaise, but not really. Oh. It's a bit like mayonnaise, I can accept it. I've, I've never had it. really. Okay. Pushing to the A side, Fnatic looking for the control. Yampi gets in there quickly though. No res available, Magnum won't be able to get it back up, but hopefully he'll be able to at least find that spike plant. Drone coming in just to spot them up, and how is Mystic behind him? Why? Oh no, don't knife him. Mystic, okay, thank you. Thank you, the man has at least some respect. And Sulkus has been done yet again. When Sulkus comes up behind players, he gets shot in the face. When he walks in front of players, he gets shot in the face. He's not having a good time. When it comes to the little flank, he plays, and how is it happening twice in one round? Oh, come on, guys. Liquid, oh, they still haven't spiked using a Vandal, and they still haven't spotted out where he is. Eventually, he's dealt with, but it might be too little too late. Two versus three res online. Are Liquid even going to try? I doubt it, man. They're running away. Looking to save through for another round. And Fnatic has gotten away with this one in fantastic fashion. It would have been funny if that snake bite actually killed him. But I don't think it was quite close enough for him not to be able to avoid it. But yeah, a little bit of extra damage take from Magnum at the end. These are the sort of rounds that we come to expect, though, from Durka. Like, no I, I think that this... Well, at least for me personally, is my favorite map to watch Durka play because I feel like there's two strat books for Fnatic. There is the one that involves an immense amount of team play, utility, and strategy. And then there is Durka Go Kill, which is just on its own page. But they had to put in a separate book because Boaster has to pretend to open it up. And it, yep, yep, Durka, if you could just run into the A site and do something ridiculous, that would be cool. And they close it, put it back down, and goes to the other strat book again. So we've heard the rumors, right, about Doma's Reina. We've heard that. It's, it's banned. <laughs> it's, it's vetoed. It's banned. He's fighting to play that Reina here. And so far, look, he had a good round, but it's been all right. He's two to seven, though. In terms of what you want a Reina to do, no. Not, not great. He needs to step it up a little bit in that performance. But nonetheless, they've got four rounds on the board. He's being traded out. No, I'll tell you who isn't. Durka. He's gone right at the start of the round. And Team Liquid have fully rotated in. There are five players here. There's a showstopper online. It might not even need to be used. They're just decimating Fnatic on this push towards B. And it's barely even begun. They're only just making it to yellow by the time it's a 3v5. Yeah, I, I think they're desperately going to need a kill to come through at this point from Doma. The dismiss should just about get him to escape. But he has taken some extra damage in response. I don't really see a way out of this for them. Both players so desperately low. Maybe if there's an extra kill, they actually are going to use the showstopper. I don't really know why, but I, I guess it forced the remaining couple of players out. 
Uh, That's about all I can really it. give to that. It's a weird one, yeah. Just chucking away a very valuable ult and a pretty much guaranteed round. They had a flank coming in as well. It seems strange, that's for sure. 4-4, four to four, tying it up. Fnatic have a res, so too to Team Liquid. Everything else is tied up in that regard, and the buy is going to be nice and even. This is going to be a very fun round to watch. And I'm already seeing a lot of presence from Fnatic outside the A side, a lot of pings going on. And I'm expecting what we're about to see is Durka going for that okay, pick very early on on top of Belt. But at the same time, Scream's looking to push A. So this could be a very interesting early round fight. That's kind of nasty. Trying to spot over, of course, we have the, the little headshot angle that people like to play. So the boost up on top, but Scream has managed to get past any of those angles early on. But the flick is quick enough from Durka. He'll escape out with that opening pick. The thing is, though, the rest of the team are not really gambling in that direction. You can see from Liquid, they are actually starting to move players further into A. Now, this could be because they've got the res. In fact, it is because they've got the res. They want to bring back Scream, who doesn't. So they're going to get back into a five versus five. But while this is going on, Fnatic aren't just sitting around waiting. They're not just watching. They are currently taking B. They most certainly are. The pick on an Invera valuable. It takes down the Viper wall as well. At this stage, it wasn't really allowing them to get back into the site. It could have certainly helped out. Just blocking off some of those sight lines that Dirk is now going to be holding on two as Yampi. Look, he's about to come around this corner. Dirk is just holding it patiently. Will his patience persist? Each t see, the thing is, Liquid are the ones with the pressure on their back. Someone's yeah. got to go and peek that. And when they do, it's Sulkis <laughs> with a boom bot. <laughs> what? That's a questionable peek if ever I've seen one. Yampi starting to move away. And I think Liquid, at, at this stage, time's around pretty low. If they don't get a yeah. pick immediately, it's time to go save. And they're turning tail. They're running away. I almost wonder if that was slight miscommunication. Like maybe Solcast thought that his teammate was holding a little bit deeper than he maybe. actually was. So he was like, oh, well, this angle is covered. So I would just walk out into the open because otherwise that does seem like a, a little bit of a silly thing to do. Now, I, I think in general, Solcast's raise is something that is incredibly strong. And I do see a, a place for it in this map in particular. Like Envy had a, a slightly wilder comp where they actually switched out the Sage instead, and then they had the Killjoy playing instead of what would be the race here. And it was basically just a plant denial setup where you just, on your defensive side, all you really did was just like, okay, you're trying to plant. We got blast packs, we got paint shells, we got nano swarms. Like we've just got everything, the, the Viper lineups as well, just to continuously counter you every time you went to plant on B. And by that point was out, your Sage War is now useless because you basically wasted it while just getting denied. We haven't actually seen much of that. The, on the A side, I think there was a couple of blast packs from Solcast basically just like, hee hee, I pushed you off the spike for point one of a second. Yeah. But other than that, I would love to see some of those lineups actually utilize a little bit more because I think there's been a few times now where I don't feel like his utility has been used to the best of its ability just yet. Like, uh, like our little timeout cam. Sulk is the call the timeout, but obviously he's not the one, not the one talking. Sitting there listening intently as they run on through these strats and how yeah. they want to remedy the results of the previous round. And I, I think it's a good time to call a timeout. There was, as you said, clearly some kind of communication breakdown that came to the previous round and on, the, on that peak that came out from Solkassen. So you'll have that conversation, try to fix things up, and also look for any opportunities to catch Fnatic off guard. Now with five rounds on the board, Tom, I'm going to ask you, right? Well, we know this is a good map for Fnatic. When they swap to the defensive side, we're not realistically expecting these guys to slow down that much, are we? No, I, I, I would still expect them to at least get seven rounds on the attack. Like I, I, And I also think that Liquid are likely to be better on the attack, like with the duo that they currently have in the form of their agents. But at the same time, like I think that their defensive setup is strong, and I think Dirk on the defense, if anything, is going to just be better. And probably Domer as well, with their A-site defense just being sure. incredibly aggressive. Yeah, I, I mean, one of the key things I want to highlight here, Deploying Hammer wrong. Home, is the fact that just because... You've got a Reyna, attack side, not putting up the numbers, doesn't mean she ain't doing her job. And you gotta look True. at how Fnatic are using her here. It's all about buying space. But Doma's going up there to actually entry, to actually find those fights. Could be the first time we're seeing Doma hardcore entry like this. And he's been cut off from a few different angles, now tagged up, and I think it's time for him to disengage a little bit. Blast Pack's destroying the wall, dealing damage, pushing the players back, and they know exactly where this is being planted. Snake bite in. I'm gonna do all too much. Fnatic get away. Still with the res to play with. 
Blade Storm not likely to be popped just here. We need some duels to go Liquid's way very quickly here. And there's uh -oh. a player spawned in the corner. Free kill to Magnum already. We mentioned the Reyna is super low in HP, but Mystic from afar. They moved the plant. The there's the wall. And because they moved the plant, they've got to dash on in and stop that defuse as it just goes across the line. There's still players left alive on Fnatic by the time the round ends, and Team Liquid just completely embarrassed them, outbrained them on the blast packs in the wall. Yeah, th this is where, like I said, like the raise utility definitely can be used well, but I'm, I'm almost a little bit disappointed with Fnatic there, just because like they they got their plant moved. That was obviously communicated across. They knew that they had to actually place it over on a different position, but they didn't really have the adaptation to actually then play those after plants. So it's kind of like Liquid definitely won the round by using their utility to deny the plant. But then I wanted to see what Fnatic would do to stop that. Maybe they thought that they'd stay a little bit alive a little bit longer and then you'd have that flank coming in from Boaster. I think that was actually the plan. But yeah. when it was just that little bit too slow, there needed to be something else because you saw from Durka, there was nothing he could do there. He didn't have an angle on the spike anymore. They had a good round plan, but they didn't adapt. And that's really yes. the problem. You gotta see those adaptations coming through that little bit quicker. You said seven rounds is where you wanna see Fnatic by the end of this half. And well, Doma opens it up well, but trade it out immediately. They need to win these final two to reach the oh just. The spike will be planted. That might not help them. It's a 3v3. The duels still need to go their way. Boaster does well to at least find one. And now they pull back. They're playing a... Oh, that was a bit awkward on the spray. But Yampi falls eventually. This super passive post plants. Screaming a 1v3. Somehow I still believe it's possible purely <laughs> because of the man that is in it. He's going to try to stick it down halfway. He secured it at least to start with. Now out comes the pick. The first is found. The second player spotted Mystic still unknown. Sticking it halfway, and uh, eventually he'll be caught out. Well played by Fnatic to close that round out. Six to five, and we'll fight for the final round of the half. Fnatic kind of needed on the attack, but Liquid could be able to bring it up and uh, equalize things out a little bit. I'm taking a look at the ultis online again. I'm looking at Nevera. That is pretty huge that he has Viper's Pit. However, he has got an op right now. Yeah. That is uh, they got two yeah, double ops none of which are on Scream, who's playing the Jet. Very weird reality that we're in right now. And Scream's not going to play with a He's going to go for an ult orb. I, I, the, the thing is, I think they're going to try and Still hold for him. Fine. He's going to go get the ult orb, and then they're going to try and deny the pick coming through. But the thing is, this is something that's definitely known by Fnatic, but they haven't been able to stop it. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not necessarily sure how well the double operator is going to go, and it definitely won't work amazingly when you have yourself a Viper's Pit, because that is the worst weapon you could possibly use within that PC utility. But they at least managed to get themselves that early ult orb that they desired. And actually, Soulcast has landed a kill onto Durka. Yeah, that res is going to be used. It's been online for a while for Fnatic. We've seen the double op set up out of Liquid, but we haven't really seen any impact of it up until this round, at least. Let's see if anything comes through from it. The push out of mid from Sage is a little bit dangerous. Link again playing on that Spectre. I'm really not a fan of it, man. For double ops, giving your teammate a Spectre you. when you've got a Viper's Pit, not oh, it's just it really doesn't sit well with me especially for the final round where you want to use those ultis up. Right Fnatic here. have managed to find themselves the Hunter's Fury. And immediately we're going to see that drone chasing down Yambi. He gets tagged. Here's the Hunter's Fury popped. It's going to try to hunt him down. Look for those tags on him, and it's not going to land on the first two. A random pulse into the site just about misses, narrowly misses Sulkus, who is again trying to push them back with those blast packs. The shock dart's not quite landing, but the shots are. As Sulkus falls, the numbers now favor Fnatic and a Viper's Pit online. Oh, he dies to the snake oh, bite no. from Nevera up above. Scream from the top rope is tearing them to shreds and Boaster on that late flank yet again. He won't even be able to get there in time. That defuse is coming through, covered by Nevera. 6-6 six, six at the half time. Very good half out of Liquid, I have to say. Yeah, I, I, I've actually been, like, I feel like they corrected a lot of the stuff in the early rounds, as I said, when it came to the A site with their plant denial. Like, it was still somewhat of some 50-50 rounds, but I, I just think that the way that we saw some of that utility actually used was really impressive. And then it was thoroughly enjoyable as well. Oh, that is, that is a f when you see some of these replays go down, this one in particular on screen, man, it was so damn close. The fact that this round has two flank plays coming in, two players with trigger discipline, and three kills total from those flanks was uh, a little, little bit silly. But <laughs> these things happen. Six six at the half. Am I right in saying, Tom, that you're going to see that as a favor towards Liquid coming in the second half? I think it's a very good half from Liquid, especially can. But you have to then also consider the other side of it that they did win. They were three zero up. 
So it was a decent recovery from Fnatic considering what happened. But yeah, on your defensive side to get that many rounds, it's strong. But this is a map again that they don't really play. So now I'm looking at those star players and well, there's one of them already, but Doma, he's actually gonna be able to dismiss out of there. Doesn't of course get the heal up. He probably would have desired at least a little bit earlier, but they're not gonna mind that. They keep the advantage, he gets healed back up and it's gonna be a one man to the good for the side of Fnatic. Yeah, really good bait and switch there. Although it wasn't really a switch, the, the player died, but still, it worked out. A shot to Boaster, Liquid Scream, pulling it right on back. His sheriffs in these pistol rounds have just been nasty. Yep, he gets inside of the Poison Orb, eliminating Mystic. Fnatic starting to fall apart. One that man advantage they had now turns into just one player. Magnum popping the wall, trying to take the duel. But Yampi, despite being tagged up, will survive. And Scream comes in for a 3K in the pistol. All headshots, all Sheriff. And seven on the board for Team Liquid now. They've taken the advantage, and with two pistols under their belt, they look damn good. Yeah, I feel like Scream is just killing it in all of the pistol rounds that we've had so far, which is just going to be giving so much of a boost to Liquid in every single half that he can just pop off as he has been sure. and picking up that Sheriff. So now it becomes a little bit more awkward for Fnatic because they're not going to be able to buy back up into this round. Like, it's something that's a lot more plausible when it comes to the attack, especially if you get spiked down, get a few kills. But in this scenario, that wasn't really the case. So this almost just acts as, like, a little bit of a buffer. And as said, like... We have seen Liquid on this map at least have some pretty decent attack sides. So the fact that their defense was already good, that's a great sign. All right, most definitely is. Their attack, not really under question, but Fnatic will look to put it there. This defense from Fnatic with just pistols. Not going for the force by this time around, which I think makes a lot of sense. Yeah. It really worked out for them the first time. And on the defense now, they wouldn't have the same options as they did then. Fnatic managed to sneak behind enemy lines in a way, and I'm a little bit worried about that late round. <laughs> if uh, some of those players that have sat around, he could have mowed them down. Instead, it's going to be a full stack up on the B side. Fnatic very much ready for this execute to come in. And they'll again look to use those numbers to their advantage. The problem is Liquid have felt it out. They've taken their time towards B, and they're starting to get suspicious. With Nevera finding a completely open A site, the rotate's underway. Just left Scream behind. This is basically just, hey, Scream, take as many with you. Get yourself a Blade Storm. How many no scopes can you get? It's only going to be a couple this time, but that's fine. He's not far away from it already, and yampi has been left behind just to try and make sure that he can kill off the remainder. Not really losing too much just yet. And for Fnatic, they're not really gaining anything either. Just maybe an extra kill for Durka would be great. Again, the same on the other side, but this is a guaranteed eighth round already for Liquid. <laughs> That was an ambitious blast pack play. You love to see it. They do have to be quite careful here. I mean, Durka can do some damage. He can take players down. That is for damn sure. And you see them immediately retreat. They're like, hey, dude, if you want to survive, you want to bring through that marshal? Yeah, you go for it. At least that's what some of the players were thinking. Oh, I'm seeing a little bit of a push up. Oh, yeah, they're going to kill him. They're going to execute him immediately. I Eight to six. A round that we knew Liquid would win, but they did take some damage. Fnatic managed to drop two weapons. Yeah. That's it's good enough. It's kind of what we expect in a round like that, or expect one to two at least. Now we move into this stage where things actually get serious. I'm more curious about Team Liquid. They're one away from getting a Bladestorm in yeah, on screen. Yeah, they're going to hunt it. And Yampi's just going to buy up that Guardian, so they could have a really good buy if they get Bladestorm online. Yeah, they've also got Hunter's Fury, which in, in terms of two ultimates that can completely change around, I think those are the two that we probably look to more specifically on this map. So I, I'm a, a little bit wary for Fnatic that if they don't manage to win this one and deny those ultimates, they could be in some real trouble. Let's be very honest, though. We started out this map with a lot of whiff shots coming out of this man, Turk. He missed a lot of op shots. He doesn't even have shields. He's right behind Scream right now. He's 14 kills, Scream's got 50. Dude's second top frag in the server. He's looking fantastic. He's really started to build it back up. I want to see even more from way. him. But this time, we won't get the opportunity. Towards this A site, there was a little bit of pressure out of Liquid. They get the Blade Storm online, but that's all they wanted. Just that little bit of control to get the orb to now play their late round. <laughs> Much more of a default, and Boaster's gone. Updraft into mid screen, gets the angle and the headshot. Mystic tagged up and under pressure and there's still 50 seconds left on the clock no pressure for liquid to do anything they can just sit down wait it out oh that's not what you want they can sit down and wait this one out decide on where they want to go 
you see Solkus was trying to catch them off guard on A. He's keeping them in position at the very least. 35 seconds left on the clock as we start to see them sneaking their way through. Actually, most of the players left. are watching towards mid. They do have the cross currently being held by Durka, but he's going to be completely isolated by the screen that will likely give them the plant. There's not going to be anything in play, and there's still a lot coming through from Solkas. Now, Scream has been dropped. That's the Blade Storm gone at least. Solkas needs to try and find some impact here because the rest of his team are going to come under some serious pressure, and he's actually been flanked out by Dome. He's aware of the position, and that duel was close, but close doesn't work versus Arena. Yeah, absolutely. You get her low, it doesn't matter. He'll back up and look at Delma. 149 Ooh. HP, but it's not enough. Not when you're up against the Sheriff. Navera taking him down, and although Mystic's fighting back in, how are you going to get this defuse? Two right, versus you. two. Time not on their side, Nowhere and the flank coming through from Navera. Hunter's Fury to buy him that little bit of extra time, even holding on to the second pulse. And now, as Durka goes in for it, little does he know Navera is coming up behind. And that was Last almost very standing. awkward. It should now be locked down. Not even halfway to fuse. Mystic has no time to get this done. Even getting out of there is going to be impossible <laughs> for both of them. He kills Navera, but he dies to the spike after. Nine to six. Team Liquid are steaming into the lead. And remember, this is Fnatic's home ground. If they lose this, because Liquid won their home ground earlier, they are out of the tournament. They're gone. Yeah, that will be it. And, and in fairly surprising fashion, I have to say that round was beautifully played by Liquid. They, they played like for the early... beautiful man on your screen. Sure. Who will be eliminated soon if they don't... Whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> uh, we, we, don't, we don't want any any sort of talk like that, okay? For that round in general, the fact that they play for the Blade Storm, you get the aggressive pick from Scream, they move into the site, they have the Hunter's Fury played just to buy time for the Lurk of Nevera. That, that was perfect from Liquid, even though they lose some players. And now we need to see a same response from Durkrit. It just hasn't been there. Not able to get anything done. Two players picked off. The last only on the site. It's not going to get anything either. A correction of aim, and they're already waiting for the flank. Nice shot from Magnum, though. Yeah, it's, I'm not going to get my hopes up just yet. Good position out of Yambi. Easily closing that. 10 6 we go. Another round that I think plays out pretty much as we expect. But with a four round lead. An attack side from Liquid that we know has always been strong and is looking very strong today in particular. Look at Scream's ability to just go out and take those duels. The late round out of Yampi and Navera's lurks have been fantastic. It feels like at this point, Fnatic, I mean, they could definitely use a pause right here. They're on the ropes. I, I think that's the, the fairest way to say it. Like, yeah. losing the round that was a bonus, sure, it had a couple of ultimates. That That's not great. Do you yet to actually put one on the board on your defensive side? And well, they're going to try and get a little bit aggressive, but it's failed miserably. It's going to be down to Dark, and he dashes through the snake bite. Obviously, he was incredibly low for that to actually kill him off. You got Boaster now playing an operator, not the only thing I thought I'd be saying too much within this matchup. And he needs to perform with it. He's got a little bit of support. Navera on the other side is going to spot him out. And they're already sneaking down in the other direction. Link taking so much ground away. And you can see there's almost a full rotation in from the side of Fnatic. They're not going to have anybody here. And the wall's about to go up. Yeah, they're, they're starting to really seize that control. And it, it feels like Fnatic kind of being played like a fiddle on this one. The recon drone coming down through middle. Catching absolutely nothing. Plant comes through. Navera's just going to tank it. Uh, it's a little bit of HP loss. He's going to be quite low, but a heal can come through, and Viper's Pit active. That should be round locked in. Fnatic fighting their way back into this one is going to be very, very tough, mainly because, Tom, we saw that drone used up a moment ago to go down middle. That's valuable util out of the question now, and how do you fight back into the Viper's Pit without it? There are certainly ways, but Fnatic don't want to risk it. They're running out of here to save these weapons, especially that Operator through to the next round, and that means conceding an 11th. It feels like disaster is imminent at this stage. Yeah, I, I think there'll have to be a drastic change, a hero play, something to bring them back. And honestly, the, the way that Liquid are actually playing is so methodical that even that might not necessarily be enough. Like, I, I just think that they're playing these rounds expertly in the... Never mind. Yeah, I really I really like the, the expert play there from Devera. <laughs> Take it back. Into the spike. They're making no mistakes, Tom, <laughs> and that's what we love. 
zero mistakes made. Uh, they're not making mistakes when the round is actually on. <laughs> right, <laughs> like, yeah, they what, wait for after. Like when the spike goes off, that's when they decide to just jump straight into it. But yeah, it's going to be a pause out. Mini given an opportunity to try and talk things through. If he does, then I'll be a little bit worried for the integrity of the tournament. I, I know that we are ve fairly close to the Fnatic offices, well, but let's, if let's, he can hear you from yeah. there, that's that's a bit weird. Clear. We're about we're about a two minute walk away. So yeah, it's, yeah. You know, they're not next door. They're not here in our. Oh look, he's behind him. <laughs> <laughs> Four players from Giants just turn round. <laughs> Dude, I remember, I remember casting some lines. So like, what were we talking like battalion, CS, you know that sort of stuff. And we were like, the players are just in front of us. So like, w if we leaned over our desk, we could touch some of the players. It was like, well, this, yeah, I, this is kind of messed up. <laughs> I, I had an event that shall not be named where they they made a mistake of they put our monitors next to a big window. And nice. then, and then later they went. We're having to cover the window because the players can see the yeah, reflection naturally. of the entire monitor. Actually, you know what? Shout out the the recently dropped FPX roster in CS:GO. Um, the previous Godsend, and uh, I think there were no Slide chance before that. Uh, Michael Ayla's old team of Madden and Zan and the boys. Um, oh, Godsend, right? They, they were Godsend. They're FPX now. Well, they yeah, were, yeah. and then FPX just uh, pulled out of CS. So. Keep up. Uh, those guys were super honest, man. I remember doing an event. Uh, we play Invitational, and um, these dudes. Whoops. These dudes actually called out. Like they, they literally paused the game to be like, "Hey, just so you know, we, from this angle, we can see the screen. We don't, <laughs> don't want to play with that temptation." I was like, "You guys are awesome." Because they, they were winning. That was a big event. Zero. That was like two hundred K or something. It was a big event, yeah, and they yeah. were like, they were honest enough. And then you have some coaches who use books to cheat. So you know the contrast of good people versus. I'm not gonna say what I think of the others on this stream. Eleven to six, we go. Team Liquid really starting to build up this momentum in the series, and we're looking at Fnatic for an answer. We want to see something coming out of these guys because we know they're capable but we also have that caveat that they're not coming in at 100 percent right here they are looking to experiment they're looking to learn and so far tom that there hasn't really been that much to, to write home about in terms of fanatics performance in this red bull home ground event no no like some early well destruction of fpx and anubis but when it came to Giants, it was a great nice shot from Durkalo. Avoiding the drone, able to escape out of there, and he will take down Scream in response. Isn't going to be anything to bring him back either, at least just yet. And in fact, they're going to fall back off of the position left. of Navira. Now, they are watching for this. Doma is facing that direction, but he won't win the battle. He even expected him to be there, still able to find absolutely nothing. Mystic has to kill him off, and he will. Just about gets the right timing of the player dropping down, leaving it into a two versus four scenario. Afterplant looking likely. The snake bite again, gonna do at least a little bit of damage to Link and maybe try and kill him off. In fact, maybe a bit of an oversight for Mystic. Oh, Sulka's going up on top of yellow with the players that are left. That won't be expected. He has a good off angle, but a 1v3 to win out. And the first shot lands for Durka. There's Fnatic winning that defensive round at long last. They definitely needed this one, or Liquid would walk away with the series way too easily. But now, 11 to 7, things start to look that little bit more doable. They've won this one in a semi convincing manner. We just need to see it repeated a couple more times, but I'm sure Liquid have got more than one idea up their sleeve. Yeah, they've also got more than enough credits to just buy us straight back into this round. So we're going to see the operator this time onto Yumpy. This is the other thing as well that is so terrifying about this Liquid roster is they can just switch up if, if one player doesn't really fancy playing the Opera. So Navira's obviously started lurking over the last few rounds, so now they'll switch up to the Yumpies doing it. Both of them are world-class Operator players, so th there's so much to consider when playing up against this team, and Durka almost has to try and gamble who he's going to be facing against in some of these rounds, and thus where they might be playing. Well, for Team Liquid, playing towards the A site is the way to go. Dirk is waiting. I think that drone go by and again, catching that a opening duel to Scream. Not even taking the damage this time as he fades out. Sage Hill still going to be online you coming in the late stage of the round, but Arez line. is there for Team Liquid. Scream back online and ready to play as the plant comes in. Same position as we've seen many, many times before, but the shock darts are ready for that. They're dealing damage, and that player's now slowed in, kept towards the backside for a moment. Fnatic still need to push in on the back of it, though. We're going to see the drone clear the close angle of Solka. It's actually leaving in quite an awkward spot. He fights it and does actually manage to get a one-for-one -one trade. And although there is a red Scream has just started oh! popping heads three in a row. Oh! And he's going for the whole team. Four now down for Scream. 
He's looking to put the final nail in the coffin, and there is only one man remaining in his way. It's the ace out from Scream, and you can even see him on the camera. He knows what he's just done. Just that deal thing, isn't it? Absolutely insane. Five round advantage now for Team Liquid, and you know when you when you got Scream. Hey, there we go. There we go. Get that little acknowledgement, play to the camera. I, I like the idea I that he probably screen. just went, good good res, bro. Good res. <laughs> yeah. so you, you know what, man? That was a great res. Link's walking out with so many assists now. <laughs> he, is, he is racking it up. He's got almost as many assists as kills, because all you got to do is heal Scream. You just, you're just <laughs> knocking it out of the park. <laughs> just like, pocket no, I would do that. Know? I was like, Scream, technically way. I assisted you on all of those kills, so you know. Oh. Confidence out of him now. Blade storm popped. Only one blade left. Damage done at least. Most still got the orb though. He did indeed. Healing. Now give me those. Give me those assists, bro. Give me those assists. Give me the You've been tagged. Don't scream. <laughs> no, scream. You low. You need to heal. He's like, I'm uh, 98 HP. It's okay. He's like, no, no, no. I'll heal you, bro. It's okay. <laughs> Six assists this round. Easy. Mystic. Jump spotting it. He's been doing this all game. The wall going up from him. He has a little bit of extra cover to play with. Viper's Pit going to be activated, but Nevera's hunting him down right away, closing in the distance, looking to take this fight, and he's going to walk straight through it. Now Nevera has the control. They know that this player's not playing there, and no, oh, oh, the showstopper out of Solkis. He hunts him down, but Scream falls. No res to bring him back into this round. He aced the previous. This time, someone else needs to step it up. The Hunter's Fury will stop the plans at least for a moment. It gets some tags, some glorious damage, but no follow-up to eliminate these players. Liquid still have a 4v4. Spike and planted. with the reload coming in, they're able to get out of there after planting the spike. Sulkus lurking around aggressively has been spotted. They'll look to just absolutely drop on him. Wow, but the spacing is terrible. He's able to isolate every single duel. They're not even reacting to the fact that he's down below on the site. And a 3v2 emerges. The blade storm out of Durka might just buy them back in. And indeed it does. An aggressive push, a big play, and an eighth round for Fnatic just about found. Yeah, we finally see the double Ds of Fnatic actually coming up in combo because yeah. they've been a little darker and Doma. Ah, well, what did yes. you what did you think I meant? Double duelists. Oh, okay, was, of course. I, I was just wondering because I was like, hey, they play uh, double duelists a lot, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, it, right just, yeah. To see them to see them do so well in this round, a fantastic retake. Here. Something I always like to watch. I'm trying real hard right now. <laughs> <laughs> Real hard. <laughs> Did not say what I want to. But okay. We know what Tom likes what to watch. To Double duelists. Mm. Always. <clears throat> Dome and Durka. Whatever, whatever you want to call it. 12 to 8. Four rounds between them. It's a big comeback for Fnatic. We know the hero players are there for Team Liquid at times. Those aces out of scream. They're going to have to be so, so cautious as we move forward here on the Fnatic side. And while well, Magnum, he's... Not airing on the side of caution at all. Walking down, but Scream is ready. Sulk is creeping up behind. Will completely blindside Boaster and even catch Durka. This could be it. Done and dusted for Fnatic. Doma needs to go absolutely nuclear, and he'll be shut down as well. Mystic's the last man alive. Spotted coming up behind. That snake bite might do well to help him because he's only got a Spectre to play with, and realistically, you can't expect him to 1v4 at this Kinda stage. Made them in. <laughs> oh, it's not looking good at all, is it? He'll have to go through his own snake bite, even on timing alone. This is going to be an impossible round, and I think with that, we can safely say that Liquid have locked this one down. Flank caught at least on screen. Yampi going to try a little bit more, but he, he physically can't win the round anymore. It's, it's so far gone as long as they don't just run at him and they're buying the time. Look, Yampi's just playing with him right now. Running that clock all the way down, then taking him out for 13-8. The home ground of Fnatic goes the way of Team Liquid. And so this best of five is no more. Two to zero, we close things out. Oh, what a fantastic game this has been from Team Liquid. Yeah, I, I've been really impressed, especially this being their normal partner band. The fact that they've still been able to perform on it to a, a decent level scream. I, one of the thing, criticisms that we always have is that his Blade Storm at times was not as good as some of the other top Jets. I feel like that's something he's definitely fixed as of recent. Solkas is raised, especially on the attack, looked pretty decent and had some at least opportunities to like deny sure. plants and sure. stuff. So I still feel like Liquid are, are testing a few things out themselves, but they look like a, a stellar squad still within this tournament. And I believe still yet to drop a single map. I think that's the thing. Realistically, you've got Liquid coming in, playing their A game. They're looking to, sure, experiment with a couple of things, but for the most part, this is them 
on what they'd be working on for sure. Putting it to the test. For Fnatic, they've got their A plan, they've got their B plan. We're probably seeing like D to E, somewhere around there. They're pulling oh, it dude. out, not managing it. Well, I, I would hope at least by the time that we get to Champions, that ain't going to be the Fnatic we see, and I'm almost certain it won't be. Let's throw things over to the analyst desk, though, to get their thoughts on this series and on Liquid moving forward. Thank you very much, uh, Mitch and Tom. Now clean from Team Liquid, uh, Lothar, and it's going to be scary for those international teams if this is the Liquid that shows up in, uh, in four weeks' time. A very strong fundamental play coming from Liquid, something that really makes my heart melt because I love seeing teams that are actually good on trades, good on taking control, having map control, having crisp comps, because you can see how the team reacts from how they move on the map. And this is something we can't really say right now about Fnatic. They seem like to be just not in sync or even in discord uh when it comes to, like the way they play the game and you can uh, literally pinpoint a lot of rounds where a player is being caught in a one view in an isolated one v one with no trade available even though there's a player nearby next to him those problems needs to be fixed for sure the question is just is fnatic right now just picking it more loosely or are they actually working on this uh, to have it fixed for champions i mean this is one of the teams that they've played liquid so many times and in the past they don't really have that many issues with dealing with scream they're, they're, they're able to shut him down but uh, why do you think they just couldn't today because scream won them so many rounds rounds that fnatic should not have lost well, I would say that Scream, I had a lot of criticism going towards Scream when it, when it comes to the utility usage that you typically see from him, right? Uh, especially on Jet. On Reyna, there's not that many problems with it because, well, you don't really have that much utility in the first place. But when it comes to Jet, uh, on maps that require the Jet to be very crisp on the dashes on the side to, for doing an execute, like on Split, like on Bind, uh, like on Ascent, um, those were the criticism towards Scream, but on Icebook, it's not really that much needed. So he's able to shine because of his um, just crisp aim, as you can see here in this uh, particular clip when he just gets an ace after being rezzed. So he wasn't even on the map in the, at some point. Uh, and, and, and that's hard to stop when you have a player that gets a jail, uh, get out of jail for free card mm -hmm. on a jet, when he can just literally make one mistake and just go back and reset and learn from it. So it's very scary to have a Scream that is actually learning a lot when it comes to the micro, um, micro plays from coming from Valorant, which you never had in CS. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I know you're a big fan of Jet in general. Uh, yes. Would you like to see Scream kind of just stick with that one Jet? Because every team has like uh, a Jet main, a Jet one trick at this point mm -hmm. that only plays Jet. Would you like to? Uh, would you like Scream to be that for Team Liquid? Well, if that's gonna be Scream, then he still has a lot to learn when it comes to like the attack side. That's for sure. On defense, there's like not much you can say because it's just rather just taking a shot and just dashing away after it. Right? It's pretty automatic on attack it's way more complicated to be in sync with your team. Uh, and I feel like every team right now in Valorant needs that jet player, um, specifically for the attack phase, because otherwise you're lacking the chaos and the pressure that you need to put on your opponents to be effective. And the question is, how do you put uh, an, enough time to practice that? especially if you have like two players that can play Jet in one team, right? And also what happens if uh, Riot decides to nerf Jet, right? What happens then? Even more. <laughs> I, I think it's going to be necessary because I'm going to check the, the, the stats after day one, day two, day three, then four when it comes to the Jet picks, but I feel like it's gravitating towards 90%. Uh, and it, it's going to be a problem at some point, you know? Yeah, well now moving forward, how scary do you think this Liquid team is going to be uh, for all the, all the other ones who are remaining in this tournament? Because they're looking like one of the favorites, especially after a little bit of a shaky performance from Gambit as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I would still put Gambit on the, let's say, favorite mm -hmm. uh, spot uh, when it comes to this tournament, but Liquid looks like the strongest contender uh, against Gambit. Ascent, hard to say because Jet, uh, sorry, Ascent on... Uh, seen that with, with Astro was a little bit uh, not uh, indicative uh, of how they play normally, right? So, uh, but Liquid right now, I, I would say they look crisp, they, they have their plan in place, and even though they might, pl uh, may, may, might play a map that is not typically their pick, they are looking strong on it just because of the fundamental level of play they represent. 
Yeah, I do believe uh, Ten Star. I think they also won their uh, series against London United. I think I they surprised? did. Not really. Um, which means <laughs> that Liquid are going up against Ten Star next. That's uh, going to be a, that? that's going to be a sick match for sure. As you can remember from yesterday, I was saying that Ten Star most likely going to get out of the group. They looked very yeah. strong uh, in the previous VCT stages. And then even though they didn't go high up, because they're typically, uh, if I'm not mistaken, they started playing together in September uh, this year. So it's a fresh team. Uh, they are looking like a very strong team. And uh, I got to talk about Fnatic a little bit as well. Uh, Mitch and Tom, they were talking about how this is probably not the Fnatic we're going to see at Champions. I hope not uh, for the sake of EMEA uh, as well. And I know they want to get their revenge on Sentinels too. And you got to step up your game if you want to go up against NA. Well, you can't definitely look like this when you're going to yeah. go to Champions. That's, that's for sure that we can settle on, right? It's just a question, is this a Fnatic that tries to try out new things, maybe be a little bit more loose? Uh, and have fun, right? Or do they actually think this is our um, true form? But I don't believe that is. I, I hope they have fun because <laughs> it wasn't. It wouldn't have been fun for Fnatic fans to watch that well, series. Well, yeah. Liquid was also winning just a lot of duels against Fnatic here, right? Mm. Fnatic was just kind of rusty on the micro level of every single player. They were just not dealing enough damage. They were just not hitting their shots and then not traded, right? So it's a combination of the fundamentals that are hurting Fnatic the most now. If you remember yesterday on Ascent, the retakes and the post plants, they were all very inefficient because the players weren't in sync on how to hold their crossfire, to, to help out a teammate, how to make sure your teammate is not getting backstabbed. All of those things, to co when they, they are combined, they make you lose games. Well, I believe now the head-to-head, -head, because in the beginning of the day, they were... It was 3-3. Even right, so now yes. Liquid have taken the lead. That uh, is correct. Ah, I feel like this, these two teams have battling, been battling out for so long. <laughs> um, I do feel like the next time they face each other, I wouldn't be surprised if they even it out and make it 4-4. Four -four. But it could be a champions, right? We'll see how that goes. Oh God, don't, 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 don't put me through <laughs> EMEA teams going up against EA, EMEA teams, Lothar. I feel like we're always going to get that. Uh, well, with that, let's take a look at the bracket because that looks a little bit different now, especially uh, for both Team Liquid and Fnatic. Yes, Tenstar did win their series against London United, which means they're going to be going up against Team Liquid. Uh, What's the scoreline? 6 13, 11 13. Oh, you have great eyesight, Lothar. I cannot see that from I'm where guessing I'm it might be 6 or 8. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not certain. Uh, I think it's a 6 if I'm. I'm going to. Okay, he's gone over. He's, it's he's 6. Gone, it's it's six, 6, yeah. yeah. Uh, and yeah, so 10 star, they are through. They're going to be facing Team Liquid. I know uh, Tom made this joke about trying to get as many UK representatives forward as possible and this is a uh, two teams are very familiar with each other some of these guys i believe are used to team together back in cs as well on the opposite side of both uh, ten star and liquid no i, I wouldn't know <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a good match yeah like you said earlier um do you think it's going to be closer than liquid fanatic are we going to see more than two maps i think so because ten star has nothing to lose and everything to gain and yeah. they for sure are taking it super seriously and i like watching teams that are like the more unknown, right? Just like in the beginning, like first strike, you, you had teams that were not really known to the mm -hmm. scene and were perceived by some pl by some players inside the circles of like scrims and so on as favorites, even though they were not known to the wider audience. And tends that might be again in that position to take everyone by storm. Uh, and Liquid, I definitely feel like they, ha even though this is a, a, a team that goes to champions, they play really well and efficiently here on this tournament and I'm honestly very um, pleasantly surprised by the, um, by the efficiency that we see Liquid coming in, into this tournament. Mm, well, I think that's all the time we have now uh, for this post game. We are going to go to a quick uh, break, but don't worry guys, there's going to be more Red Bull home ground on the way.
I've of course got the Vodafone Giants. Just one to have my eyes on. No, not that <laughs> yet. Well, we've had our time in the pod. We've all had a couple of laughs. We seem pretty confident, but we are off to the Boris bikes, so we'll see how we do at Olympic Park. So here we are in Olympic Park, where the Giants are gonna recreate what the Olympic athletes did in 2012. A little bit of exercise. We're getting them moving on the Boris bikes. Let's see how they do. It's hard to multitask here, yeah. cycling and talking. Yeah. Skills that you'll also need, of course, when playing, when communicating and fragging. I've nearly killed you again, <laughs> I'm sorry. Always <laughs> <laughs> oh, fun. Sorry. <laughs> Which team wouldn't you want to play? Um, I wouldn't mind playing anyone. You're happy to take everyone on? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just not the bikes? <laughs> yeah, not the bikes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've done some extreme cycling, so I think we should take a breather because one man's already down. Boys, if we're talking backgrounds, history of all of you as players, how did you first get into competitive gaming? Where did you find your start? Mm, my brothers. Uh, started to teach me how to play. It was mostly code back in the day, console games, you know. But eventually you grow up and you start playing PC games. So started off on the control, yeah, stepped then... up into the, the keyboard and mouse. Exactly. What games did you play? On PC I started playing League of Legends mm. uh, from the beginning. Yeah, that's where it started. But then I came in to see yes, more FPS style and find it much more fun. So you found your home in sort of first person shooters. Is yeah. that the same for the whole team? The yeah. FPS just called to you the most? Yeah, for yeah. sure. I mean, I started when I was 10 years old, playing Call of Duty, <coughs> yeah. I mean, shooters are my, my passion. I mean, for me, when I play FPS, my, my mental is much better. Like when I play mobile, like League of Legends, you know, I get so tilted. I think that's <laughs> like the main difference, to be honest. You just got to keep you cool. Yeah, exactly. exactly. But hopefully at this event, we're also going to hear all of you getting loud as well, right? Mm, for sure. That's the difference. First person mm. shooters, that sort of environment, you get that raw high octane that comes out yeah. in competitive competitions. That also something that's always kept you interested. Yeah, for sure. Like the energy, you know, you always got to be hyped up, you know, to go with the flow, to just follow the flow and bring in much energy and uh, screaming, you know, it impacts so much. Oh, it does. It does indeed. And what else would you do if you weren't competing in Valorant at the minute and you weren't involved in esports? What other careers would you have gone into? No idea. I was a mailman before, so... <laughs> oh, so you're a, you're a little postboy. Mm -hmm. Deliver the indeed. letters, indeed. deliver the frags. Yeah. That's what I like to hear. Exactly. <laughs> From two wheels to four, we're gonna keep this journey spinning and keep our giants moving in the right direction. We've ditched the bikes, so let's have a look at the carousel we've prepared for them. A lovely London taxi. All right then, boys. Let's bundle in and go and get some pie and mash.
should we be looking at in terms of the fragging? Which one should I have my eyes on? No, no. <laughs> Meadow EP is not sick, and no, my boy no. Fiti, always, always. Those two guys, those two. Hello everyone, my name is Jackie and I'm back in my hometown of London to see the sights and the sounds of the city of the people and the pigeons. It's going to be a great day, but the one thing we have is not a national part of our heritage, but they are a giant landmark. I've of course got the Vodafone giants that are going to be joining me for one hell of a day. Boys, how are we doing? Great. Good, very good, thank you. Nice, we're in a good environment, we've got some great landmarks behind us, but there's so much more to see. Should we go and have a look? Let's go. Let's head into London. But right now, we have this skyline behind us. How do we feel? Are we all right with the heights? We're quite high up. <laughs> I think <laughs> It's a cool view. Yeah. yeah. It's surprisingly sure. quite warm for London as well. Yeah. Obviously, I suppose you guys prepared with the winter clothes, but somehow we've got away with summer. Yeah. Very convenient. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Now, in terms of preparation for home grounds, how's it been looking on and off of the server? A lot of practice, a lot of preparation going into it? I mean, we haven't been tracking that much lately, but uh, we will do our best anyways. <laughs> Hoping to just come out with the raw firepower exactly. on the server. Exactly. Yeah. And who should we be looking at in terms of the fragging? Which one should I have my eyes on? No, no. <laughs> Meadow EP is not sick, no, and my boy no. Fiti, always, always. Yeah. Those two guys, those two. Now, if we go into something a little bit controversial here, boys, Phantom or Vandal? Phantom. No. Phantom. No. <laughs> Why Phantom? It's just better. I mean, it's better, but for me, yeah. I prefer Bandar. It's higher rate of fire. You have like super good fights on the close range, you know, and yeah, it's just better for the, you know, spraying, no, not spraying style, not spraying style. I mean, yeah, you can stamp through the smokes. Yeah. No, just play Vandal and one-tap. Just play Vandal? Yeah, just play Vandal. <laughs> So we're at the top of the London Eye, and obviously you boys are currently at the top of the Valorant scene. But now we've got you all in person in London together for the first time, really. How does it feel having the whole team in the flesh again? It's good. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's yeah. great. Yeah. I love my team so much. Yeah, it's very fun. <laughs> Excited to have that camaraderie back as well, the comms on land, getting each other yeah. fired up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, want, I want to scream. Yeah, yeah, you're the one I'm going to be looking at for the screams then. That's what I was going to ask. Where's the passion come from? You all seem quite lively. Where's the fire in the team? Yeah, yeah. we are yeah. all like, when it comes to emotions, I think we are all the types of yeah. like, we are super emotional about the game and we always give out this. Yeah. yeah. All right, hopefully we see some of that when we get you in the arena. But we've got a rich history here in London. But the history that I want to know about is with the Giants roster. How long have you been together and how did the team form? Um, when we joined the roster, it was already me, um, three other players. It's only me and Hoodie right now. And we joined in the beginning of this year. And since then we've switched a uh, couple of players. Um, and then joined, Pity joined. Yeah, you in, in March. Yeah, he joined in March. And then we switched some other players. And then Ambi and David P joined. And that's where we find, found our success. Yeah. Well. We've had our time in the pod. We've all had a couple of laughs. We've seen some cool sights, but one important question, aside from Valorant, can we all cycle? I think so. I think so, yeah. yeah. We seem pretty confident, but we are off to the Boris bikes, so we'll see how we do at Olympic Park. <laughs> <laughs> That's the yeah. answer. Brotherly love, it's important in gaming.
Now, you guys heard from Jackie there with the Giants boys how important brotherly love is. And Mitch Man has been feeling left out because Lothar and Tom has been on the desk with me uh, for the last two days. So I brought you back on the desk with us, Mitch. How's it going? Thanks, Sue. Yeah, I just thought Tom was taking all the limelight, really. You know, <laughs> we, we had to get a little bit, a little bit more hair in here, a little bit more uh, uh, outgoing energy. You know what I mean? Like, he's just, he's, uh, we needed to liven up the show a little bit. So here I am. Yeah, so. And uh, less sarcasm, right, as well. <laughs> Well, Lothar, you're, you're, we'll the, you're the person who has to judge here, you know? Is the brotherly love between Mitch stronger than your brotherly love with Tom? I don't know if you heard, but apparently I'm sitting on uh, his lap a lot. When he's apparently. Casting. Yes, appa <laughs> I, I don't know about that. Maybe I'm, uh, you know, maybe I'm imagining or something. Well, you <laughs> guys, maybe you're dreaming, who knows? Yes. <laughs> you guys are going to make Tom very, very jealous. I feel for him. <laughs> uh, but let's talk about the games that's going on today. Uh, I believe we have an updated bracket as well. And some highlights, too, from Ooh. the B stream between the London United and a 10-star game. Of course, uh, Lothar, you and I spoke about this already before the break. Uh, team Liquid, they're going to be going through to face 10-star. Mitch, what do you think about that? I love 10-star as a team, so I'm definitely not against that. Uh, looking at 10-star versus Liquid, though, oh, I don't think I'm going to want to watch that game because I, I really, my heart goes out for these guys, but well, what we just saw from Liquid right now, I don't know that it's going to be the beautiful game and the display of skill that 10-star deserves to have. Well, when it comes to 10-star, though, I can tell you that they had quite a performance against London uh, United here. Paul V finished the game at 1.26 KD with 160 ADR, but not only that, Russ, that had a little bit smaller on the ADR, had nine first bloods and only five first deaths. It seems like they just quite made a show there when it comes to this, uh, the performance. Yeah, it's definitely something that we know these guys for as well. When you watch 10-star, Russ is definitely going to be a player that catches your eye for those aggressive plays when it comes to this guy. Really, his, he's an initiator for himself. And when you look at then, moving a little bit further, you mentioned Stanley as well. His Astra is fantastic. This guy might not be involved in every single round, but when he is, it's not because he's dying. He's at least taken one or two down with him. And he also plays the Astra in a way that I typically don't see her. He's, he's very aggressive on the defense. He typically just yeah. goes in, takes space on the defense. So I'm looking forward to that tomorrow, I guess. I mean, this felt like a pretty dominant showing uh, from the highlights we're seeing here. Uh, Midge, I know how much you love the UK. You know, you're always going about how you, you wish you were from here. Uh, oh. <laughs> uh, oh. How much? Okay. How nice would it be? We're always seeing the same few uh, British boys at the top, you know, from Fnatic and Liquid. How nice would it be to see some new representatives up there? Yeah, it'd be great, wouldn't it? You know, <laughs> you know, you know me in the old Union Jack, Sue. We, we get on very well. Uh, no, absolutely, it would be. And I think within Valorant, you know, CS, the UK scene, is one of the worst things you want to be involved in. But when it comes to Valorant, for some reason, I don't know what it is, we got all the good players, we got all the good guys, yep. and we're starting to dominate <laughs> in the international level when it comes to, to UK Val. It's actually not a meme. I don't know how. And when it comes to 10 Star as well, I talked about it a little bit on some of the casts. I really think that they're a team tactically that are above the majority in Europe. They play so clean, they don't give away advantages. I think what they're missing is that superstar ability, which we are seeing come through on some of their players, but when it comes to, as I'm saying, a match like Liquid, where you have Navera, you have Scream, you have Yampi, you have all these insane individual fraggers, generational players coming through, I, you need a lot of strategy to kind of beat that back, especially because Liquid certainly don't just run in blind looking for headshots, but even if they did, they would find them a lot. And also not only the fact that you need to play sound strategically, I feel like when you're such a newer team playing against a team that is already known, you have the disadvantage of having to come in with confidence. But when you play against a team that has the mental advantage of being already proven, sure. you might actually be uh, shaky a little bit. But at the same time, maybe it's the other way around mm -hmm. and you're going to go into the match with nothing to lose, which gives you that confidence boost that you typically need to show yeah. up, right? So mm -hmm. it's, it's something that you cannot measure. So I don't like it because I like the <laughs> stats. You know? no, this is your worst nightmare. Yeah. Yes, but it, it is an actual thing that affects people and how they play the game and how does that actually um, make a team appear in, in, uh, on the server. Well, they're going to be in action tomorrow. Who knows, Mitch? You might be casting that game, so uh, we'll see. Uh, but for now, let's talk about Giants versus a footballist because the winner will be facing either Ascend or Gambit. So this is a really, really big game already uh, for the, both of these teams. Let's start with Giants first. You know, they've got the Red Bull Gaming Sphere buff. They're here, they're next door, they've been prepping all week as well. Uh, Mitch, you've spoken a lot about this team in the past. You've casted them many, many times from the beginning as well. And it's nice to see that they found consistency. They had problems with that before, uh, but they don't anymore. Yeah, moving around some ro roster changes, you know, they definitely do help. And I think finding players 
uh, finding the role that really suits them. I think Pipson moving in on the coaching role, it takes a lot from the issues that we've been hearing. He's still a very, very solid player in terms of understanding of the game. So having him in the back lines, able to help these guys out, you're looking at some of the, the, the kind of imports like the likes of Meadow, one of my favorite players in EMEA coming onto this roster. Like I spoke a lot about Giants in the past, both positively and negatively, to try to be fair to them. Well, right now, and I've said coming into recent months that Giants look better than they ever have, and I mm -hmm. think right here they're showing that that is a continued storyline with their performance so far in the home ground. Yeah, definitely 100% agree about Giants here, and I have been very critical of Giants in the past, mm -hmm. uh, but it seems after the roster changes, they have found their golden, let's say, middle, uh, sure. and they settled on it, right? Now they're building up on the things that they found that are to be effective, uh, with the AVP being the important aspect of how this team kind of gains map control. He's the key factor to Giants having an ability of, of controlling the space and the tempo of the round. I just love the amount of puns that's come out of David P's name. We've got David P as well. Yep. I always see Twitch, <laughs> Twitch chat spamming that. Uh, but they're going to be going up against Footballist today. Again, a similar story. Footballist had a really nice start to the year. Everybody was excited on how, uh, how this Turkish team can do an EMEA. Then we never saw them again for some reason. And now, after LCQ, they've also found consistency. There's a lot of uh, competition in the Turkish region, mm -hmm. right? There's, there's so many teams, so many good players. Yeah. Like it, it seems like to be, uh, every time I, I take a look at the Turkish scene, there seems to be a newer player just somehow, somewhere found a jet player, yeah. yes, suddenly out of nowhere, and he's performing. And, and it seems like footballers had a hard time to find themselves again uh, in, in that medley. But now with Kiwi, I feel like they are on the map again. And, and it's, I think it's detrimental a little bit that there's so much pressure on one player to perform. But it's also Stern, by the way, another yeah. call out that I would yeah. like to, to, to make. Uh, he is performing very well in clutches and he comes in big when Kiwi kind of falls short. But it seems still like it's, it's a gig where the players support the star player. And it's probably not sustainable long term, but mm -hmm. it's going to work lo uh, short term right now. Yeah, the thing I'll say about Turkish players in general, they, they've got a lot of positive bits. Oh, may maybe I shouldn't say that. Um, aspects uh, to it. And I think that when it, <laughs> when it comes to picking up Turkish players in general, putting them into tactical EMEA rosters, you can definitely play around them. But regionally right now, I think some of those some of those teams like to approach a little bit more of a strategic aspect to the game. I like to approach a little bit more of a scrappy aspect to the game, I should say. So you're cheering for the Turkish Okay, Absolutely. where's Tom? Yeah, where's I got a hype Tom? train, bro. Can we get Good. Tom back on the desk? <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying this, that I miss Tom. Uh, but uh, with all of that in mind, let's take a look at the map picks. Of course, home ground rules comes to play. No bans right off the bat. Uh, we are going to have each of the team's home ground picks before we get into the remaining three maps. Of course, if a team 2-0, then the series is over. Uh, Giants have picked Bind as their home okay, ground. Okay. And footballers have picked Icebox. Uh, what do you guys make of this. I don't know, Vodafone Giants coming in on Bind, I can see that being a very, very strong map for them, feeding into the potential kind of scrappy early round, going for those early aggressive fights, but at the same time, footballers, from what we saw of them, early round attack side defaults, holding in for aggression and then blitzing into sites, that's something that could definitely throw um, Vodafone Giants off guard on a map that they're clearly comfortable on. I do think, though, Vodafone Giants win this series. They win this 2-0, in my opinion, and mm -hmm, Icebox mm -hmm. coming up doesn't really throw that much question in my mind. I honestly think they're just a better team. Ooh. Yeah, I, I, I unfortunately will be in agreement with you because I like to have a discussion on yeah, the desk sure. typically, but uh, <laughs> I do think Giants are coming in here as favorites, and when it comes to Bind, the last time we saw them play Bind was Astra Kildur, Ray Sky, Sova, with David P on Astra, which allows him to even be a more of a lurker than on, a, on, a, uh, on an Omen because she has the global range of her utility. She doesn't have to be next to the team because of the paranoia and so on. Yeah. So he has even more space to be a lurker. So we might find him in our fridge here with the Red Bulls. Uh, oh and, my goodness. Uh, <laughs> but my question is, will they maybe bring something new to the table, right? Because it's a Red Bull home ground. There's a little bit different approach from the teams here. Uh, and so I'm li really looking forward to the team compositions. Uh, Mitch, I've got to say goodbye to you here. Uh, you're going to go join Tom, I believe, to cast the first I have to match. go to Tom? Oh. Uh, yeah, I know. Okay. I'm, uh, I can't believe I'm, I'm actually preferring Tom right now. Uh, Tom, enjoy <laughs> this. This is the only time that's ever going to happen. Um, <laughs> but Losa, I want to ask you about if both teams are going to stick with what they played before. We're going to have that Jet versus Rays potentially on this map. But what, what do you personally prefer? I, I would say that in the early beginnings of the meta game on Bind, everyone, including myself, was preferring to have a Rays on this map uh, because of the how impactful the 
Bombot is to control Hookah on attack. But everyone knows now how to play against that. And you can effectively just retake the Hookah with little to no effort uh, when you lose it after the Bombot and Painter's combination. So now I'm a believer of Chet in, on this map because she has still is invaluable and when it comes to just dashing on the side I, I feel like i'm just telling saying that every single minute now on the stream <laughs> on every single stream but it's really imperative on 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 uh, the jet when she dashes on the side to check the corners be an additional drone essentially to make sure that your teammates that are coming after you have a certainty oh there's no one in this corner there's no one in this corner or there's actually someone in this corner we can pre-fire them uh, and that's only because a good jet player can give that value to your teammates when a race can also do that with the satchels but it's way more risky because first and foremost you need to spend credits for that so you damage your economy to have an execute and also you cannot dash into a smoke unless someone else gives you that smoke so it's harder to coordinate and it's easier to die because the dash from the jet is only affected from the point where you're standing anywhere you're going not in the middle so uh yes jet uh, definitely stronger on this map in my eyes. We also got to remember that the Kiwi is going to be on the jet yeah. in this case, which is he's a huge win condition for this team on every single map. But I know you and Mitch both feel like this could potentially be a 2-0. But what do footballists have to do, do you think, uh, to win on bind? I feel like shutting down uh, the lurks from the MVP. I know it's a meme right now, but I think it's going to be impactful because he's going to be controlling the space whenever he's on attack he's gonna be controlling the other side of the map to make sure they're not getting flanked when they're trying to do an execute or maybe fake it then go back to to david on the astra uh and footballist uh in general as as in their region the play style they represent is typically very aggressive on the defense but if they do it recklessly they might get punished for that so i feel like being a little bit more let's say um careful on, on taking space on defense is going to be imperative for footballists. But when it comes to attacking, I feel like actually they should focus more on defaulting than doing super fast executes. I think what's really good about this matchup is, uh, unlike the ones we have with the champions teams against each other, where we have to theorize about where they're showing, mm -hmm, where they're not mm -hmm, showing, mm -hmm. both of these two teams, they want to win, they need to win, and yes. they would want to have that trophy, you know, onto their name as well, especially uh, towards the end of this year. 100%. My only concern is that, well, Giants never played Viper on this map, and it's like not playing Viper on Bind. Yeah. Pretty sure that's a crime, is yeah, it? Yeah, it's, it's a paragraph for that? sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, it falls under a paragraph. I mean, uh, so so, uh, but they still were very efficient when they were playing on bind without e even without it. The, the problem is that I feel like you don't carve the map enough for yourself. You don't affect the way the angles work if you don't have that viper. It's just like a playground for her. But I'm really interested to see how they subsidize that with other utility, especially mm -hmm. with that Astra, because Cosmic Divide essentially places uh, itself in the, m in the space where typically a viper war would be in this case. Uh, but definitely Giants will try to win this. Like there's no just joking around here with them and the same goes for footballists uh, since both of those teams are not going to champions so this is going to be a treat to watch well looking at the wider uh, maps as well if we go beyond the ho uh, two home ground ones if mm -hmm. it is a 1-1 and we do go to a, a, a best of five who is your money on here who do you think has the advantage and i'm very happy to see fracture but i'm a little bit disappointed to see it as the last map of today i would love to see more fracture definitely yeah. because it's um it's an ex exciting map to play like when you think about Valorant in general, um, some of the maps are built in a way that you typically see in other tactical FPS games, mm -hmm. right? There, there's like three lanes, there's middle, there's bottom and top, if you name it like that. But there are a few maps that are very specific for Valorant, and that's an example Haven, which has three sides, and that's Fracture, which has two sides, but the spawn for the defenders in the middle, and then they are surrounded by attackers. So that changes the way you approach the game, and teams that have uh, let's say a very creative approach to the to the to the game itself will benefit from it, right? But at the same time, those maps like Haven and Fracture require the team to be absolutely beautiful at the fundamental level of play. Because if you don't, 
uh, if you leave space for your opponents to capitalize on your mistakes when it comes to map control, not trading correctly, you're gonna lose out long term. And that's a big problem for Haven when the defenders are over peaking and losing an example of one of the defenders in the first second of the round. So, and the same applies to Fracture. So they are very similar in my mind when it comes to this approach uh, to, the, to the game itself. Who, who do you think that's going to favor? Because obviously when it comes down to something like discipline, uh, Giants, they've shown a lot of that, even in this tournament. But footballists, as of late, you know, coming out of LCQ, they're starting to tighten those things up as well. Uh, well, it might sound a little, bit, a little bit stereotypical for me, but I would say I would favor Giants when it comes to that fundamental level of play, just because the other team is a Turkish team that has this explosiveness in mm -hmm. them. It's... it's um, when, when you s listen to pro players, like how they describe the Turkish region, you cannot really expect anything from the Turkish region apart from surprises, right? And, and when sometimes it comes to- Sometimes good surprises. Yeah, sometimes yeah. good, sometimes bad, uh, and that's about it. But yeah, let's take a look at this the- This is a surprise, I believe. Ki Kiwi on this Sova. This is a surprise. Their Should be star right. jet player is playing Sova. Uh, they have an- they haven't had, uh, they did used to run us over, but definitely was not on Kiwi. And this was way before Kiwi was even in the team so back in March. But uh, yes, their win condition we spoke about um, is not playing the jet, Lothar. I'm really confused. Yeah, I am as well. I'm which very um, I'm, I'm now trying to find, um, let's say, synergies between what is going to happen. If Suka. Uh, Sasuke, sorry, uh, yeah. is playing Breach. I really like that because we know that Giants are playing Kiljo here, which su single-handedly shuts down the Kiljo ultimate if Sasuke is alive. Um, so this is this looks like a solid choice. Now I'm just waiting for the two order picks because it seems like Sturban, what, what Sturban and Kurs are picking will dictate how the game will go when it comes to the attack side because defense is not a problem right now for footballists. Yeah. My big question is, they actually go for the race. Okay, well... It looks like they're going to go for the raise, but they haven't locked that in yet. And uh, it's been... It, this I mean, is you need an weird. initiator with, with vision, right? You either yeah. need Sky, you need Sova. I'm just surprised that Kiwi is playing on, on that Sova, but it's being locked in, and we're going to see how this happens. Is, is a battle Sova a thing? Is that is that a thing? A, a, I guess a Turkish battle sova. An underhand bow and arrow, I would say. <laughs> just yeah. you know, pop it in front of this you, and they just proceed. Definitely a first. Definitely a first. Uh, does this does this increase your faith in football? As will lower it, knowing that Kiwi is now uh, moved over to the sova, not the jet. I would say in general, I would still favor Giants, but that breach pick changes the aspect of bind because of mm -hmm. the killjoy pick from from Giants. So um, it's gonna be hard to say. I would like to see uh, who's starting an attack. I think it's footballers, right? Uh, I can check for you now. Uh, starting on attack uh, is Giants. They're starting Giants, on attack. Giants on attack. So this is actually interesting because um, now Kiljo will have less value on attack. Way, way less value. You cannot be in an initiator on Kiljo anymore with the lockdown. So I would favor the first half go to footballers, actually. Well, Lothar and I, uh, we're kind of bomb, we're kind of dumbstruck over here. I don't know how uh, Mitch and Tom, you guys feel with this jet list pick on the side of footballers. I'm glad you're dumbstruck and not bumstruck, Sue. That would have been <laughs> very different indeed. Uh, very different show, maybe a different website. As we move on into this pistol round, we've got the defensive side start out of Footballist. Don't believe the UI. Don't trust it. A little bit, a little bit confused. Footballist on the left side here, oh, defending yeah. it out. Which, what what was your cornhole one? see this one. pistol round? <laughs> a, little, a little bit slow, right? They're going to look over on that attacking side of Vodafone Giants to just sneak their way in towards middle. That spike's starting to go towards the A site. They don't get any early contact, no early aggression out of the football aside. And so now it's time to blitz, but they're gonna have to go right past an Astro Star, Tom. Yeah, we know how impactful these can be. The right star timing could completely delay them. And there is a nade ready in hand, but it not really being used. Maybe just trying to deny the plant or just a little bit late overall. Fatinho looking to try and lead the charge. Just the boom bot is actually gonna give him information and he's gonna find a kill. On the trade right back though, Marge threw the smoke onto Ambi. Fatinho. Wait, I gotta get it right. Fatinho. There we go. I think that's close. I apologize to all those I've offended by mispronouncing that. He's gonna be sneaking in towards the lamps. He's gonna try to catch them off as they walk on back through. And although he gets the jump on them, he almost loses his life. Kiwi not able to dash out of there on the sofa, having a bit of trouble. And the whole team of football is crumble in a matter of seconds. That is one to zero going to Vodafone Giants.
Yeah, solid start, decent pistol round. It is something that we see quite regularly, this blitz onto the A site. And although there was some reasonable counter utility coming out from the side of Footballist, I, you know, I, I think most of the duels going their way, the crossfires as well, keeping control of lamps, always so valuable in those afterplant scenarios. I think the big thing though is, again, there's a talking point on the desk. I think Kiwi not playing his jet, if anything makes me more confident in the future of Footballist, even if it doesn't necessarily work out today, just because I think a team that can adapt and use that jet player, like for example, when we saw Durka picking up the Sova at times, yeah. like when it came to this map, it shows that he's willing to give up what is that potential star to actually do what is better for the team. Now, whether it works here today, that's a different thing altogether. Maybe they go back next time, but it's somewhere they can definitely test, especially when it's their opponent's map choice. Yeah, shows he hasn't got pea brain, right? He's not yeah. sat there saying, oh, I, I am Jet, I play I Jet, dash. that's yeah. what I do. They're saying, I don't know what you guys want here, I'm a Jet player. Now you gotta add that little bit of extra death lock and Vitinho um, sending nice. it in towards the side, but that has not paid off versus Kiwi's Classic. Manages to get away with the one. Another frag going their way, but Maj taking down Hoodie and Vodafone Giants are under a little bit of threat here. It's starting to get a little bit scary, to be honest. This attacking side with low HP on Meadow could be in a lot of trouble. Yeah, they're trying to put down a few stars, a few pieces of utility just to try and cover off any of the potential the flanks, area. but realistically at this point, I think they have a pretty decent idea of where those remaining players are going to be. Now, David P doesn't currently have a weapon behind him, but there is one available. They've used some utility just to be able to reclaim that. The shock dart is also going to force them a little bit further forward. And 30 seconds left. Ambi hoping that someone gives them a peek, but actually, this is looking pretty good for footballists at the moment. Yeah, things aren't looking too poor over on that defensive side. Now that they're grouped up, they have the numbers to their advantage. Down goes Sturman, though, isolated in the duel. And it looks like we're gonna have the round taken down in 1v1 fights. Vodafone Giants surviving with two players, certainly not as convincing as I thought it would be. No, that's a very good round for Footballist. Uh, sure, 3v3 at the end, I'm, I'm, I guess they would be hoping to at least get it down to one player, maybe even win the round, but it, they had a lot weaker weaponry, and I, I think it was actually quite smart from the Giants to go and try and reclaim the rifle, just make sure they couldn't fall into enemy hands, use utility to cut off those angles sense. and have other players watching. So uh, th they recovered reasonably well from the situation that they were in. That they did. Now with... 2-0 to zero on the board. This is where they're going to be tested heavily. Full buy up for footballist. All those rifles to play with. Vodafone Giants not going to have the best of buys. Obviously playing this as a bonus, but having lost so many players in the previous, you're going to have to rebuy into the likes of Pistol, certainly your shields. And it could all together become a very, very costly round if they don't manage to come out on top. Footballist in the early stage. They're, they're not looking to push forward with these rifles and give any form yeah, of advantage going. away. Yeah. Every duel that they have right now is, is an information peak. Like maybe you get a shot on their head, but you're looking to fire one or two bullets and get out of there instantly and have your teammates to back you up. This is exactly how you want to see these sort of anti bonus rounds go. Yeah, there's always the risk, especially if you push up too aggressively, give over a rifle, the round turns on its head in a matter of seconds. Now we're seeing similar screens to what we've had previously on the B site, just giving a, a way out for Sturban, if anybody is going to push in that direction, droning through long as well. Might force at least one rotation, especially now with the pressure coming in onto Sturban. There's his escape route. There's the denial of that space being taken. But it looks like he's going to be left on his own here. Teammate backing out after Utility came through and then runs back on it his own. That is so risky from Sasuke, and it's given up a couple of kills. That's a big loss now for footballers. Getting back into this site will be tough. This is the round that they're supposed to dominate in. I didn't expect Vodafone Giants to even get two kills let alone have now a three-man advantage, a site plant, and just about everything going their way. Football is being torn to shreds, and with just one player left being Kiwi, he might want to save that rifle, because I don't know how high his chances are at a 1v4. Yeah, I, I think that you've got to be quite frustrated if you're footballist in that round. Like, th the fact is, the way that they played off each other in that was was poor. Now, part of it was because of the utility the Giants used to force a player off the back of the site, also the dart to make sure that the angles were cleared. But I, I really didn't like the re-aggression, especially from a breach player. Like, if there's any agent I want in a retake, with maybe an Astro, maybe a breach. Like, those are two that have so many utility to clear out certain angles and almost force players into unfavorable duels. Instead, he went, I'm going to run back in and try and kill their whole team on my own. It's like, okay, well, I, I'm not going to gamble on you winning that one, Sasuke. And actually, they're going to take a very early pause. And honestly, after that, I don't mind it. 
Yeah, no, I think this is probably where you call a pause, because if you lose versus those weaker weapons, well, now that they've gotten your free upgrades as well, yeah. well you're not looking too and great, And they'll be closer you? to ults as well, because they've been winning all of the rounds and getting all of the kills. Very so true. It, it's, Very true. From here onwards, it's only going to get worse. So I, I, I don't think that that's the start that we were really looking for from footballers. Now, as said, I don't think it was brought up on the desk as well. I think maybe over the last four or five months they have played this map once and i don't think it was with kiwi so like realistically you're expecting giants to win this one like even if there's been preparations put in it becomes very different when you go into an official match and vodafone giants are, are one of the better teams even in the whole of emea on bind like especially recently with Fnatic falling off a little bit on what was a dominant map for them giants are definitely up there so I, I think the as a home ground map as a pick for them that will give them the advantage in the series this is a solid choice even with what i would say a, a good compositional changes coming in for football list they would have to improve from a map they don't play to being one of the best teams in the region overnight that's the thing about this format man it is the most punishing for yeah teams that don't have that depth of map pool if you have one map that you never play you're probably going to have to play it here uh, unless your opponent doesn't either or unless you're gambit and, and they're just like oh should we pick haven it's like no <laughs> i don't want to they're gonna do something yeah. dumb and we're gonna lose that's the thing you you like with gambit there's always going to be that element of these guys are probably just better than us and i'd rather the evil i know but yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't, I don't want to fight a rain of red guard no no, I don't. I don't want to fight Redgar, period, though. No, no, no. Just at all. I don't want very, to go near that dude. He's very tall. He is. Very nice, though. He's like a cuddly <laughs> teddy bear. <laughs> yeah, but sure. not on the server. BFG. BFG, Spike exactly. Planted. Mosh taken down right away. Viper out of the play. And so is A. This Crax is the only player that's even remotely close by. And Well, getting your way back in here is going to be very tough. A lot of angles to check. I, a couple of opportunities if they do group up and push, and that's kind of what they're looking to do. Aftershock down, pushes Hoodie out of the angle, which is almost counterproductive. Now he's flashing back in, taking them down, spraying away, and... Okay. I lost a few more players than I was expecting, I'll be honest there, Tom. Oh. Still 4-0. to zero. There you go, Meta. Don't leave him hanging. Never want to see that. Yeah, it, again, a bit costly, but a 4-0 when you've had some flawless rounds and some upgrades by winning your bonus. Financially, it's it's going to be fine for Giants. Like, it's not really the end of the world. The the main thing is maybe that they gave over an ultimate or two. And I, I would like to see, especially in a lot of these retake scenarios, now that they have the Rolling Thunder online, actually playing for the retake. Because thus far, it's been 50-50. Like, a player going in, a player going out. Either, or unless, of course, if, if they push into the stack side, then just having it to fight with in the first place. But they've got a lot available for retakes right now. So I'd like to see them actually use it. I like this from Fiddy getting himself away with a trade. At least he knew he was dead. He was stunned up. He's possibly yeah. getting flash snake bites. I'm, Everything I'm just, can come towards him. I'm surprised they peaked him. Well, that's the thing. That was the whole intention of that showstopper was to say like, hey, you know, it's, it's like being up against a bear, you know, make a lot of noise, tell them to back off. But they absolutely didn't. Ran in, got the trades, and that's how this whole round has gone. Back and forth like a game of ping pong. The lead footballist locked out of the A site. Plant comes in for Vodafone Giants, and they don't have anything in, in the way of ulties, but I think they do have a little bit of killjoy utility on that spike so good information to play with follow that up with some stars coming down from astra your grav well to slow them down this could be very oh i like that okay killjoy utility dealt with but you still got those stars that's going to buy them at least an extra five seconds yeah, they're going to need at least one of the kills especially from both these angles and there you go kiwi finds david p it leaves it all onto meadow no longer utility so he almost has to peek this to spray through they've just baited him out now they're actually going to start this defusal stir but oh it's awkward and kiwi will close it out with a 3k defusal coming through with plenty of time left on the clock and footballists have themselves a first round I didn't hear that diffuse get tapped. Maybe I missed the, the sound cue, but I also don't think they were on the spike when the grab well was put in. It looked a little bit early, and I think David P had heard a player stepping towards him in bathroom, thought, oh, damn, I'm about to take a fight. I might die. Yeah. Might as well at least buy two to three extra seconds. And obviously he did then die directly afterwards. So he was going to be taken out of that round no matter what. Four to one. Footballers get their first round, and now look what they've got to work what? with. We saw Fiddy use up that ulti in the previous round but now footballist have got the showstopper they've got the viper's pit and the hunter's fury that gives them a lot to play with and immediately 
bathroom control is theirs. Not only do they have a judge, which is hard enough to push into, but Viper's Pit as well. <laughs> yeah, I, I assume we're going to see other control battles for already Hooker being dominated. Not really rotating anybody off, just in case mid control is fought for instead. They do have a little bit of a peak coming in onto Long. But this is a much more patient round. Maybe expecting a little bit more aggression. Of course, we've seen uh, some very early battles, in fact, coming in from Sturban of Footballist into Hooker. Instead, though, they've given up a lot of that control for free, and they've got the full rotation in of Breach on the third player as well. A lot of stars on that back side. A lot of stars to fight on through Sturban. Gonna find it hard to keep himself alive there, but he's done well. Now looking to peek out on the back of that breach flash, but nothing found. They know exactly where he is, and they're quick to hunt him down. Sasuke caught in the open. Vodafone Giants running over them on the B side, and once again, they'll get in there. 30 seconds More or less left. for free, unless Kiwi's got something to say about this. That flash catches him. They know there's someone in towards the spawn, and they'll get the plant down now. Desperately trying to find a fight. Of course, the Viper's Pit on the other side of the map has now been left. But, Spike well, planted. when you still have a judge, it's not really going to be possible to do too much in a retake scenario. Desperately hoping that somebody over peaks, but Giants have been really well regimented so far. Just calm and collected in the afterplants, especially when they have a man advantage. They are giving very little away. David P is caught, and actually, Bettinio looking for the trade will That's fall. The fact is, though, this rotation from Mars is so far behind. He's unable to do anything by the, actually, by the time they actually go for the retake. Yeah, obviously, Maj had to be super careful, though. Playing with the Judge, you yeah. have to shift walk. If you start running, these guys are probably going to peek you on a ranged angle or at least be holding it as you come around, and you're dead at that point, even if they don't know you have a Judge. Uh, instead, you got to sneak up, try to catch them off guard. And unfortunately, the opposite happened. It's 5-1. to one. Vodafone Giants attack is looking flawless so far. A little bit of a hiccup. Other than that, they've been able to deal with football so easily. Their B site execution is basically just running a very similar thing again and again, but because they just dominate both the tube with all the nano swarms that they're putting down, and also the back of the site with the stuns, nobody can really move. And because they're getting hooker control fairly easily, they then are able to just isolate the jewels. It's a really nice execution coming in from Giants, and footballists, as of right now, have no response to it other than a little bit of aggression. And in this round, we're not going to see that aggression come through. Only with just the pistols. Vodafone, Vodafone Giants have the challenge of trying to keep this into a... Oh, my God. Maj is down. Maj is down in the corner to the nade. Cracks his position spotted. Yeah, Vodafone Giants need to be careful that they don't give any weapons away. That's a very aggressive peak coming out. They're a little bit scared there, Meadow. You're not going to go into lamps. You're not going to go into lamps versus a, a force buy or an eco. Please. He doesn't need to, that's for sure. Got three, <laughs> three teammates holding this angle, by the way, for when they come out. So even with the stun, there you remaining. go. They get away with the trade. Sure, they lose metal, but that's the benefit of having that kind of a setup well planned out by Vodafone Giants. And six rounds found. Uh, really, there was no doubt they were going to win this round. The only question was, was it going to hurt their economy? The answer is definitely no. Yeah, I, again, I, I, I think that I'm almost... 100% confident. Well, I guess they did technically lose one in a 2v2 and an after plant, but in these early round scenarios where they've been able to force players back, the full-on retakes from footballists just haven't really been good enough. Like, they've been able to isolate Jules fairly easy. Yeah, this round was not really fair because they had a lot weaker weaponry and didn't have all the utility. I also think that some of the breach stuns we've seen coming through from Sasuke have been decent, but it's not really been oh enough on God. the initial hold. And when it comes to retakes, I said, the only one that succeeded is that two versus two. Other than that, the holds have been, I almost want to say dominant from Giants. Oh. Oh, well, that is not a good start for Sturb, and I think he's now zero for seven in early fights. He has been shut down every single round, and that could be where a lot of that preference for the B site comes from. Ambi spotted a double push down B long, and Fatino deals with it. Sasuke left on 31 HP. Hell, he was nearly taken down by the turret. Oh, this is a disaster. Sure, David P. Falls going for that mid-aggression, but now the rest of the team comes through after the TP is heard. Ahead. They know Kiwi's alone. They spotted the breach, and they know a second player TP'd. All they have to do is deal with Kiwi. But that might be a big challenge, even when he's not on the jet. This man puts up the numbers. 
in this 3v2 now. Things are looking pretty good. He's going to challenge this as they run on in. Kiwi tears them to shreds. Now we end up with just Ambi. That lockdown is gone, so time isn't going to be on his side. He's managed to dodge the flash. He's on the steps, and he's just going to land both headshots as they yes. try and run through. I mentioned this guy earlier, Asono, I, I think started off well in Giants, but has been more and more coming into his own just on an individual level. Because you have to remember, when he switched over to this team, he was basically a jet main. Yeah. Like, that's what we were looking at. Like, I think he maybe had a, a few, like, matches on Sova, but it was definitely not his, like, primary agent by any stretch. Now, though, it, it looking like it is. I almost don't want him to swap back. He is 9-2 to two right now. He was at 9-2. to two. That is absolutely insane. And then we look up above, and obviously, as we said, yeah, Sturban 0-7, to seven, having a really rough start. It's weird that he's the one taking most of the initial duels. Well, see, a lot of the time he is backside B, right? Getting pressure. Yeah. Those Astro Stars We've pushed out in the now. open. But, yeah, he is going for those that hook of control, that aggressive play, and it's not really working out, uh, sadly. They have pistols. Timio is on to He's landing almost every single shot that comes in front of him. Spike I see Meadow fall at least. Obviously, after getting a couple of kills, the nade comes right back. And again, I'm assuming this is going to be a fairly easy after plant scenario. Patino just watching to see if anybody's going to try and get aggressive. Even going to pop the showstopper. May not necessarily be needed in this round, but it does just hold them back. Means they can't really find any positioning before. His teammates have actually rotated back around, and Hoodie's just decided he wants to end the round anyway. Just playing a little bit of aim training. Eight to one. Giants utterly dominant, and as of right now, footballists, they've shown nothing. Not a bad showstopper, to be honest. Football has put a lot yeah. of utility into that round when they didn't have a strong buy. The read there from Giants, the read from Fatino was that, or Fatino, is that uh, he was going to be playing they were using the utility, they were going to push out right afterwards, right? And maybe they were. Maybe they were about to blitz out with the one player, try to catch them off guard. So instead, he pops that showstopper and says, hey, you've used your utility now. How are you going to retake? And the hoodie easily just shreds them from the side. I like it. Yeah, you don't have to get a kill with it to be impactful, but True. using it versus a, an eco isn't ideal, but he had just been hit by the grab well. I guess he just got a little bit scared. The other thing as well, though, is like normally, like if you're going to have it, you either need it to clear a site or to get openers, which yeah. are two things that Fatini has been doing without a showstopper anyway. For so sure. I guess at this point, it doesn't really matter. Also, <laughs> um, yeah, it is 8-1. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's like you can do it once. There's that. At the point where you pull out the Brazil, the 7-1, you can, yeah, you can start popping out your, your showstoppers. Do, do whatever the hell you want. Looks like we have a... Is it, this is this a tech pause or a tack pause? Because I don't see the tack pause pulled yeah, up on norm screen. Normally, they, they, they will make say. it very obvious for us yeah. because we are morons. So they well, go, well hey that's guys, the this, players, is, this is tactical. That's because that's because the players use the, the pause feature. But sometimes, sometimes people use the tech pause instead of the normal pause by accident. And then they just kind of count to a minute. Oh, it is a technical pause, though. So okay. It's not a hiccup. It's not a, you don't have to blame a silly the, mistake. You don't have to blame them. I don't players. have to call anyone out. No. <laughs> who who out. would you have called out? Uh, it would have been Meadow, wouldn't it? Oh, really? It would have been. Yeah, Meadow's dead. Of course, Vodafone Giants would have been calling a pause at 8 1 up. you got to figure out this attack side and all that sort of stuff. Now, we did mention coming into this, myself and Lothar were saying on the desk uh, that it just seems like Vodafone Giants are a better team. Uh, on paper, and I don't know for footballers, winning this series would be absolutely insane, but considering they kind of need to do it in a BO5 environment, they're not going to win on home ground. We know that with buying up first. I, it seems almost impossible for me, honestly, uh, especially because a lot of the time they haven't really been challenged internationally. Like, they've been playing mostly within Turkey. That grab well pulls Mosh right into the open. Hoodie deals with it. Flash is good, and it'll keep Hoodie alive. What an absolute disaster. Sure, they... <gasps> No. No way! With five HP, Hoodie survives, and it's a good thing too, because the rest of his team is falling all around him. Showstopper pop there, running away. Get out of that TP, because Cracks might have been chasing them all the way, but they're a little bit cautious, a little bit scared, and they pushed Vodafone Giants back to the A site, which is wide open. Yeah, that's the problem. Again, we're going into an afterplant, which, well, they've only managed one retake so far in the entirety of this game. And there has been a plant in the majority of rounds. Now, Hoodie's not going to be able to heal himself back up, so he does have to be very careful. A single shot dart. 
A nade, anything could be enough to try and kill him off at this stage. Meadow is just going to be defending, and all the nade is going to come through and finish him off. It's left all on to Ambi once again. We've seen him clutch already. He's looking for that initial pick, and the spacing is very far between. That was an easy kill for him to find. Even going to go into the drone and looking for Kiwi, who currently has an operator. I think he might even just spot him. The shot dart, not going to do any damage either. And this is so much information there for Ambi. Is he actually going to peek this? I think he's just going to wait because for Kiwi, he's with the what? operator and he gets the timing. Oh my God. Spot on. He is so good in these clutch situations. It was definitely risky, but as said, at this point, I don't really mind. It was even more risky because when, it, when he saw him in the drone, so there, was a, there was a lot of counterplay there. Let's first of all say, when we, when we started that, this is stupid. This is, I don't know how he got away absolute. with that. Absolute. And then this was a blast, blast pack, pack yeah. from his teammate helps. That's just absolutely ridiculous. Um, but I'll say in that last part, the shock dart that was thrown out was obviously to, from um, from Kiwi was to try and take Ambi out of the drone before he got the tag. That didn't work. But in the drone, he saw that he had an op. He yeah. saw he was holding the angle. And he just counted to five and took the peak. That was absolutely crazy, but it worked out. And now he shuts him down a second time, finishes the previous, and starts this round by taking mm, Kiwi down. And the trades seem to be going to All right. flawless. That started terribly, but they have recovered on it, at least for a moment. Yeah, the trades come back thick and fast, and Sasuke, well, he's, he's looking for the spot. The spike's actually still down in mid, so somebody at the moment from this giant squad is going to have to go and retrieve it and they may be wary that somebody's already pushed in from behind now they've got loads of time this was a very early fight within the round so a minute to play with there's no rush and trying to make sure that no one's coming from behind potentially just waiting to have an extra flash online so that they could check some of these angles and a lot of utility being used just to be as safe as humanly possible all of this noise should have been heard by the defenders. Flashes just being utilized to try and clear some of these spots out, even using the Tiger. Well, finally, we're going to actually start seeing the rotation of Viper on the other side. 30 seconds left. Yeah, that rotate around is, is coming in quite late, but it's okay. They were holding their bases, trying to catch them off on the push. Now, Vodafone Giants in a little bit of trouble. A low HP in play for their sky is unhealable. Fatino goes remaining. down, the round might be over. The ah! Maj falls. The flash is perfect onto Sasuke. And now they can just play this one together. Very difficult clutch for Sasuke. Swapping over to the Spectre. 23 bullets. That's enough to take them down. The first is his, but Fatino is quick on the trigger. 10 to 1 we go. Double digits for Vodafone Giants. And Tom, it is Last round it's starting to feel. Well, no, it started a while ago, yeah, but it's continuing to feel very, very bad for footballers because I'll look at this and I'll, I'll sit back and say, hey, okay, Vodafone Giants are good on this map. Yada, yada, yada. Bam. We saw it. Look, footballers haven't exactly looked fantastic uh, in their group stages either, right? In, let me just double check who it was. It was Liquid. When they came up against Liquid, a team that I would put above Vodafone Giants for sure, but Vodafone Giants are in the best shape they've ever been. So I'll give them a lot of respect. It was 13-2. Yeah. The they got rolled, and it feels like there is just a peak that they cannot get over in terms of like high skill EMEA teams. They can do well versus some middling teams, but when you get to the top level, it just doesn't add up. No way, Fatino, he's on the side! He's gotten behind Maj and completely ruined the Viper's pit! Oh, that's another B exec that works flawlessly even into a Viper's pit. Kiwi shut down an elbow. Oh, that's a disaster, Tom. Yeah, they even had an aggressive long take initially and they forced both players to go through the TP, leaving that Viper's pit alone. Again, Giants just look to be playing out of their mind, even having the correct utility to try and hold them back. Fatinho not going to get over aggressive either, wanting to try and play off of his teammate. Now, the nade will actually force him across, but he needed to find the kill off of the back of that. Still manages to land the first shot, but Meadow is there as the rook of the team to make this 11-1 in the first half. Giants looking truly unbelievable. The thing that does make it very difficult to play against Vodafone Giants at the moment is the fact that you have this early round where they are super confident because they are so high up on the scoreboard that they don't need to play formulaic. They don't need to play seriously and when that switch happens start of the game they're actually trying right they're playing very methodical very strategic and then all of a sudden they start to swap it up and
and play like Lunatics, it's very difficult to actually read that pace change and adapt to it. And I think that's where footballists are struggling now because they are just getting blindsided by these incredibly aggressive plays coming out of the likes of Fatinho just blast packing his way to B site, what, like six times yeah. without being challenged. I think that's also the mix as well that you've got David P in the background who, while he's doing this, is just placing all of these stuns and pulls and just making it so that they can't play together while Fatinho is doing this. And you, you give Fatinho an isolated duel, he's going to win it nine times out of ten. That was a very aggressive peak. That's kind of what I'm talking about. You think he does that? If it's like a VCT call, not a chance. But he's 11. What? Yeah, no, that's that's not okay, Fatino. You can't be doing that. Come on, man. He, he got shot at like two times, returned it instantly for a headshot. And now he's sitting here just what, waiting. What PCs have they got in the, the Red Bull sphere? Because I, I might need to yeah. uh, pick up one of those monitors. <laughs> oh, Fatino, they TP'd on him and he still killed three. David P on the Kiwi. And all of a sudden, there's one player left who's dealt with as well. Vodafone Giants have absolutely embarrassed them as it's now 12 to 1. One more round to completely wipe the floor with this Turkish attack side. Must be quite nice being the, the coach of coach of giants right now. You're just kind of chilling. Keep, just keep killing them, actually. I have, All right. Know, if you just want to, like, headshot some people through some walls every once in a while, that would be good. died four times. Abby has died four he, times. He would be top Half fragging. of footballers' kills. Half of footballers' team have got the same amount of kills as Abby has deaths, which is four, which is ridiculous yeah. in so many different ways. Oh, here we go. We're going to have more aggression. There's three players currently put it, pushing down through B, coming in on the flank. And there's a lot of utility that's going to be there to delay them on the other side of the map. This time, B <laughs> no way. Oh, oh this just end it. Just end it. And we're going to be throwing this one over to the desk. Sue, yeah, just take this one away from us, please. Because I'm, I, I, I can't believe two people just died to a nano swarm. I know that there was a pull there. I know that they got made vulnerable. But I don't think I've seen many people fall for that since Astra came into the game. Yeah, that was that was a demotivating game for footballist, I'm sure. And uh, well, I don't think there's going to be a whole lot for poor old Lothar and Sue to talk about. A feel for them in that aspect. <laughs> 13 to 1. Mm. My God, what an incredibly dominant game. You know what? Just as quick as the game happened and finished, so too. Well, this little segment, we're going to throw things to a break. When we come back, the analyst says it's going to have a, a lot of fun breaking down all the action we just saw. See you soon.
of course got the Vodafone Giants. It's one should I have my eyes on. No, not that yet. <laughs> well, we've had our time in the pod. We've all had a couple of laughs. We seem pretty confident, but we are off to the Boris bikes, so we'll see how we do at Olympic Park. So here we are in Olympic Park, where the Giants are going to recreate what the Olympic athletes did in 2012. A little bit of exercise. We're getting them moving on the Boris bikes. Let's see how they do. It's hard to multitask here, yeah. cycling and talking. Yeah. Skills that you'll also need, of course, when playing, when communicating and fragging. I've nearly killed you again, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, it's fun. Sorry. <laughs> Which team wouldn't you want to play? Um, I wouldn't mind seeing anyone. You're happy to take everyone on? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just not the bikes? <laughs> yeah, not the bikes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've done some extreme cycling, so I think we should take a breather because one man's already down. Boys, if we're talking backgrounds, history of all of you as players, how did you first get into competitive gaming? Where did you find your start? Mm, my brothers. Uh, started to teach me how to play. It was mostly COD back in the day, console games, you know. But eventually you grow up and you start playing PC games. So started off on the control, yeah, stepped then... up into the, the keyboard and mouse. Exactly. What exactly. games did you play? On PC I started playing League of Legends mm. uh, from the beginning. Yeah, that's where it started. But then I came into CES more FPS style and find it much more fun. So you found your home in sort of first person shooters. Is yeah. that the same for the whole team that yeah. FPS just called to you the most? Yeah, for yeah. sure. I mean, I started when I was 10 years old, playing Call of Duty, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, shooters are my, my passion. I mean, for me, when I play FPS, my, my mental is much better. Like when I play mobile, like League of Legends, you know, I get so tilted. I think that's like the main <laughs> difference, to be honest. He's got to keep you cool. Yeah, exactly. exactly. But hopefully at this event, we're also going to hear all of you getting loud as well, right? Mm, for sure. That's the difference. First person mm. shooters, that sort of environment to get that raw high octane that comes out yeah. in competitive competitions. That also something that's always kept you interested. Yeah, for sure. Like the energy, you know, you always got to be hyped up, you know, to go with the flow, just follow the flow and bringing much energy and uh, screaming, you know, it impacts so much. Oh, it does. It does indeed. And what else would you do if you weren't competing in Valorant at the minute and you weren't involved in esports? What other careers would you have gone into? No idea. I was a mailman before, so... <laughs> oh, so you're a, you're a little postboy. Mm, Deliver the letters. Indeed. Deliver indeed. the frags. Yeah. That's what I like to hear. Exactly. <laughs> From two wheels to four, we're going to keep this journey spinning and keep our giants moving in the right direction. We've ditched the bikes, so let's have a look at the carousel we've prepared for them. A lovely London taxi. All right then, boys. Let's bundle in and go and get some pie and mash. As you guys saw there, that's what Giants got up to when they were here in London with Jackie, a nice little bike ride through Olympic Park. And I felt like Lothar, that was a nice ride for them as well on Vine, just chilling, strolling onto a side, killing everybody and winning the game. We hate seeing blowouts, but Giants were just the better team on that map. I blinked and the map was Pretty over. Much, yeah. <laughs> I blinked three times, okay, I'll be fair. So, 14 rounds in which of 11 did yeah. start with a first blood by Giants, which is absolutely mental because they started on the attacking half, right? And they dismantled footballers just piece by piece. I feel like uh, it, it's kind of hard to pinpoint where exactly did it fall apart from for footballers, apart from the fact that almost every single death that they have that they had was with no one being there for the to, for, for the teammates to actually kind of back him up. Like this is a good example here. Sasuke just kind of peeks out after one of his teammates dies on Cubby, but he peeks out and then proceeds to die with no value. And then the retake is three versus five. 
instead of having a four versus five with a breach ready. And, and I feel like this is the culprit of most of those rounds for football is because they were just overpeaking, not being ready to trade, or, or just single-handedly making those really aggressive plays like this one here and not capitalizing on it. The, the Giants were ready for almost every single peak from footballist, and uh, it does help when you always have an man advantage on attack because then you can go one for one trades and you always win the round. I mean, we spoke a little bit about why they decided to not uh, that nade. <laughs> I, I, yeah, let's. I can't even really speak about that because you don't see that very often. One person may be falling for it, but two, uh, that's really tough to see. I, I just feel like that might be just at some point you might be a little bit tilted, you know, yeah. and you make that ah. Let's go for it. You know, maybe maybe it will work, but it was the last round and it didn't work. So they looked like yeah. what they look like right now. But yes. <laughs> when you lose 12-11, sorry, 12-1, it really feels tough that you make a comeback. So maybe they just went for like a big hurrah at the yeah. end. Like it a just didn't work GG out. go next kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just really quickly before we move on to your telestrator, um, mm -hmm. the Kiwi Sova. Uh, do you think that was the problem? I, I don't think it was a problem. I just feel like it's it's. Um, well, okay, it is a problem. It's kind of hard to, uh, let's say, put it in the words because we don't see the other side of what would happen if we had Kiwi on a jet. But it did feel that even though he was playing on Sova, he was trying to play like a duelist and it, that didn't work that much, right? And it also might be the fact that it seems like footballers are trying to make it work on bind like they play a very uh, European-esque composition, right? but they played differently than what the European teams played the composition like on bind. And because of that, it didn't work. Yeah, I mean, maybe we'll see Kiwi back on the... Uh, Has to be. Yeah, back on the jet soon. Uh, but before we move on to the next map, uh, you've got a round to break down for yes, us. Yes, I do have one. Um, it's more of an explanation what do we see here, because typically when a Viper on... <laughs> I know, I know Viper. I'm a little bit biased <laughs> here. But we see footballers have a Viper set up on B. Uh, there's just two players, the Viper and the Breach, with a retake set up. Typically when a, when a wall is being placed on B, it starts at Garden and it just kind of makes a, a line through hookah that goes next to the box outside of the DP. So when the attackers are coming in front of hookah here uh, to this tunnel, they're being exposed to a player that might have been hiding behind the box. Now, this wall is different because it allows the attackers to gain more space. So it's a little bit awkward. Uh, and I'm trying to understand what is the reason for that, because if the attackers are going through the wall, you can still hide behind the box and you're not affected by the DK. So this spot is not as risky as before. And when you go actually on site and plant the spike, you can still hide in cubby because you're being covered by the wall that is being used for retake. And when you use the wall for retake, you just want to limit the amount of angles that you have to check before committing to the octagon area and the hookah area, which is typically held by the retake wall that is actually going like this, or just straight up like this. In this case, this doesn't really help, but what it tells me is that there's also one toxic orb that is being put on default spot, which stops the plant because it affects the planter with the DK, so there might be a combination with the snake bite or the aftershock. But if that fails, they, they have to then do a retake with this weird wall that allows the attackers to have still a lot of space. So I'm a little bit doubtful when it comes to like how this would be effective and, and if Giants would still be on B, but they never seem to be attacking B and they just straight up to go to A where there's not a lot of utility to stop them from coming on site and they just essentially brute force their way onto site, plant and essentially make the Viper and the Breach retake a site which, is, which was not effective. What you're saying is don't use that wall if you can help uh, it. I would rather not. <laughs> I trust you. You're the Viper expert here. And speaking of Viper, the next map, Icebox, we're definitely going to see two Vipers yep. here. We didn't see it on Bind. Uh, but also, uh, Icebox could be a place where we do see footballers get back into the game. Because if we look at their record here, they've beaten big already in the group stage uh, in this tournament. In the past, they beat G2, they beat Supermassive Blaze, and they beat Fire Flux as well in their own region. So if we're going to talk about home grounds, uh, Lothar, this is their home ground. It is, um, but at the same time, Giants just shown so much presence on the map and so much uh, discipline when it comes to just the fundamental level of play. I'm really, really nervous for footballers because it seems like they might be get 
another 13-1 or just get straight up dismantled by Giants and it's gonna end up in a quick 2-0. The map, Icebox itself, is more attacker based than bind and it showed that the discipline that Giants have on attack is just making them, uh, them a very efficient team. Mm -hmm. So when, we, when we're gonna go to, to a map like Icebox, it might be even more complicated to footballists to present a good defense, right? And uh, well, this is a fast agent select. Uh, we are expecting a Miracom, and and I know we're going to get a Miracom here. Yeah. Uh, but do you ha do you feel better now uh, this time around? You know, speaking of the Viper as well, that Sturben is going to be on the Viper, and he's very competent. Yes, I would say that Sturben was uh, always more flashy and, yeah. and efficient at Viper than any other player in the footballist that we have seen so far. Uh, so much. Uh, but I'm happy to see him back on that Viper. Kiwi makes me even more happy. I feel so much better. Yeah. Really, I feel like he is that one-trick pony in a good sense mm -hmm. that he needs to play that jet to make footballers work as a team and it was lacking in the previous map. Can they do it? Can they at least stretch this out to more than two maps? I think it's going to be closer than Bind, specifically because it seems like the, the, the composition just fits their roles better. Uh, but Giants and the way they presented themselves, I don't want to play against a team like that. Okay, well, we'll see, Lothar, we'll see, because footballers, they have to win here if they want to stay in this tournament. Over to you, Mitch and Tom. Certainly going to be a big challenge for them, considering how that first map went down. But now they're on their own home ground. They can feel a little bit more comfortable. And Tom, what I'll say off the bat, if we see a player blast packing into one site 10 different times, obviously that can't happen. Yeah, I was about to say. Something Good similar, let's say dashing into the site, right? Then I'm going to be a little bit concerned. Dashing uh, through the snow. Because... Because obviously when it comes down to the, the previous map, yeah, you can be kind of lost when it comes to setting up your defense. If it's not a map you're very comfortable on. When it comes to Icebox, though, that cannot be the case. This is where we need to see footballists come out with a good start. And it's on the attack side that they'll look to do it. Yeah, I, I think this is also footballist's best map as well. So I, I think the going into this one, it should be a completely different story. They've gone from playing a permaban to one that they're very competent on. Kiwi's back on his main agent, and you can expect a lot more from him. Still a good map for Giants, though. Like, they're, they're no slouches here, so we'll have to witness whether or not they're actually going to be up to the same standard already. It, it, the push coming in. So it's not the same Viper wall you'd normally see. It's not True. the ideal retake one. Oh, up above we go. Hello. <laughs> David B is happy to take that fight. He was stood on the corner of the wall. And that's a little bit of an oversight by footballist on the angles. Now that wall's getting broken with a flank through mid. Good for two. Sturban off to a great start. The man went zero one for seven. And now he's died to a snake Last bite. Would be one. David P picked up the sheriff on the rotate. And he's going to make his way all the way around behind. He knows he can make noise and just run the whole way. The spike being planted as we speak. That's going to tell him he can run even further and get right up to this player there goes the wall and at this point of course Crax is going to be thinking that he's towards the spawn towards mid trying to use this wall to catch him off guard and instead David P has come up behind him for the four kills to close out that round David P once upon a time we knew him for his lurks well so still got the same personality <laughs> you see that straight away it's time his lurks come through for a 4k and a round win for Vodafone Giants yeah, I think that he almost seemed to make the best of a bad situation because that definitely isn't how he was expecting to play the round. Boosted up on a wall, then having to fight back into mid. Because I actually think the strategy from Footballist was pretty good. To have those players late lurking through and actually running back in behind, it was a great flank. But it was just that David P managed to basically shut both of them down and then rotate him for another play altogether. So fantastic round from him. Not something I'm, I'm sure he'd be able to recreate all the time if they managed to split him through like that again again, but if you're winning your team the pistol, hey, it's not bad. Big old plays from David. Let's see what else he can do. One to zero. I clock it up and football is going to take a full eco on this one. Classics to play with David P. Oh, spraying away. A little bit of damage on that one. I see a sheriff, actually. I saw that equip animation stir, but he's feeling himself. Maybe I'm dumb. Was it a classic? Let's see. No, that, was, that, was, that was a little sheriff. Big damage done. David P. 70 HP goes back for a heal and just falls back. This is the right call. Give them the ult orb, but you've already made them pay for it by losing a player. And as football has looked to blitz out towards the B site, I was going to say Vodafone Giants would be stacked up because Sova was here a second ago, but now he's gone back. Now he's here again. David at least going to get the trade on the cross. This is the thing, like having a rifle in this sort of round when your opponent 
aren't really going to have the weapons to fight with. He can just play at distance and actually decides to try and switch up some of the angles, maybe trying to force some of the players back with the utility he has. But they're basically trapped. Like, sure, they have their own screen, but that shot from Moj changes the round a little bit because there's now a rifle down on the ground and a bit of space to play with. That has to be recovered and defended aggressively for football as rotating out might not even be a bad call. They want to fight for it, and they are doing a damn good job. Fatino lit down to 32. Hell, I don't think we saw Vodafone Giants challenge like this in the entirety of the last map, let alone coming into this one of Icebox. Now they're starting to move towards the A site, and that's where the cross is being watched. They're ready for this on the Vodafone Giant side. They'll catch the information on the crossover. Ten seconds left. What are they, are they gonna run out of time? One enemy remaining. Well, meta off screen just <laughs> mows them down for a 3K. <laughs> so it's like, fair it's enough. Like, the other thing as well though is like, I, I agree that rotating back wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing, but they did it so late that they just had to kill everyone. Either that or they had to try and split back through mid, but I still don't think they had enough time to actually get a plant down anyway. So it was a bit of a weird one. I guess the end goal was just to try and do as much damage as humanly possible, but there was no chance they could win the round with the rotation they went for. Yeah. I, I guess they were just looking to cause more damage, maybe? Split up their mid? Get some kills? I don't know. A little bit two to zero. The full buy for football comes through. This is where they can have a much better chance of closing this one out. Dino, though, scope in hand, looking for heads, and Kiwi almost challenges him. He was just a degree or two away from taking that peak, and it could have been dangerous. In fact, this wall even leaves a big gap to play with. A very intentional coming out of Vodafone Giants. Give Dino that space, trying to lull football into a false sense of security. So far, they're not falling for it. They're staying super passive in their defaults. And we talked about this on the desk, about how footballers, they love to play those There's defaults line, early round now, and then blitz in later on. Try to let you make a mistake. The Giants are playing a tight game right now. Yeah, it almost looks like a bit of a retake setup being put in onto the B site, but they actually don't have the screen available to them. So I, I feel like it's going to leave them in a, Viper's pit. A, a pretty tough spot eventually that is that is true but yeah. even still like utilizing it might not be the easiest thing in the world especially with the rotations if they go in that direction luckily for them the majority of the players Toxins are still waiting outside a and i think footballists were expecting there to be more aggression here coming out for the opposing side the only real aggression is coming out from the marshal of fatinho they'll have a chance but he flicks off still good to take cracks down the wall up will buy him a little bit of space at least light the players up as they walk on through, make them easier to take down. Sturvin caught on the flank. The rest of the team already on A. This is a disaster for football. It's a round that they looked definitely favored in. Coming in with the rifles, and with 10 seconds left, they have to get that spike planted with a two-man disadvantage. Sasuke in left. trouble. Shock darts going out, and the spray is terrible. Patino easily deals with him, but hold on. They're fighting their way back in, clawing to try and recover this round. Nice attempt by Kiwi, but sadly it won't work. And that attacker Killjoy ultimate not likely to survive all too long. They are just jumping out of three seconds left as it gets destroyed. And so too does Maj, the defuse found easily. Vodafone Giants up to three, beating back the first buy of Footballist. And it looks like we're going down a similar road as map number one if this keeps up. That's a very bad sign. Again, like it, it seemed like the, the setup as well was a fairly big risk coming out from Giants, fair enough, in the round that they had. They were very reliant on Vitinho just hitting some shots, and that's exactly what he did. Like, they're doing that much damage with the Marshall. He now is going to come in with the Operator as well, so if it wasn't bad it's enough, defensive. it's definitely got quite a bit worse. I, li I really like the setup in the previous round from Vodafone Giants. In this round, they don't seem to be playing retake on B, but they are still looking for that control. Uh, towards the A site with the Viper wall. And obviously the logic of the previous round was you can just walk up through mid, go up to the box, and then um, like the, the default plant spot, right? But on the mid side of it, pop down your ulti, and then you're back on the site. Or you have to fight into them and it should be fairly easy. In this situation though, you're, you're looking to really take those fights. I guess they're thinking the footballers will have sensed the free space, but now they've seen two players. They know that this is stacked up on, and they still want to move forward. These pistols looking to really deal some damage towards the rifles, and Patino needs to dash on out of their hoodie to cover. Great little setup from Vodafone Giants. Yeah, they've managed to retreat back, play off each other fairly well, and... Nobody really being dropped just yet, although the flank not bad from Maj. Another kill coming through from Sturban. That's a potential rifle to be found, but they don't know Meadow is currently stood up above. Braxto has turned it into a winnable position. Sturban onto the one versus two.
He has himself the spike, even the Viper's pit gonna be thrown in. A rifle's been retrieved. Vandal, not Phantom, but it will do for now. And on the other side of things, they're desperately hoping that they can find him through that pit. And the recon's not gonna reveal him. The spray's out here on the right side, coming close. Sturban stands undeterred. Snake bite, not gonna hit him. David P wants to move around the outside. Oh, this is smart. He might walk in behind him. Oh, in fact, the barrel's spotted, but Sturban, he wins that with a phantom. But unfortunately, Vandal in hand, the round will be lost, and Vodafone Giants lock up another one. Close one, considering what football has had to work with. And I gotta say, I, I, I overlooked at the start of the round the fact that footballists were on an eco. The fact that Vodafone Giants go for that aggressive peak makes a lot of sense. Do you want to play retake B? Like use your Viper's Pit versus pistols? No, they have a much better chance of taking you down then. Instead, they at least chip away at the attackers before they make it to the site. And then things got close in the end, but they managed to take it across the line. An incredibly costly round and one that actually Giants could be punished for. They're, they're Credits definitely aren't as high as they could be. The main worry for me, though, is they almost have every single ultimate online. I think the most is like three orbs away. They've got the Viper's Pit available, Res, and of course, a trusty Bladestorm of Dettino to try and make a play with. And again, it's going to be this aggressive stance, at least initially into A, but nothing spotted. They actually start to fall back a little bit, and that could be to their demise, because that is where the majority of players are. Although Sasuke has now been tagged, so they definitely know that someone's here. Nice uh, shot on to David P, as good old Ryan Central would let us know. Oh, big miss. Right click not landing for Patino. Luckily, he has a rifle to play with instead. They've already lost a player, and I assumed that was going to be the trade back, but now they're in a little bit of trouble, especially with Ambi Bowling. Football is looking to get the first round of the board, but Patino steps it up. Meadows there to back him up, and yet again, Football is they're falling apart at four versus one out of a very winnable round. Poor old Sturban's 20 HP after the first fight, which doesn't inspire a whole lot of confidence to win a 1v3 with a spike not planted. Meadow seals the deal, five to zero. I mean, we said they'd just be outclassed. We said Vodafone Giants, just a better team. That's just how it is, and you're seeing it right here. Uh, footballers, they've got ideas, they've got plans, but they do not have the firepower to match. Yeah, and it's surprising because a lot of teams really struggled versus footballers just based off individual brilliance. This map in particular was one that they beat some top teams on, but as of right now, it, it does look like that. It just looks like in any scenario, Vodafone Giants can bring it back and make it a winnable position even after losing the early picks, even after a whiffed blade storm. It just didn't even seem to matter that much to them, and they win the round still in fairly dominant fashion. So I am starting to get a little bit scared, and we still have ults available. They're going to throw one in straight off the bat to block off that initial take towards the B site. And on the other side of things, well, they're hoping that Kiwi can maybe rally the troops a little bit with his Blade Storm. You have to remember as well, football has had the choice of all seven maps, or, well, six, because I get second pick. Uh, there was no ban initially, so they chose Icebox. This is their best chance. And three of the rounds so far have been diffuses, and in somewhat close scenarios. So for Vodafone Giants, it's good. It's not amazing, but what it says about the series is important, because as we go further in, it means that footballers won't be as comfortable on the other maps. This is literally their best chance to win, and they're 5-0 down, getting decimated. They managed to get themselves an afterplant scenario just sneaking their way through. They've avoided the Viper's Pit completely and got themselves an elevated plant. Kiwi as well is already going to find another one, and Vitinho definitely doesn't have the right gun, but I, I think Sasuke thought he was completely covered. They should now have a decent idea that both remaining players are actually going to be towards mid, and they could just defuse. Vitinho's made this retake look easy. He's got Hoodie to help him out at the end, and again, it was looking like a decent scenario. <laughs> yeah, I, I pause for a reason. Uh, <laughs> he didn't do it to his own teammate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, six zero. It's not, it's not great, is it, Tom? He wanted that defuse bad. Oh yeah. Hey, take the ult orb. Die to the snake bite as well. Why not? It's just free ult orbs at this stage. <laughs> it's not like money's going to be too much of a problem for Vodafone Giants. As we said, some of these rounds have been pretty close. Look at the timeline there. Time Perfectly out. symmetrical. I do appreciate that. Four defuses that have gone through Here. so far. Football's been getting to sites, they've been getting plans. In fact, in at least two of the rounds, it looks like they definitely should have closed it out. Uh, they were massively favored. They pulled it up to like 70 to 75% chance of winning the round. And then they just get absolutely steamrolled like they're on an eco. That can't be happening. It just can't. And Vodafone Giants, like we said, this team, they're playing tight. They're not giving away opportunities. Look at how they're playing right now. 
still sat down with their 3-2 setup. They've got their Killjoy utility holding out on mid. Footballist obviously realizing that their attack side strategy of playing those defaults and looking for Vodafone Giants to get aggressive and make mistakes isn't going to work this time around. They're going to have to make a move in the early stages as towards the A side they've chosen. Ready. Hunter's Fury popped by Ambi, hits his teammate a little bit, but it doesn't matter with Patinia already finding another kill elsewhere, and they have an almost full rotation. The full squad's waiting. You've got Hoodie watching the back lines, but at this point, they're just walking straight into the blender. Even with utility to try and separate some of these players, you're not really isolating any of the jewels just because it's so obvious at this point where they're going. No room to back out, and uh, this has just become a slaughter. Sturban, well at least making things a little bit more costly, but that's all we have to talk about at this stage. A little bit of extra credits. What I'll say is Sturban, Sturban definitely looks a lot more comfortable here. Obviously, like we said, we, over on Bind, it's not somewhere the footballists are exactly comfortable. Sturban was constantly on that Aster, taking the aggressive fights in towards Hookah, looking for those um, B-holds on the backside, and he was lost. He really didn't know what was going on. Winning duels on a map you're not comfortable with versus a team that is very comfortable on it is not very easy. Right now, he's 8-7. Eight, eight to seven. He's actually doing way better than the whole rest of the team, including Kiwi on that jet. I'm liking what I'm seeing from Sturban here. He's showing us that, hey, I'm not a noob. I, I can aim, but can the rest of your team? <laughs> oh, okay. Probably yes. Okay. Uh, not when they're shot in the head by Vodafone Giants. Oh, this is what they all Sturban. right. They, they go for the early aggressive use of that Hunter's Fury, but actually push off the back of it to manage to get themselves an opening pick. There's a couple of weapons to be found, but Vitinho is still roaming, and he, he really hasn't been missing too many shots. The turret would give his position away, so he's just going to sit slightly more passive, but it still has that information garnered for the not team. Not that it would matter island. anyway, because he has already found a kill. Rez also up. will bring it back to a five versus three. This is a round that they cannot afford to lose, even though they have some weaker weaponry. And Fatinho, Dampy, Meadow find kills to turn it down to just one. But maybe most can save it, Mitch. Maybe. It's a 1v1. It's all of a sudden very winnable indeed. David going to have to be the one to pull this one off, and the spike is left behind. It's going to buy a little bit of extra time. Lockdown to play with, not likely to be used, but that operator, it was scary. He's going to go for the Vandal as he tries to retake this control. Oh, the timing. Terrible. Oh, he spotted him. And I, I really do not think I got the spike. that David has realized that he has been spotted. The Poison Orb activated as he starts to rotate over towards the A site, hoping perhaps Mosh will go for a fake, but that is not the case. He's looking to try and hunt down this kill. 13 seconds remaining. He needs to get this plant in safely. 10 seconds left. He doesn't know where this guy could be. All the corners cleared. Now's the time to plant. There's no time to come off it. That's going to buy David Peace some time to start that rotate around, move into position. Mosh has already cleared out a lot of this as he rounds the corner. David's there waiting for him, taking him out. Eight rounds on the board for Vodafone Giants. And well, we're back to that stage again. Tom, been a long time. I think maybe Challengers 2 was the last time I said it, but I feel like I'm DJing a funeral. <laughs> it's not crazy. It, it's more depressing because of the fact that they've been able to find like some really solid like opening points. Yeah. Like in this round again, they initially get the opener. They use the Hunter's Fury to tag up some players while there's a push. They find a kill with the pistol. They res the player back up, and then they manage to isolate some of the remainder as well. But it's just because a lot of their like aggressive plays are so telegraphed, Giants at this point just full rotate. Like it, It's not even like they're maybe leaving a player behind. Or they're just full rotating. They go, okay, everyone's now on this site, and they still have to walk into it. And, and that's the thing. It's like... I feel like just with a couple of fake plays here and there, they could have easily baited them into like maybe an over rotation, caught themselves back out. But it looks like footballists have kind of got to the point where they're just trying these really, really direct rounds just because nothing else has been working. Yeah, no, I think they're, they're banging their head against the wall at this point. Yeah. Because it, it's got to be the most frustrating thing to have so many rounds come so close and to end up losing them. It's not so much, it's not on the players clutching. Like you can't sit there in that position and go, oh, Maj, come on, oh. dude, how do you not win that 1v1? That's not his responsibility. It's the players that die and don't get anything done. It's your duelists that are going in there and not putting the numbers up. Wait, he, that, that was a one versus three. So th exactly. the fact that he loses it really isn't that bad. It's just because it came down to a one versus one that we were sort of like, uh uh. We talked about Sturban having a rough map when it came to bind. And look at this, Sasuke, zero and eight, really not getting they, it done. 
The other thing as well, like, it's going to sound harsh, but I don't even think that matters that much. It's the fact that Kiwi's just not having anywhere near the that impact that they need of him. Like, even though he's doing better on the board, they're ice there you go. They're isolating him so easily and with some fairly telegraphed plays. Like, this is something you'll see Patini you do quite run. regularly. A lot of players will do this quite regularly. Now, we're going to get the Killjoy ult. Yo, what are you planning here? Like, they've got the shot that's going through. But it's not actually going to deny it. I think he'll be okay, even though he has actually been caught. And the fact that they now have a two-man advantage makes this, again, very unlikely. They've got to try and clear out David P. And they didn't. No, they didn't. He's just back inside that Viper ult, ready to play into these guys. Looking very different these days as well. At least Fatino's not going to be spotted. He's playing in the dark. Got a lights on. Welcome to my world. Let's go, David, into the side, he goes, and oh, the round is over immediately. Nine to zero, Vodafone Giants coming out with an absolutely incredible performance, and you have to give it to them. They are they are definitely looking like the stronger team right now. They're looking like maybe even the strongest team in the entire tournament. Like, I, I, I wouldn't even be surprised. But they're on the opposite side to Liquid, right? Yeah. You're not sure about it. Liquid are, are left jump. Yeah, they're playing they're yeah, playing they ten star. They right? are for sure. Yeah. yeah. Liquid play ten star on the left side, I suppose. And then we have this side of the bracket as well. I would not Giants. be surprised if we saw a Liquid Giants final. Even though the other side has two of the best teams in the entirety of EMA. Ascend and Gambit will lose. I, I could see it just with how they've been playing Champions. so far That's in this thing, tournament. Right? Yeah. And that is it. Fnatic, Sand, Gambit, don't expect them to play the right game. They got champs coming up. They got to conceal their strats. They got to play their... Giants look line. insane as well. That, that's the thing. Like, they are destroying teams at the moment. An early trade, again, going in the favor of the side of footballists. We're sounding like a broken record because they've done this so many times. They're yet to close out a round. This time, though, they have baited the rotation a little bit. It's only going to be Meadow here. They're actually going to use the smokes at a bit of a fake. Sturban lurking his way through has managed to pick off Hoodie, and they're still going towards the A site while the attackers are making a play into B. You know, Hoodie was always a middling all player in CSGO, right? Like, he never really delivered to the tier one level. Yeah. It was never really uh, someone that you got massively excited about, let's say. And coming into Valorant, he was a jet op as well. Oh, no! This could it can't, it can't. It's a two versus uh, four. The Swarm's done so much damage, they didn't destroy it. The oh no, not again! He's just caught trying to come through middle. Meadow was Please. so ready they for need it. need one. Beating them like a book, cracks. Give them around. Himself up at least, recovering from the Nano Swarm down. Yes. Down goes Fatino, and it's all on the Meadow. A 1v2 clutch that he will not win. And footballist have put a round on the board, ladies and gentlemen. That might be the last one they get, though. Why, why, why are you going to say it like that? This, this is the start of something new. Can someone get this? 13-1, my prediction. I don't know about you, Tom. <laughs> I don't know where you're going with this. 13-2. Thank you. <laughs> Forever the optimist. All right, yeah, pistol round, maybe. Yeah, you know. Lose a force by. Good, good chance. Sturban has been having a great game. I, I got to give him props, man. To bounce back from the previous map and look this good is, is really, really nice. And what I wanted to say about Hoodie, I really didn't like when he came to Valorant. Um, I mean, it's a, it's a very easy plug and play, but he was just playing Jet Up, Jet Up, Jet Up all the time. And I was like, right, you got like 70 maps on Jet? I'm not really that interested. I want to see you actually play the game, uh, not just one trick. Because people will figure it out. The game will deepen in in well depth and um you're gonna end up in the <laughs> you're gonna end up deepen in depth i suppose i could have just said the game will deepen and then just move on because it's the same thing right but anyways it didn't sound right so i just i, I added an extra little bit it's all right it's embellishing in depth guys point is hoodie uh you Double know this is the kind of guy <sighs> screw you tom uh hoodie's the kind of guy now that he has that little bit of extra depth he has that ability <laughs> to to flex into different agents to play just not the peanut brain i'm a jet off that's what i do and I really like watching him now. I think he's been a, a throwing shade very jet valuable. Offers. Uh, jet only offers, yeah. No, not Fatino. Literally, Fatino literally just played Rays on the previous map. The funny thing is, I, I reckon every time you try and emphasize something, you say it more wrong. Yeah, maybe. Fatino, oh, there we go. <laughs> Snake Snake bite shock dart yeah, yeah. down straight away. They're trying to deny Vodafone Giants from getting any control over the orb, and. Vodafone Giants are happy with that. They're like, hey, yeah, waste your utility, no problem, because they're sitting back. If Fatino has the patience to sit here, he's better farm a free kill. Maj peeking into the corner, shot missed, updraft immediately. Look at that movement, look at the repositioning. I love it, but he still gets tagged up, and that's going to force him back to the site. Great play by Footballist, utility in the early round, giving them that advantage and avoiding the early off pick. 
Yeah, they've still got to deal with this man, but this time Kiwi is there. An opener, again though, it's an almost full rotation. There's still a lurk on the other side of the map though, which has to be dealt with by David P. And he's not going to be able to. Sturman has done his job. He can now come in for a later mid flank, although there is a bot watching to make sure he isn't going to be able to make that push easily. If they can get rid of Meadow, it opens up quite a few. Haven't used Kiwi though. Just goes jump peeking into the angle and takes down Ambi. A five versus two. A second round looking likely, and Kiwi finally coming alive. Well, it's about time. That operator in his hand certainly looking good, and maybe it spells some good things about what we can see in the next half when he's on that defensive side. It's a little bit easier to uh, <laughs> use that up. That's a Yassine dash right there. But it's worked out. Nine to two. Second round for football is top. You might have been right your 13-2 call, but maybe they can push even further. Maybe they can make it all the way. Make the comeback happen. Could be the 9-3 curse if they get this one. Yeah, the only problem is we've always spoken about this map being... Well, problem is they're 9-2 down. But also, <laughs> the the we, we no, talk the only about... Problem. We talk about problem. this being an attacking-sided map. So the fact that they're looking to come into this one with maximum of three rounds, it, it still looks like an absolute disaster. And le unless they can maybe prove us wrong. Like, as I said, Kiwi's defensive operator is pretty damn good on this map. Likes to get nice and aggressive. So maybe if he can get into form, there's a chance that they can try and turn this around and give us what I believe will be the first five map series so far, get or at least even way. option for five map. Every game so far has been 2-0, and Vitinho wants to keep it that way. Yes, he does. He's going back in without the dash, and Maj punishes him right away. The confidence the Vodafone Giants display is down. clear. Oh! Well, that's not how you want that fight to go. We end up in a 2v3 with Ambi falling. But these players are trapped on the site, surrounded on all sides, and the spike is down. How do you find space out of Last this one? Watch standing. from every angle. Sturban going to be caught off, and Kiwi's about to be shot in the back from spawn. Easy kill for Meadow once he steps on out. And there you go. 10 to 2, Team Ace to close it out. Vodafone Giants getting a nice and easy first half, and you can see that they are thrilled to be winning this game. No, obviously it doesn't mean that much to them because they can tell from about round five that they are just better. Yeah, it's a shame because a lot of those early rounds really weren't very back and forth. Well, they were close, but because of the streak, I feel like they just got a little bit lost, a little bit demoralized, sure. and then started to just go for some very direct approaches, which, as said, it made the rotations very easy for Giants. So they were having four minimum, really, players on the site as they were going for these executions, and then maybe just having Hoodie going, well, they've not rotated back, guys. They're definitely still on A. So it, it, it became pretty much just a slaughter. And now going into the attacking side for Giants, they have to grind out three rounds, which basically they win the pistol and they're two thirds of the way there. It doesn't sound good when you put it like that, but I guess the upside is it doesn't really sound good in general. It's a pretty terrible situation to be intended to down. You don't even have the 9-3 curse in your favor. Vodafone Giants, 10 rounds on the board. They win this pistol round on the attack. This is gonna be a very, very quick series indeed. Get us back on schedule. I'd appreciate we threw in a bonus game and well, they, they appreciated the fact that they had a narrow time slot. Yeah, well, they've, they've, they've got to go around London again. I think they've gone about four times. Oh, yeah, get Jackie. With Jackie. He's, no, he's a Londoner, did you know? 100% Londoner. 100%. There you go. The London boy. Same. But that can't be mentioned. All oh, right. I'm only 99% Londoner. Exactly. So Jackie's the 1% e idiot. The. <laughs> Oh, so you already said Londoner, don't worry. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Remember where you are. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, remember, remember, <laughs> remember where I'm from, Tom. Yeah, just watch that road. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, well. Vodafone Giants, double digits. Very, very slow round indeed with 30 seconds left. They'll blitz it. Hoping the footballists would make a move first, left. but they were wrong. That did not happen. Oh, Big really recon ready. in behind. And, oh, they're walled out. Fight goes to All right. I mean, that was a massacre to start with, and I could see them just continuing it, but Cracks steps up to at least do something. The thorn in the side of the attackers will make them lose that one player, but look at the damage done to Maj. He's less than half HP, no shields left. As they walk on in, Patino, there you go. Quick and easy kill. Second foul, that's three in the round, and Sturman's left alone. Goes about as you'd expect with only no. one kill. Footballists lose the pistol round and it is now 11 to two. Uh, it's kind of gone from bad to worse, hasn't it? Yeah, I was gonna ask you a question, but I realized the answer's already written on that guy's t-shirt. I was gonna be like, will there be a comeback? 
And uh, you decided the answer was Giants. Yes, that was the man I was talking about. Makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, the guy that said nope. No. Giants. There's a Giants chance that they'll make it <laughs> all the way back into this one. Uh, now, for footballers, obviously, with two rounds, I think yeah. uh, even they would probably say this game might be over. But you know that famous speech by Taco? You know? Show them that we're good and all that sort of good stuff on Nuke. They lost. They did. They did still lose, but it's it's you know it's it's about the two rounds later. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they just got smashed. But that's not the point, Tom. The point is, they had faith. They kept the morale up. Okay. You know what I mean? That's so what it's all about. As long as sometimes. you believe you won't lose. Believe in the heart of the cards, man. Even if you do lose. My childhood friend. Matter. My childhood friend Yugi used to always tell me that. Believe oh. in the heart of the cards. I didn't have many friends, Tom. Okay. The PlayStation game of Yu-Gi-Oh kept me. Oh dear. Kept me sane. Oh, Sturban's gone down to a shock dart. It's not getting any better. No, it's not. A three versus five. I don't actually know if they forced into this round. I would assume not, it's otherwise this really up. is uh, that extra bit worrying. Hoodie going to play just behind One the side of the wall. Remaining. They're not going to be able to break it. Not even looking like a single kill will come through. 12 to 2, a chance for Giants to make it into the semifinals in Match relatively point. easy, fa uh, very easy fashion. Ten opportunities to do it. Hey, well, after my, after map one, man, I was I was a little bit worried that I was going to fall asleep. At least I wouldn't be alone. Football has beat me to it. So, so <laughs> that's because he's having a nap. So yeah, no, he's been <laughs> he's been having a nap for a little bit. Yeah, Sermon woke up though between this map and the and the previous. Yeah, at least Virginia gets to like pad his stats because he's he going to have some high ass VLR rating after this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, yeah, yo, check my last 30 days, guys. <laughs> there you go. It's adding to it again. Oh my god. This is the quote unquote bonus round. Of course it is potentially the last round. Sasuke, we're gonna try and peek back in. He's gonna Potentially. lose the battle to the Bulldog. David P is he's having to speed up his lurks. Normally he has a bit more time, but his teammates are actually killing everybody so fast that he's having to move a little bit quicker and he will eventually be traded out by his doppelganger. Four versus two Make scenario. Weaponry's already been picked up. Fatini has decided, you know what, might as well use the Blade Storm. I probably won't get any other chance to use it. And he wants those final couple of kills. Pad the stats that little bit more. He's going to go out for the right click to close the game. And what is a very underwhelming series coming out of football as they will be eliminated from the Red Bull home ground. And Vodafone Giants step on through with a two to zero. That's. Not a bad result for them, because I gotta be honest, with the teams that they can potentially be facing, I needed this to be a dominant win if I'm to yeah, believe yeah. they can beat Ascend, if I'm to believe they can beat Gambit. And after that, yeah, yeah, if Fatino comes out playing like that, I'm, I'm thinking maybe they can beat those teams, considering they won't be coming in on the raid game. As said, like, when it comes to the, all the teams I've watched throughout this tournament, if I'm talking about form player to player, I, I actually think they have the most informed players. Like, I don't think they played against, like, the top, top opposition just yet. Yeah, Liquid are, are looking incredible, but I just mean purely based off form, because I expect Screen to be good all the time. Sure. So I, right, I think gotcha. that right now, Giants, every single player is performing. They're looking very good, and I'm a little bit worried for some of the other teams. Oh, they're looking very good, and so is our analyst desk. Let's throw it over to Sue and Lothar and see what they made of that absolute blowout. That's so nice. Oh, What's wow. going on? Is that Mitch, man? Yeah. I don't see him from him, and it's not because of the desk. You know, he's <laughs> just mean, behind the wall. Yeah, uh, yeah we don't wow. get that very often from Mitch. So thank you, Mitch. Now, uh, we don't like to see blowouts, do we? We want to see competitive games. But in the end of the day, Giants, they're just a the better team here. Yeah, yeah. I was just waving to Mitch. <laughs> um, I, I wanted to say one thing. The entire, entire match was summed up for me yeah. by one round. And that was where footballers was losing 2-11 to 11, mm -hmm. and they didn't force... Yeah, for that, that round. Was I was like, they give up. They just gave up. You, you, if you don't force in that round when it's 2-11, your opponents will take the round. It's going to be 12-2, and you have to make a flawless run of 10 rounds to have even a fighting chance. It really makes no sense. And what even more, Giants could just have, you know, not buy even anything, right? and just have a full buy next round and just, just close out the game. Uh, you guys can't see this, but Andy has joined us off screen. So Lothar would have been very awkward if you were saying anything bad about this team. But to be what honest, would I, say I can't here? think of anything bad <laughs> to say about you guys. A fantastic uh, victory, Andy. Nearly flawless in the end. Yeah, thank you. Uh, how much of this do you think is down to the, uh, 
the Red Bull boot camp buff? Because we've been saying it all day. You guys are here for boot camp. You're together. Um, how, how much has that boosted your game? Yeah, it's absolutely perfect. Like. Uh, I am like speechless because uh, it's like the first time we met and like uh, it's it's really visible that like the bootcamp buff like is there for sure. Yeah, it's just sad that David couldn't make it, right? Yeah, that that's been so sad. And everything. like Pips on too, like we are there only for, you know, because like they have visa problems and some family issues. But like I hope that next time we can meet all six and it will be even better than this. Yeah. So uh, I have a question actually, because yeah. you play in, from one space, does that improve your comps as well, or how do you plan your round? Does it is it improved by the fact that you you're standing next to each other? Uh, like the communication like overall was like the thing we focused on like the most after the LVP and like I, I do, I'm not really sure like if it's like the boot camp uh, boot camp thing but th our communication for sure like went like from zero to 100 percent. Yeah, that's really interesting to know. I can hear you guys. <laughs> yeah, we hear the cheering Every here. single round, which is, uh, I love the energy. But I want to take you back uh, to Bind. Uh, first of all, did you expect Kiwi not to play Jet? What did you think of that when you saw uh, that? No, I didn't expect that at all. But because, like, we were prepared, like, for, like, their setup with Kiwi on Jet. Mm -hmm. And, like, but I think, like, the Bind is such a map, like, where a race utility is, like, so much important that I think it's good, like, that. If you can play race, I think you should play on that map. But like, maybe Kiwi on the race? Yeah, but race? yeah, that's a little bit weird, <laughs> you're right, but yeah. Yeah, uh, but for you guys, though, uh, I'm going to ask this question for you, Lothar, because I sure. know you're never going to understand uh, why they do this un un until they tell you. But why no Viper? No Viper on Bind? <laughs> you guys don't feel the Viper at all? No, like, we just don't like it. Like, uh, we feel like we have everything, every piece of utility that we have, like, right now is, like, very useful for us. And, like, yeah, I think we are using it very well, and like we don't see like Viper that useful as if we have like. <laughs> Say that in front of Lothar. Well, I mean, <laughs> it's it's actually very cool to hear that uh, teams that understand the metagame differently try mm -hmm. to combat it, because that's what keeps the teams going forward when it comes to approach the game. So kudos, because you guys nailed it right now. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, um, how, well, how important is this tournament for you guys? Because we speak about uh, the teams that are going to champions, you know, they use this to practice or to try and find uh, gaps in their playbook. But for you guys, you want the trophy, right? You want to win this. Yeah, for sure. Like, after the not really good, like, LVP and, like, uh, Maybe this is like the last tournament like of the year. Like we for sure like want to give our best and we, we are going to the grand finals. We can, can tell you that. Oh, I like that. Um, I like that a lot. Now, uh, I also wanted to ask you about the, your next opponent. They haven't played yet. It's going to yeah. be Ascend or Gambit. Uh, do you have a preference? Would you rather face uh, Ascend or Gambit? No, not really. I don't really care. <laughs> if I had to push you, like if you okay, had to okay. choose. Like Gambit won last land, right? Like I think it will be good if we beat them. Do you think you're so going to be PR them? move? Yeah. Well, yeah. You, you said you're going to be in the final no matter what. So how do you beat Gambit? Or do you think they have any weaknesses? Well, like, of course, like <laughs> everyone has weaknesses. Like we yeah. just need to find them and execute right. Is there anything that you feel like you've seen? Because they, they they were slightly a little bit shaky yesterday. Yeah, yeah, they were. Like we watched the matches and like I think like they maybe lost a little bit of their form, but maybe they are just saving it for champions. Like we can, mm -hmm. like even like with Fnatic and stuff, we can't really tell like if this is like their true form, you know? Because like their, for example, like when I speak about Fnatic, like their comps that they played, like it for me it was kind of weird because like for example I liked I really liked their icebox for example where they have Killjoy and stuff. They had so many utilities and so many stuff. And like now when I saw like uh, Doma on Reina, like I don't really like that, you know. But m again, maybe they are saving something for champions, and we will see something incredible there. Like, so I'm really looking forward to the tournament. So what did you think of Cynet on Astra then? <laughs> yeah, like, I think the guys were just having fun, and they were like enjoying the match because like they were both true, so it didn't really matter. So they were just yeah, let's 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 try this out. Oh, I, I, I just want to say, if you do face Ascend, uh, would you rather see Ned played Astra, or do you want to want him on the jet so you can be the best? Like. Whatever he prefer, I, we don't really care. But uh, <laughs> I think I think he will have to pick uh, Jet if he wants to have a chance. Well, thank you very much, Ambi. Are you any our last questions? Later? No, I'm fine. I'm actually very happy to see you guys perform here because it, it definitely feels that they play better as a team. I might. I might think it's because of you guys being here in this place yeah. altogether. It's it's real. The Red Bull buff. More yes. teams need the Red Bull buff. Um, and yeah, I feel like we should get we should recruit Ambi on the desk if uh, he's got a few more minutes tomorrow or something. Uh, but thank you very much for joining us. We're going to throw to a break now, but don't go anywhere because Ascend are taking on Gambit right after this.
Welcome back to the last quarterfinals of the day between Gambit versus Ascend. Now, we've only seen 2-0 so far, Lothar, but if there was ever a match that was going to go to five maps in a potential best of five, it is this one. I would feel so, but we have seen Ascend troll a little bit before, so I wouldn't be surprised if it's again a 2-0, you know? Might, be, might happen. I feel like Gambit have two a little bit, right, haven't they? Well, you... I, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, let's talk about Ascend uh, first here. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Gambit, everybody's saying they're the favorite coming into this tournament. Uh, do you feel like Ascend uh, slept on a little bit if they are uh, playing to their full capacity? <sighs> I would never write off Ascend, like, ever, ever, right? They have star-studded uh, lineup. Every single player in the lineup for Ascend is filling a particular role. But at the same time, they have to, something in the back pocket always prepared. Like, as we just seen yesterday, Stark's own jet was actually very impactful, right? Even though Cinder was playing on Astra. And uh, on, on, on Zeke, I would say that I don't think I have met a more flexible player than Zeke in general in, in um, environment in Europe. He was playing five different characters in just five different maps. An example in the last uh, challenges, uh, he's playing Phoenix, uh, Reyna, Ray's Breach, uh, and I forgot one. But there's there's a lot of flexibility in that team. So even if they want to conceal information coming for champions, I feel like they still have so many tricks up their sleeves, they can be a force to be reckoned with. Well, speaking of Zeke, we checked in with him earlier, and this is what he had to say about their tournament so far. Hey guys, I'm Alexander Zig Zygmunt. I play for Ascent, uh, Ascent Club and, and uh, we are playing in the Red Bull tournament today. I've been playing with, in Ascent for about uh, half a year already and I'm acclimated to the team very well and it's uh, really nice. I think it's a really unique tournament with a unique format and it's uh, very fun to play it. I've been playing in already in the first uh, tournament, so I really like the format. It's, uh, I think it's nice. Right now, we don't really have a specific like map that we feel uh, insane on, except like our bind, of course, is like probably uh, it's not probably it's our strongest map by far right now, and uh, the other maps are just like. Uh, they're okay, so we, we not, don't really know, uh, like, we just know what to pick when we start playing and we never, like, prepare specifically for, uh, for like, a day or something. We're feeling good. I think uh, our farm got back a little bit and uh, we are we are, uh, we are prepared for the tournament, so we think we might take it all and uh, just like in any other tournament, we basically just want to win and that's it. Other teams, I mean, definitely Liquid, like you can see them after the LCQ, how they're playing against any other teams. And uh, so far, like we haven't been really watching that many games. We've been more focusing on us. We kind of changed our work ethic a little bit. You know, we've been taking it very easy uh, before we started playing official games. And like coming into the tournaments, we always just, you know, boost our uh, practice. You know, we've been, we've, we are trying hard and we just want the best performance on tournaments. So we just always start slow when we, after the tournament starts slow, then we start packing, you know, higher, 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 better. And our performance just improves. Uh, and I think we are in a good spot right now. I love how Bone Cold was just playing catch by himself in the background. I got too distracted by him just throwing the ball and then running around to pick it up. But um, uh, interesting there from Zeke. They're a little bit afraid of Liquid, but he didn't mention Gambit at all. Uh, well, I would say that Liquid seems to be making the biggest progress of all teams that are currently in EMEA. Well, also Giants. But Liquid seems to be fixing a lot of the fundamental problems that were haunting them for such a long time. So I wouldn't be surprised that that's the reason why. Uh, and it seems like also Liquid is very strong on just defining how they approach the game. We have seen KO being picked by Soulcast instead of Sky, which is a great choice because of the recent nerfs mm -hmm. on Sky. And also makes sense when you want to prepare into a meta game where more and more utility will be used by every single team because they will go away from Reyna, as an example.
Well, luckily for Zeke, if they want to play against Liquid, they can only face him in the finals. Uh, that. But unfortunately, they have to go through Gambit uh, first to get there. Uh, Gambit, we spoke about this already, slightly shaky yesterday, and Ambi even theorized maybe they're a little bit off form. But uh, I want to point out one of their players uh, because uh, Mitch Mann's player to watch in this tournament, mm -hmm. Nats, I don't feel like he dropped any form whatsoever from Masters. I think he, it's not even a form, it's just consistency yeah. coming from Nats. It's one of those players that has a very unique play style, and even though other people try to mimic his movement and usage of utility to like carve angles, what he typically does with the Cypher Cages and the Toxic Orb when he's playing Viper, no one does it to the same extent like he does, which is a huge success in my eyes because it's it's so far we don't really have that many players that are just when you see someone do something in game and you're like oh that's nuts you don't need to see his name that's literally his play style and you can easily see it even w when the name is covered so um it comes from his natural like way of approaching the game and not being based on ah i am just old aim people it's outsmart people which you don't lose right yeah, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see because, you know, a lot of the other players on that team, they like to switch things up, maybe pick up other agents that uh, like they don't usually Like Chronicle play. <laughs> yeah. on Sova on Split, exactly, right? We have seen that yesterday. Nats is the constant, right? He Even yeah. when the, even when we saw them play Haven uh, back at the playoffs where Redgar said, you can play whatever you want to play. Let's just have fun on a map we don't play. And Nats, he still picks the Cypher. Yeah, I, I feel like he's the backbone of the team. You know, there's a lot of uh, pressure on him, but not to perform, but to just be the backup plan for, for the team. And on the attack, of course, he has a specific role when it comes to like just taking map space, map control. You can see how well he understands taking map control for his team, uh, then giving away the confirmation for the teammates with the comms to make sure the rotations are happening in the correct timing and so on. And it, it's not something that you see often being used in teams because many lurkers that I see on teams are just using their ability to lurk too early or too late and they're detrimental to the team. That's not something that you typically see in Gambit. Well, of course, I said earlier, if, if it was any game we're going to get to on map five, at least past map two, mm -hmm. it, it might be this one. But let's take a look at the map picks first and see uh, what the home grounds are, where we're going to. And if we do get past those two maps, like I said, if it isn't going to be a 2-0 today, uh, what are we going to be finishing the day off with? Well, Gambit have chosen Split as their home ground. Uh, Ascend with Bind, I don't think any surprise. Especially yeah, for that. they have to. Uh, and then if they does go past two maps, it'll be Breeze, Ascent, and Icebox, and no Haven here for Gambit. It does feel like they're taking it seriously uh, to a degree. You know, they're not just letting that through. Well, let's let's assume that they're trying to conceal some information from champions, right? And even if they don't play Haven, they can just play with whatever composition they played before on that map, mm -hmm. because they just might have something completely new for champions, right? Also remember a new agent will be introduced so they don't really spoil much if they play it the way they played it before which is already on tapes everyone knows how they play with a specific composition on breeze ascent or icebox in this case but i'm not surprised that split and uh, bind are being chosen as the home grounds uh for ascent it makes a lot of sense because you know bind is one of the maps that we have seen over and over again from them unfortunately for me at least it's that that's the map where um Cinder is playing on sage and not on jet i just like to watch him play the jet to make some ridiculous stuff uh but when it comes to split he should be playing on the jet because um that's one of the maps that ascent were playing last time two months ago and I think you mentioned that before in, in our conversation in Concert again. They, I think they're using a lot of compositions there, right? Yeah, they love just playing whatever they want to play. It, it almost it feels like there's five Zeeks playing <laughs> yep. on Split when it comes to Ascent. I think uh, not out of nine games, Lothar, they've had eight different compositions. Yeah, I remember vividly where Zeke was playing Breach, yep. was playing Raze, was playing Reyna as well. And every single time it was a little bit of a difference of, of, of how how we perceive the team because the composition kind of um, narrowed down how they will play when it comes to the playstyle. But when it comes to uh, Gambit, they didn't play split. Um, uh, sorry, they played split already mm -hmm. uh, at this event. We played Fracture twice and split once, and we were aware a little bit caught off guard, at least I was, um, when it comes to the composition that they played already on it, because we had Breach, Astra, Cypher, Jet, which is very standard, mm -hmm. but then the fifth pick from Chronicle was Sova. Yep. And 
the reason why I was always saying that Sova is not the ideal pick for split is because the uh, ultimate is not that impactful. It's also an 8 orb, so it, the economy of the ultimate is not let's say good when it comes to tempo um of building up advantages and rolling like with with the punches and and the typical space that was needed for sova was taken by sky because it's like a substitute with a little bit worse utility but also different strengths right because you have additional flashes that sova doesn't have but you have a similar drone it's just a little bit different when it comes to the vision and you have the heal and the initiation on the sky ultimate was always there with a six orb now when it's nerfed and it's at seven sova might be a little bit more viable when it comes to counteracting with the sentinels from your opponent. So I don't have seen that yesterday. Maybe I'll try to break it down at some point uh, when we'll be in this match. I mean, the interesting thing is they, they took out the Viper for the mm -hmm. Sova. So uh, what did you make of that, that they decided to move away from an agent that at least I know you feel like is really strong in this map? Well, I will always be a little bit biased when it comes to like the strengths <laughs> of Viper, but I do think Split, Bind and Ascent are her strongest maps, especially on, on Split when you can dig dictate and condition your opponents to specific behaviors on attack and also single-handedly shut down at least one side uh, on, on defense, it's, it's invaluable. We have seen that from Liquid with how Nivera just put a one wall on A side and just holds the entirety by his own, which allows to strengthen the defenses on other parts of the map, especially, specifically also with the Viper Spit. And now when Gambit does, maybe they don't want to show it, I, I don't... <sighs> Hard to say, mm -hmm. but it's it, it requires a different approach to the defense now when you don't have the Viper and the attack as well because you have less um, obscure, uh, you, you can obscure less vision and you have less recurring utility. Now, how would you feel? Because we know that Ascend, they like to try stuff out on, mm -hmm. on Split. How would you feel if we get a Sova versus Sova? Um, that would split? have been a throwback <laughs> to like a year ago or yeah. something when teams were actually playing with Sova because it made sense. Sova was still so very powerful and people were still learning the game, right? I'm not saying that, that character is unplayable or something because Sova Drone is one of the most useful utilities in the game, if not the most useful, on its own, right? Yeah. And it's specifically very strong on split because you can check so many angles with, with just one ride. Um, but the problem is the other utility that Sova has it might not be that useful, right, uh, on this map. So not, not a fan of that. You, you'd rather see a, I know you'd rather see a Viper versus Viper. Well, <laughs> you know, I, I always was saying that I would love to see, that was a few months ago, that more Sovas are trying to uh, at the beginning of the round, make lineups from the beginning of the round, somewhere from spawn, an example, or in front of like one lane, with their shock darts on the default positions of the cipher traps or killjoy utility. So you destroy it at the beginning of the round while it's still like, you know, it's a lineup that goes for like 10, 15 seconds. So you can time your executions with the shock darts landing. <clears throat> but also that conditions your opponents to wait with the utility to put it later and that gives you space to do a super fast push. So if that's the case and that's how we're going to progress with, with Sova in the future, it will actually be very tactically sound. I mean, outside of Split, because uh, we do know the maps now, we're going to go to Bind after. Uh, and if it does go past uh, two maps, we're going to get Breeze, Ascend and Icebox. Do you think this is going to break the chain of the 2-0s today. Are we going to get something outside of the 2-0? I mean, um, Gambit on Bind is a force to be reckoned with as well, right? They have insanely strong defenses on, on Bind. Uh, Nats is one of the most beautiful players to watch on that map. Uh, but at the same time, Ascent is just stellar. Mm. You know, they, they, they have those very basic um, uh, executions on, on this map, but they did add some new tools. Like yesterday when we were watching Ascend, I was breaking down the round on the tele Telestrator uh, when they just pushed through showers as a five man in the pistol round with very delayed utility. And that shows that they have prepared some new stuff that they are not fearing to show during Red Bull home grounds, even though they have the champions just you know, next month. Mm. So it, it, I wouldn't be surprised if we're going to go with the full distance here. Oh, uh, how far? How far are we going? I feel like we deserve five maps <laughs> between these two teams. I would love to. If, they, if, not, if we're not going to see some trolling in the compositions from uh, CNET. <laughs> the thing right? is, when Gambit, uh, do you, would, you, would we even call Redgar on Reyna and Jet as trolling? 
Because when that happens, they are 100% win rate of Red Go and Duelist. Well, it's, it's such a peculiar spot, right? Because yeah. it wasn't a map that they shouldn't have been played, right? Mm. So the, we knew that the approach to it, it's like with Fnatic on Split, when we have seen Bolster on Reyna, right? Uh, yeah, well, that was a different story than, yeah. <laughs> but it's a very similar like spot where we don't really play this map, but we have to play it, so we do whatever we can mm -hmm. while feeling comfortable. A and um, it it's so hard to say what we do we expect from those two teams in this tournament, unless we would have the chance to speak with them and just hear what they say, right? Because, mm -hmm. you know, uh, it it's um, it's a very important tournament right here. But for them, the end goal is to win champions. So. Uh, winning champions is more important than spoiling some um, strategies that you have prepared for for it, right? Mm. I mean, but I mean, the next opponent though in this tournament, Giants, they're waiting for them. Mm -hmm. They don't care about this strat exactly. or what they're showing. They want to win this. So, uh, how how prepared do you think these two teams will have to be at least for their next opponent? I don't think they're f thinking that far, to be honest, when it comes to, like, they just go into this match and uh, if we win, we win, and then we think about the next one. Um, th there's a different mindset coming for sure for Giants than for Ascend or Gambit. Mm -hmm. So I don't think they're feeling, uh, they're, they're thinking that much uh, forward, while Giant right now is fully preparing, watching this match, making notes, making sure that they have everything on point for the match tomorrow, uh, specifically also because we already have some reps on the maps in this tournament, right? Gambit, Twice and Fracture, but if I'm not mistaken, they actually banned Fracture in this map. Yeah, I think um, they did. So we might not see that tomorrow because the two Fractures were in the best of ones. Uh, but two reps on Split, that actually spoils a lot of when it comes to the strategies and uh, second time for Ascend on Bind. So uh, well, this ascend, is gonna- Yeah, Ascend Band Fracture. Hey. Oh, okay, yeah. Ascend Band Fracture. Mm -hmm. So in case of, of um, let's say if Gambit wins this best of five, then Giants have a lot of information for the maps that they play in this tournament. So all in all, this is a win-win for Giants. They just, I'm sure that Pipson is watching all of those games, making a lot of notes, notes and all of the players are, I'm certain that they're gonna be holding their breath when it comes to like how the, the other teams are playing. Who would you fight. like to see play Giants next? I know Andy, you know, Gambit is the obvious choice. Mm -hmm. You wanna test yourselves to see if you can beat the Masters winners, uh, but what do you think? I would rather see Gambit just because they are the master winners, mm -hmm. you know, against Giants. And, and it's like a talking point, essentially, from a PR perspective. <laughs> okay, what does your heart tell you then? Like, what do you really wanna see? I, just because CNET played yesterday on Astra, I feel like Gambit's gonna win this. Because it shows that Ascend are a little bit more uh, reserved when it comes to showing their potential. I mean, we heard from Zeke there, right? Uh, they spoke about what they were changing in mm -hmm. uh, between uh, between the last one when they played and Champions. And he even said, like, we are changing our work ethic in a way that we're going to relax before officials. We're not going to think too much about stuff. We're just going to take it easy and chill. Uh, do you think that's what they're doing here? And maybe they're just taking it too easy? <laughs> Hard to say, but I think so. It's they have this relaxed approach for sure, otherwise we, we, we wouldn't see that composition on Haven uh, yesterday. And at the same time, I feel like they just give themselves a lot of space uh, because in practice, this is gonna very fast change, right? For, for, um, for the next tournament, because that's gonna be champions in just a month. And there might be a lot of role changes anyway in practice that we're not gonna see here in, in, in the Red Bull home ground. Mm. Well, we're just waiting for a couple more players to join the lobby before we hop into Agent uh, Select. And Losar, I think this is a good time for us to talk about the new Agent. Because mm -hmm. um, you and I have been speaking about which players we like to see yep. play Chamber. Uh, let's take these two teams into our experiment. So when the new Agent comes in, uh, like you said, teams have to assign somebody uh, to play this Agent, right? Or they're kind of trolling. Well, there's also like the question are we right on the prediction on the power level of Chamber? Mm -hmm. In my eyes, he's definitely one of those champions that will most likely at least be picked to try out because he presents so much power when it comes to building economy. Uh, it, in conjunction with Jet, uh, you will be able to have additional full buy round just because of the ultimates mm -hmm. that you can combine and essentially have a free round. So this is a huge change, especially in MR, M MR12, when it's essentially like 8% of the entire health, right? So that's, that's a big impact. And also he fills that void 
where an example, a lot of teams, let's say, pick Reyna because they don't have anything else, right? Yeah. But now you will be able to play Chamber instead of Reyna, who fills a very similar role in the pistol rounds, but also delivers a lot of uh, utility that is very similar to Cypher because you can still be very far away from your traps while controlling the map. And also, what is very important, you are able to play um, a very flexible champion on defense uh, while being able to, um, on attack, have... That's, th that's very interesting, by the way. Chamber can be any specific play, can be played in any specific play style just because you can carve the way you play him. Mm -hmm. He can be a lurker, he can be a secondary opera uh, on defense as well, but he can also be an opera on attack because of the way he's, uh, his um, t TP works. You don't have to sacrifice the jet dash to have an operator on attack. So he might not be the troll pick when it comes to the operator, right? Yeah, I think he's going to be a great pick. But um, if we had to take Gambit and ascend us to guinea pigs, uh, yeah. who would you like so to see play chamber? On Gambit, the obvious answer and the first that c comes to mind would be Nats. Yeah. But I don't think it would be Nats because of what I mentioned before. Nats has such a specific play style of using um, the utility to um, limit the vision for your opponent, so with the Cypher Cages and the Toxic Orb, that it doesn't fit the chamber, right? So uh, if I would, l what I would love to see from Gambit is to put Nats on permanent Viper and then someone who would have to play the Sentinel, which would be most likely um, Cypher, put that person on Chamber, right? And specifically for Max, like an example, ma maps like an example Split or Fracture, where you should be playing Killjoy, but it makes more sense to play Cypher because people might counter you with a Breach, then Chamber fills that void. Well, we're heading to Agent Select now without Chamber, unfortunately, but we do have uh, Chronicle reprising his uh, Sova pick here. Okay, well, I guess they want to take it more seriously. Yeah, I guess Gambit are just trying their uh, Sovacom maybe once again to see if it really is something they want to take the champions uh, with them. But on the side of Ascend, we've got uh, Zeke this time on the raise. I think he played the raise last time. We yes. saw him and Killers on Cypher. This is pretty normal uh, considering some of the other combinations. And Bone Cold on Omen. We don't see the Omen very often these days, Lothar. Well, last time I played on Split, it was also an Omen. Uh, we have seen Starks on Sage, so no KO, unfortunately. It's the same comp. It's the Omen, Jet, Cypher, Sage, Red and it's the same comp for uh, for Gambit uh, with the Sova on Chronicle. And I will be keeping my eyes very closely to Chronicle and how he uses uh, the Sova to the full extent because I'm sure it's very interesting for the audience to understand why the Sova is, is being picked. But I love, absolutely love the Breach, um, even though there's no Killjoy on the other side. It's just, just so much space to use the utility to its full extent, extent on this map. Well, the agents are locked in very quickly, Lothar. Who's taking this one? I would say Gambit. Oh, Gambit. Well, that's what Lothar thinks. Uh, I cannot wait to see what Pansy and High Fog make of this one. Over to you guys. Well, we, we have plenty to say about the matter, Yinzu, I'm sure. Uh, so much to be said, but you guys did so perfectly in the little, you know, preview to all of this. So I take it away from you. But we, we are now kind of getting out of the best of ones, which we had yesterday. So we can kind of talk about the home ground format, how it looks, what it means now. And I know you wanted to kind of run through that. Yeah, um, as Mitch said earlier, ban ban to start things off. Um, <laughs> so uh, it does change things a little bit. And obviously, th these are these are two teams. That, I mean, I have to come back to it, but two of teams course. obviously have their their, their insta bans, which is a, a different discussion altogether when yeah, we talk about Gambit. But um, I have to see. I guess if they do advance, whether or not that is something there. They yeah. keep us an ace up their sleeve because we're seeing what they can yeah. do on their insta ban. Uh, right. Actually, Gambit gets straight onto B site here, Laura, and send. Respecting it initially, they will back away. Starzo all the way back towards deep heaven. Kila's actually all the way in spawn, so they're going to try and regroup up here. But Planted. keep your eye on mid because Nats in a Nats position. Yeah, Nats getting real lurky and timing. He, st he seems to really have a way with it, but we'll see if it works out. Then we'll at least get a fair start at this one. Nats not going to be too close to it. Actually, going to peel away towards B main instead. So the fight so we're coming through a bit of an initial trade out, but it's wow. bone cold to bring things further forward for Ascend. Zeke with the frenzy going to clear the back of the site, and Nats, well, he was considering that mid piece, but now, well, his options are looking pretty dire here. As he's already down to 19. And the classic will do just fine. Ascend going to get the first one under the belt. If you're just tuning in, of course, uh, we have been promised by the observers, which is crazy to me, right? They've actually promised this, uh, which is obviously Salty J and Haribo, just to get the names out there. Not going to miss a single kill. That's crazy to me.
that's a big commitment. That's it really a, is. It really I don't know is. if we can follow up with that. No, <laughs> no, it's the bar set so high. So high, no, uh, but um, it's good to have some incredible observers with us for, for a great game here. And, and and this is kind of the thing, right? When you have these home ground maps in play and we can see whose home ground this is, it I kind of could be over in up. two. And if it's not, it unlocks that best of five, right? So it kind of instantly changes that. Okay. Because it could be, yeah, you're right. Okay. It could also go the distance, but yeah, that's his eager. <laughs> Find the first, traded out quickly by Chronicle. Yep. Gamba stacked up here, and I imagine, yeah, slow going to uh, do just that. Put the brakes on this attack coming through, at least this hit coming through nice and early. Just Chronicle and Nats. Left to try and recover something here again, if Ascend can keep this clean, keep four alive. It's only the judge they've lost. And Spike actually still retrievable, but... Nats has probably got to find a kill to do so. It doesn't look remaining. like that's going to happen. Seen it, we'll find his third. Enemy Nats cleaned out. up. Nice and clean. Yeah. You want to be seeing for Ascend if you're getting into this game. Again, we've seen kind of varying degrees of what to expect from Ascend. Considering their previous game, they were this weird composition, nuttiness. Like, yes, we all miss the Astra C Ned combo. Obviously, winning hearts and minds. Um, Stark so did show that the guy can play pretty much everything, even an op over CNET at times. But still, even outside of all the, the weirdness, um, we uh, this feels like a more traditional ascent already. Yeah, traditional split with Sova, which, uh, again, is another talking, but it didn't really... How do you feel about it? It didn't do too much for me, I'm okay. going to be honest. Um, uh, again, through a knot, there's anything else that Gambit can show us. An awkward one way thrown down, actually. A red guard to send a couple of shots in and whether or not Ascend will continue to uh, AS fight for this territory control, try and convert some of these weapons through in round three. But Defo's got himself pretty deep up in heaven. Zeke's going to get spotted out there. Yep, just trying to hold an angle inside ropes. Shados comfortably finds that. So you've got to be careful. Yeah, it's drifting up the top of stairs. So two members for Ascend still committed to B main at least. Uh, Gambit will peel away here. Nats feels as if he's got a decent read. And he has just that. Kiles isolated. That's A site open for the taking now. Oh yeah, this is a gift from the gods. And maybe that god is Nats at this point. Just going to slowly secure it as well. Make it even harder if those two that do remain for Ascend. Fancy trying to do any sort of damage. Do anything that they could. And, and it's looking so unlikely at this point, isn't it? It's just everything's wrapped up off the back of that Spike really good planted. pick. And, and it's it's the benefit of having someone like Nats who can play this very well, right? Yeah, and here, whether or not even Bone Cold and Stars are able to come here and really challenge these exits. You see, actually, on the mini map, pretty split right now. Bone Cold, the only one really close enough to do any damage right now, but I'm not sure whether or not they'll even throw these weapons away. Looks like Stars wants to hold on to what he has. Yeah. I know they did lose the one weapon, obviously, okay, whether or not nice. they retrieved the judge, but yes, yeah, it's the Phantom purchase that he's concerned about. So, we'll see if Gambit give one away, but it doesn't look as if that's going to be the case. Only making their way back through A main, and everyone will survive here for Gambit. So, a clean conversion of round three. Force three repurchases, at least, and Phone Call will hold on to the weapon. A nice round from Gambit there. And again, a, a, a bit of a presence shown on both sides between round one and two. And um, that there again, Ascend. Trying to get a little cheeky with that one way. A bone called TP and in. But again, on the back of that, it, it, it's two players noted. It's two different pieces of utility. So I think Gambit made absolutely the right choice when they find that kill in mid to immediately swing towards A site. Yeah. And, and I mean, bigger storyline for this from these two. I think, you know, you have seen Gambit having a little fumble already in this, this event so far. You beat Fracture, obviously Pinch of Soul, we don't know what they're like on this, but actually Defo off to a quite a quick start, going to take a great deal of space over towards A. You think of the juxtaposition, the seeing Nats kind of slowly grinding that A play towards Ramp, and now the kind of spin-up of Defo taking that space now off the back, and you've got Shados by his side. So, seeing it looking a little different. Playing from the side itself, so already you can see the adjustment and the respect having to be Caged. pulled across. But this isn't just a one sided hit. Keep in mind where the spike is, it is still towards that B side. Bone Cold does have two players just around this corner, Red Gar being one of them, but doesn't quite crest it and falls back and maybe calls for a little bit more of support. Starting to feel a bit more pressure over this side. And this whole time, actually, Spike was the over charges. towards Garage. You're absolutely right. It was a presence shown on both sides here. As three members of Gambit going to stack up, you can see actually a Potential for a fault line. So Starzo, got to be careful about that. Decent jumpy. 
Oh, Actually, oh, doesn't even need it there. The fault line will follow up, but Defo finds the entry. Redgar also finds Bone Cold. Zeke now called upon. He's on for the first. Look at the island he's on. The support still being held back, but maybe the timing's right up in towards heaven. I have to look at this piece from Seenhead. Maybe it feels like that timing's just slipped away. I thought he might have been helped out. Defo and Chronicle. Great trade from Chronicle before Seenhead could really wind anything up. Ooh, ding from Killers. But Gambit looks sharp here. Again, just able to push and pull, ascend back and forth. Uh, I mean, a Crosby site there. And two kills, crucial kills coming through at literally exactly the same time on the back of Redgar and Defo. And Actually, way ahead of that fault line that I identified. Right it looked there. as if Shados was going to try and set up that B Heaven push, but it wasn't even necessary. Yeah, send now back down on pistols. Seen it got the blade storm, so he's just going to throw the light armor in the mix. See if he can get anything done here. Doesn't look as if a sender set up to to be proactive at all in this round. Yeah, a bit. We'll leave Nats in position outside a site at least, just to greet any aggression. But once again. Gambit will explore B and then Starzo will get tagged up. Fault line to follow as well, so he's isolated in this corner in hell, but still finds the kill there. Must be nice to be Starzo, right? Still get away with that after so much was put into place just to isolate you, to put you under pressure. Now Shadow still trying to be mindful of this, but he has to protect that spike going down, which he does quite well. Now while that happened though, CNED has got the knives coming out. He has found two. The eventual trade for Shados will shut that down, but look at what's happened. It's a 2v2. The ult finds no one, but Shados does. Three already. Starzo, anything left in the tank? No. Shados on bodyguard duty does incredibly well. A little dicey there, but Gambit stabilized. Uh, seen it making things interesting. Picked up a couple of kills with the Blade Storm there, back on the operator in the next round. But and this is the point where I don't think a go hunting now. They're in a position where I think Gambit built up a bit of a bankroll, so they, they can play the trades in the early round. It's, it's, it's not as if they have the you know fragile economy no. they have to deal with going forward. So see what Seen decides to do, how active he looks to get with this operator now. There's three players initially committed towards mid. Uh, and this time around, two members of Gambit will explore from sewers. The stack, though. Ascend just had hey. bodies in the right place. And that was very, I, I don't know how to say it, was overzealous, I guess, from Gambit. Just kind of pouring up towards mid, losing two for it, too, keep in mind. They're down to three, and they have no map territory now. And they have very little info, I guess, than there was three in mid. Yeah, and I think, actually, you think back to some of those early rounds where Ascend were happy to give it up for free um, yeah. and didn't look to get too proactive on either side. Uh, I think that's kind of lured Gambit into thinking, yeah, they're holding deep. They're holding towards, you know, heaven or, or, or deep within vents. I think that's why we see two members fall off the rip here. Gambit are able to push back forwards. Yeah, Redgar once again will creep his way through Garage. Chronicle and Shados have two members to deal with here, but unfortunately will catch the, uh, the edge of that fault line, so he can't advance towards Zeke. And I think Stars are actually holding the off angle there from Rafters, which will make it difficult for him. Yeah, it's going to yet really putting Ascend yeah, out of their place. Are. Redgar's gone. That's a good flash. A good bit of damage. That's perfect follow up as well from Chronicle. Left. Nice work off the back of it. The initial utility didn't do really too oh, much about it, but Zeke it. does still have the chance to spring to action. He was kind of held Last back by a little standing. bit of that presence, but now he's going to be. Chronicle, wait, hold on. That was getting a little spicy, but Cena does keep things in check. But just about, but it's costly. Oh, yeah. Ascend, we were talking about the stack that Gambit have already developed in terms of the economy there. I think actually plays more to their favor here. We'll force the repurchase. I can see Bone Cold, a Spectre, Keyless, a rifle and the light armor, but uh, again, there's not an awful lot beyond that. You can see it obviously holding on to that operator, but it's 1,500 credits behind that. Starzo sitting at 1,200, and Gambit probably got another full purchase in, in, in the bank here. Yeah. That's a hefty old lean towards A as well. Yes. <laughs> That's a all-in looking lean, and it looks like the pace coming out, at least from Defo, is kind of indicating that too. He's already on site, but doesn't check for Bone Cold, who's gonna only get away with a little bit of mayhem as Chronicle will pin him to the floor with the ult coming through. But there is still a player waiting patiently, has yet to show his hand, finally forced to. But he does have a little bit of support. Starzo is up there, up towards the rafters, remains. and they are finding these moments, the time to hit those rotations, just perfectly kind of pouring on over after that great deal of pressure was put there. But there is still Chronicle, but this will call for something 
monumental. Cena, Cena do you creep in that. You gifting him something? <laughs> oh, okay, Cena with a far more favorable angle to play from. Clips him through the wall, and Ascender just fine with three standing. I was getting a little bit scared off that initial pick was so quick, and they had that presence coming through. Yeah, and again, the Hunter's Fury popped off the rip, and, and luckily, I mean, Defo's traded out on the back of that ultimate as well. I don't think Gambit are assuming two are playing sight, or at least committed to playing sight. Um, I'm not sure who it was that was actually tucked right into the corner there, but um, they found the trade on the way in, but I think Nats, it, it slows down as soon as uh, that first kill comes through. Shados tries to creep through a smoke, and it, it gets a little weird at that point. Ultimately, Ascend able to uh, then just put their man advantage to use. Standing ahead. 3-1-1, but... See the pace that they go for on this. So I kind of want to see them being a little bit more proactive through sewers. But yeah, Starzo's just fine, and now that's kind of taken off the head of the snake, right? They can't really springboard off the back of this anymore. They've lost that little bit of initial hit. And just one thing here again to, to obviously be playing a so one thing you look towards is dealing with the cipher utility to clear the way for Defo to just dash on because it looks like that's been the aim of the game in a couple of rounds for Gambit. See oh. Oh, the adjustment on the second. Shade off falls, he finds Redgar as well. See so Ned's heated up now. Oh, you love to see it, don't you? Chronicle ain't, ain't far off it, but this could again all be for nothing. Yes, it's it's a nice shot, but see Ned's done far more and far better. Great work from him. Calm as you like. Yep. But yeah, that, that's something, uh, again, especially if it's first five to ten seconds where you're seeing Defo dash out. What's the cost of the shock dart? Just, just throw it on again. Where you, where you got to assume that the cipher utility is going to be there. It doesn't matter what site you're going to be hitting. It just makes it a little easier for Defo to to clear the way. You'll see a timeout called from Gambit. Gambit. Yeah. And, and again, actually, after a a couple of rounds, you could say uh, borderline fumbles. Um, at least stopping before they get going. Um, you see here, this this adjustment on the second shot there is yeah. disgusting. Well, disgusting for anywhere else. For Cena. It's about standard, isn't it, really? Yeah. Every day of the week. And, yeah, maybe time to address a couple of bits for Gambit. You know, the initial exchange was pretty decent, but, what is it, three on the trot now for Ascend? So you kind of want to start addressing those issues potentially and make sure you're kind of keeping that well in check. Otherwise, as we've seen now, the economy is going to start getting truly punished. You're going to start getting deeper and deeper into the hole, and, and the economy's going to be pretty buff now for Ascend. They're going to be sitting on a bit of a, you know, a nest egg at this point and happy enough to be running it. Well, I mean, it's literally, you look at the... The round timeline there, they've traded three back and forth. So that's exactly the same conversation we're having about Gambit. They've now got to be a little more careful, especially coming into their next buy round. It's not going to be an awful lot beyond that unless they can close out that round clean. Whereas now, Ascend, <laughs> we were talking about what CNED was sat with, 1,400 remaining now. Complete contrast here. Let's see what the play is here, if Gambit can really do any damage in this round. Oh, Info. What? Look at this. Such a pacey hit here up mid. Straight off the rip. He's just taken so much territory away. And we saw the kind of change of pace. But we can see the change of guard as the defenders on B are completely destroyed. Bone Cold Starzo into next round. See you later, boys. The trolley pouring through heaven. He's sending them to hell. Defo is absolutely unleashed. And now just seen it. The man who was truly at the top of the board in that prior round. But Defo has just found everything he needed. What damage can Gambit do in this round? <laughs> and uh, all it takes is a blade storm. And again, Defo not being quelled by a couple of rounds where he's caught short on that Cypher utility, like I mentioned. Uh, again, I think roll it back three rounds, they, they they actually plan to do a very similar hit towards mid, where it's very quick, almost, you know, going in dry, just dashing straight up mid there. But you know that Defo finds everything he needs on the way in. A comfortable, very, very comfortable round victory. On the back of that, Ascend didn't even really get a chance to respond. No, oh, and it looks like there could be an early scrap here, but Defo is just continuing this sort of level of pressure. Actually avoids the old. That's incredible work from him. He has 68 HP, but he's predicting what? Zenit. Zenit's still got him, but you could see the consideration there. But while this happens, all that attention drawn towards A is still going to be this B piece. So Keyless is not having a good game so far. This could be redemption, maybe not. It's a one on one, but the site is now in control as the spike can make its way across. It's going to walk this actually with the operator. <laughs> Nobody, no one watching it, considering the possibility. The res comes through. It's a 4v2 in favor of Ascend now. Spike will be retrieved. Red car's gone walkabouts actually. Spike planted. <laughs> Again, uh, this <gasps> could be Timing. incredible. 
Redgar around the back. He's playing this so patiently. He does pull the trigger on towards Zeke, and there's still going to be more. But Chronicle, he's got his back. This has been made manageable, but it's still going to be tricky. Got seen it off on top, but he's been put down. Great Chronicle. Chronicle. How a gambit pulling this off. Thank you. That was a 4v2 for Ascend. Uh, like I said, that it's half a second that decides that. Cena's actually watching the spawn. He's aware of the possibility this could happen there. And Redgar comes through, finds the first. He's traded instantly. But Chronicle comes up huge with those final two kills. What a round from Gambit. That's so sick. And, and, and I want to say this before, but we saw there was going to be an early fight. But now it looks like the money has finally crumbled for Ascend. The, the economy has been maintained. Well, this is the thing, and again, just come back to that, the Defo almost being the bait. I mean, yep. previously here, now they're going to do exactly the same thing Defo did in the previous round, but he's got teammates stacked up oh, behind hey. him here. Cena deals with him comfortably early on. For Ascend now thinking potentially this is a fake, like the last round, the duel of Death will give away all the information they need. Fake. Confirming Gambit's presence outside A. But again, another round where you see Defo kind of oh, throw his life on the line. <laughs> get caught with this. So now the 30 All HP, right. we'll be able to catch a heal. Um, keep your eye on the Omen as well, who's, th there's no way out from this really. I guess they could slip down middle and you can see that Sage is still watching the push up just in case, but it's looking like this is being left in the hands of whomever is on the side, which is still gonna be seen. Ed flash him off the angle, at least gives Redgar and Nats the first step to taking a bit more control so and much. all this utility forcing Seen Ed back. They're having to commit so much to this though. Two down though, almost committed 30 seconds remaining. Oh, almost followed through me. with this. Rolling Thunder gets sent through. <gasps> okay. Seconds. Yeah, that's a, a rare that miss from him. Standing. Zeke will trade it out. Bone Cold, you noted him earlier. Himself positioned pretty deep Spike now, planted. but almost completely eliminated from this round altogether now. Can he do any damage on the way back in? Hey, look, he's done well with Sheriffs in the past. This one's not looking like it's going to happen. No, Chronicle's got him. Gambit continued forward. That was still just going to be kind of a Shiko with the ult kind of on top. So again, a, a decent attempt, the but five to six so far. Yeah, it's interesting to see uh, again, Gambit, uh, whether or not now in this round, again, they send Defo forwards almost as uh, like a bait. Yeah. Um, with a stack behind it this time around, again, the neural theft actually in, in that scenario does tell Ascend everything they Massive. need to. Because yeah. um, previously we've seen him kind of burst out onto A, the hit comes to him, B exactly the same time as soon as he finds contact. And um, it, again, kind of a, a bit of a contrast to where we've seen him be the one to spearhead some of these other hits through mid on the, on the back of Shados' utility. But yeah. um, Ascend almost left guessing in the early round here. When, when they see Defo, it's like, okay, is <laughs> anybody else there? Is but, uh, someone else coming? And I do want to speak on the topic of Defo as well, because we've seen kind of the highs and lows a little of Defo, and it looks like he's oh, yeah. finding a bit more of that here, a little bit more well. uh, momentum kind of building off the back. And I, I want to see him find a bit more, right? Because like... I said, I, I don't think when you talk about Gambit, you don't talk about the Jet as much, right? You don't you talk don't, about it. Like, you and you have the polar opposite here. You have Ascend, where you have someone like CNED, for example, who's your highest talking point. Yep. There's a couple of other players you'll definitely throw into the conversation. And then Gambit are the polar opposite. I think, actually, um, the, the uh, contrast there is when we saw him actually come to Berlin. Uh, again, Defo yes. was relatively underwhelming online. I agree. Um, I think Berlin, for me, was the first time we saw him found consistency. Um, at least being able to deliver uh, numbers yep. for Gambit. But it's it's never been something you never talk about. It's just like, oh, well, if they had a good jet, because they deliver on all other fronts. Yeah. He still serves his role. So it's exactly. interesting to see if he can keep finding a little bit more of that space as well. What more can he get done, again, within the role he's given here? So <laughs> just waiting for this one to come back up. It looks as though it's all good to go. I think it's just a quick little tech pause coming out from one of the teams, but it looks to be good. So, final round in the first half here. Yeah, looks like Zeke wants to go deeper in towards middle, and he's going to find Defo, speaking of. Taking that back. But again, look at it. It shows presence in mid. It's only Bone Cold now to defend a site. Going to be isolated on Heaven. Again, cut off by the Cosmic Divide as well. So Gambit will find themselves comfortably on a site. And Ascend left to try and recover this once again. No ultimates available. Spike fairly vanilla post-plant here. here. See, stars are close enough to hear the utility invested, but it's a stack inside screens here for Gambit. Yeah, it is. Hefty one at that as well. Here we go, slipping on through his Nats. Gonna find the first and open up the doorway. And he's gonna actually double down on it. Finding killers is great from him. 
here's the rest of the pressure. A 2v3 on the retake now. Chronicle still fighting Bone Cold. This is not looking pretty. Seen it. Yeah, pinned Beautiful. to the wall. And Redgar and the rest of Gambit keeping control in the post pond that I thought SM would be given a little bit of room on, but they were giving Switching nothing. Side. Absolutely. I mean, Gambit play that textbook. They, uh, again, with a man down, they throw Defo to the wind effectively in mid. And then they come through, and the, and the one thing there is they need to find something before Ascend can kind of stabilize, right? Get in position to, to set up for a comfortable retake. But, uh, I mean, on the back of Nats and Chronicle there inside screens, it's it, it's crucial that they find at least one kill or slow things down on the way back in. So, um, really, really well done by Gambit there to convert being down a man effectively on that post part. Yeah, now, uh, let's kind of talk bigger picture here as we do kind of have to kind of keep in mind this could potentially go the distance between these two. I think out of all the games that we've seen so far, well, this think, is yeah. the, the likeliest one to go the distance. But again, it starts here. Now, being the home ground map coming in, it does kind of change the dynamic, and I'm sure you'll explain that for those at home who maybe haven't watched an event like this before, but Defo instantly under pressure and looks like quite quickly already we have a send taking that mid control. Blocking site. Yeah, pretty close towards mail already as well. I'll definitely go find one of the way in, he will. Uh, Starzo actually finds one in response. He's going to stay inside the uh, smoke. He's a madman. See Ned. Pushes on through. We'll find it. Red guard now. Oh. <laughs> Under a lot what? of pressure. Um, okay. Well, still finds one. Keeps it doable here. Gambit in a 2v3 on the retake. Shock Dart's not going to find anything on the way back through. Chronicle and Nats can get anything done. Not a gap, okay. Let's see if there was like a little slither or something you could maybe a little peer through, but the timing on this cross is going to be annoying as well. As soon as they feel as though maybe they can clear towards the back of sight. Look who's going to be here. It's Cned tapping away, and there's going to be another, but he doesn't need to overextend on it. It's great work from Cned. Very clean. Nice stuff through for him this round. And that gets things rolling for a center. An opportunity for a center to tie things back up in terms of the score line. See if Gambit throw anything into this round at all. His pistols, it looks like. Ascend, uh, at least initially, I mean, ten, 10 seconds till the barrier drops. Looks like might be a little bit of a mid piece here. Coming through, and uh, Gambit's actually going to stack four. Looks like they're going to set up a fault line here. A little dash out from Defo, but Keyleth's playing deep enough here. He's going to completely negate that. And on the back of the. Uh, Camera attack out. here. Defo gonna force his way through though. What is this push? It's not just Defo, there's three more. Gambit just gonna kind of flip the script a little and maybe a nice idea to try and isolate one, do what you can. You, your, your pistol's up against probably, you know, Spectres and odds and ends. So. It's the one they don't want to find because I think Keyless just comes into that with a ghost. So it's it's so almost it's like there's no damage to the economy there by him oh. falling and it tells us end everything they need to know. So they can hit onto B site. Yeah, there's a reason they call it a gamble stack. <laughs> it is a gamble. You don't really get the pleasure of seeing what's in front of you like obviously we have, so try to do what they can here. And with you on this side is the Spectre. Big old chunk of armor as well on Zeke. So again, it's going to be pretty much <laughs> a bit of a Hail Mary to try and get that down, even if Shados can set anything into motion. Oh yeah, yeah, you can see here again, Shados considering the fault line in what? towards spawn. Chronicle got to be careful. We'll catch two with the fault line, but unfortunately he's cleared out with the paint shells. He's got the paranoia in response here. Oh, we'll eat that flash. Still, Still gets fine. the adjustment. Nicely done there. Yep. And Gambit just trying a little bit of nonsense inside spawn to get another kill, but doesn't amount to anything. So yeah, considering what Ascend bring into this round. Again, no surprise to see them stacked up initially, whether or not we see an another fast hit towards B. Right. Okay. So you need one away from the base on this. They might even go for that orb inside B main. God, C Ned's having a bit of a game, isn't he? So is Chronicle, to be fair. But, I mean, pound for pound, C Ned's impact is just filthy sometimes. We might see a little more of it here if he can get Blade Storm and get this orb at least comfortably. There we go. Area. Give it a crack. Chronicle. Get out of my way! <laughs> Just a little late to kind of dip around the corner to stop it, but see the intent of it. it does now have the knives ready to go. I think they think they've pulled a rotation here. Again, there was two members of Gambit initially. Redgar's playing very close contact with the judge, so got to be careful about that. Zeke caught on the other side of the map. 
And now Redgar knows there's no follow up. Gonna go Probably gonna be an A hit here. Yeah. Oh, dearie me. Redgar at least with two, but that's gonna expire a bit of time to allow these rotations to come in because Shados would be very alone here. Needs to play that kind of borderline of keeping safe but also keeping map territory as he does kind of slink away in towards the deeper side of heaven. He does have support now coming through. And this attempt from Bone Cold, I like that. That's Getting proactive in a post plant when you are down at a disadvantage, not a bad way to try it out. But there are two more players coming oh, back yeah, through. Yeah. He can't find any more. That's more than enough. He's done the best he can. Now, Stark, so this, uh, this might be a little bit out of reach, but let's see if he can find any avenue to maybe do some damage, give himself any chance. Just a little bit of a miss on the first step. But again, I mean, similarly to what we credited Gambit on that post plant on a site on their attacking half. Send almost repeating that there with Bone Cold getting a little aggressive towards spawn. Finds it, able to dip away, but eventually dealt with. Send, again, full purchase coming through on this round. Yeah, only really Kielas and Scene Ed would left anything over a thousand credits. Red car again with a judge. We do see him start to main that weapon, don't we? <sighs> Usually it's Nats, which is the ratty sure. one, but Red Gar's kind of picking up the slack elsewhere. Some vibes. Yeah, you can see the, the attempts come out. Look, Link's made that look way too viable. Oh, That's yeah. the problem. Yeah. He's made it look like, yeah, now this is this is really sort of yampy as well. I mean, Team Liquid are just out there, just trendsetters. Now, at this point, though, presence will be very much considered and noted, so might have to give this up, fall back away. But a patient star here, at least on the extremities, as the mid exploration has at least found a little bit of a forward start. There's already contact now been found as well. So a little bit of information all around, but nothing giving too much away. Going to deal with the trap wire inside vents. <laughs> now CNED looks to explore towards B Heaven a little bit. Chronicle's drone will slow that down. Don't want to give away anything. One spotted on the back of the drone, though. Doesn't tell Gambit too much, so can't, you, no one's rotating. You can see it, right? They they have no true concept where this hit could be coming in. This is a little bit more, and we'll see if anyone starts to peel around. And again, Chronicle has to respect this. He can't do anything about it. But this is all a ruse. Look at look at them hitting, turning tail and running. This is Man who's all off the back of Bone Cold, waiting. Oh, it's incredible. Defo set up for success. Now he can turn. The timing could not be better. Defo is just living the dream right now. Everything lining up so perfect. Perfectly, and now down to two. Like, I don't think there's anything more to be seen here. What Gambit just... Beautiful round. T take me through what you loved about that, please. Uh, again, the contact shown in B heaven. Again, the contingency in place. Redgar has that star set up just in case they do exactly what they did, which is try to fake. They try to pull a rotation, but, but Gambit has set up perfectly to greet it. I mean, it, it, it helps that Defo's landing some insane shots here. And again, the damage done here just... I mean, it's devastating for Ascend, because I think they do everything right. The only thing is, Gambit, they don't bite. Mm. There was no rotation. I, and I think, again, maybe if you know, Bone Core was maybe here, waiting to hear an audio cue or something, right, from sitting in vents, probably heard nothing at that point, but they had to try and spin that rotation, eventually try and hit back towards the site. And again, that positioning alone, everything else off the back of it was just phenomenal. Um, kind of... It's glimpses of what you kind of love to see about Gambit as well in this, but I also really enjoy the creativity from Ascend yeah, there. Yeah, and again, the other thing to consider, Nats is the second player there on A. He feels no pressure whatsoever coming through from uh, from A main. And uh, <laughs> that's the other side of it, right? Defo can fully commit to hold on to it. I'd be interested to see, actually, when uh, Redgar adjusts his utility after the trap wire falls, because again, that's the, that's the first thing, right? Uh, Ascend plant the seed to come and that, deal with that trap wire. Uh, at that point, you've got to assume Defo's then committed to holding ropes, right? Yes, because um, that's what you've kind of entailed, right? That's the whole concept. That's the safety concept, net. The safety right? net is the tra that trap wire. Once that's gone, Defo's then like, okay, now I, I now have, have to, to hold pay it. Attention. Exactly. Wow. Nine to seven. I, I just think there's depth to Gambit that you occasionally get glimpses of, right? You start to see that that real, you know, championship level team. But again, we, we know this end can be, but for now, we have to see it now come through. Pressure starting to build, but Ascend I finding some what? real footing here. How on earth have they got this, like, B crunch going on so readily? Spike planted. Seems so comfortable He's on the way in. Spike planted nice and early. Again, two members is... Yeah, two members of Ascent actually able to hold on to the heaven and Zigati gets himself a judge. This is a deadly position for him to pick up that weapon. 
Again, now they're going to have a pretty good idea that Gambit are committed to either saving or they're coming through spawn. <laughs> I don't know what they can get out of this. I, I think you got to save, right? You, you just got to back. I don't know if Zeke's going to let you fully save. Give it an attempt. That does at least keep control of that. Second shot of this. And, and look at the, the versatility from Ascent. We had to flip the switch and be able to convert this round. is is incredible from them. And with what they had, there was so little that they came into this round with. I mean, first, first kill comes through from a pistol. And you, um, yeah. you see how quickly... Cena's actually slowed down by a fault line in mid. And even then, it's still not getting away. I mean, the second line of that is the paranoia through heaven. So unfortunately, Defo has to respect that. At that point, I mean, they're able to close the distance so quickly. That Cnet, actually 21 and 10 right now, he's having a blinder of a game. Here, I mean, it's it's a little weird when you talk about the economy of Gambit here, but enough to drop Chronicle a weapon and enough for Redguard to probably buy a judge. So Serving its purpose. Ooh, you love to see it, but you love to see that from Zeke. Just instantly going to be bounding on in, trying to take that space. Jet by his side. He's got everything he needs there in Ascend, just trying to clear the back of sight. Nothing too much to really stop them at this point. They've done everything they need to, and maybe the pace change is what's really helped Ascend here. Maybe that slower pace they've been trying to work through has just not really paid dividends, but now the switch up has helped. But it is going to be retake time now for Gambit. Nearly caught, actually, on the way out there, but Headshot. very aggressive. Ascend looking to get very aggressive on this. Cnid and Zeke will find kills. Actually, Zeke finds another one through the cage here. Come down to a 2v2 somehow. Redgar going to invest the Cosmic Divide as well. well Try and isolate Cnid, but he finds the kill. He can fall away a little from this. Try and play the time. Cnid, oh, you're going to walk this. You're going to walk this, Cnid. You will walk this. Got the knife! Oh, no, no, no! Uh, oh, oh, my God! The news! Oh, my God! Uh. Delete the VOD. <laughs> the fact that you can see C Ned on the X rays is like the chance knife on the edge. That's it. Yeah, do that one. I, it looked like he jump peeked as well through the I wall. I thought we've had a little glimpse or something. But there's two of them. Where was there's, the? There's two alive. I, Where? Can we watch this back? Maybe uh, a breakdown of communication. I'm not something sure. Something had but to have gone wrong. It, it didn't make for pleasant that viewing. That's that's for sure. Yeah, I mean, do we want to look back on a mistake? I don't know, but that just. You don't normally get away with murder like that, right? Like, let's let's be honest, that is uh, not even... That was kind of an unforced error, I guess, at that point. Like, yeah, the divide's in place and, and all of that, but still, you got to check it. Um, and Cena just walked mid. Yeah. Just walked mid. Solo, by the way. Yeah, no one else there. Just walked mid. <laughs> Cena, go frag. <laughs> okay. If I post it up, though, and if... Send aren't diligent on their approach here. Could be walking into this. Actually, Defo looking to get a little aggressive on this. Oh my god, Defo! <gasps> oh my god! Defo just body checked them with the op there. Nats is right by his side, and he oh, he's stuck around for so long. Shalos comes in, tries to play support, but we're down to a one v one. What has this game suddenly become? It's gone from like three like calculated, thought through game to this brawl out of nowhere. Spike gonna be planted, and. <laughs> no, <laughs> it was a valiant attempt. A very, very good shot at things. Oh, he, he actually caught him there. He's going to note his position. Why? Shadows. What, what Cold seem, he seems so safe from that. Did he? Did he seem safe? I mean, safe? he did initially, but the first two completely missing him. I, I think trying to line up for maybe the default plant or a plant for heaven, but he gets caught as he's hopping back towards hell. I mean, the, the time's run down now. It's not going to be any relevance to the information that he's gathered, but he's down to 30 HP, Lawrence. It's damage done, right? And Chronicle's got a bit of timing on his side here. You can see it. He's somewhat slipped on through, but now the sound of the diffuse should call Bone Cold back, and timing is kind of dwindled yeah, away tough. from Chronicle. I don't think he's got the time for this anymore. No, he doesn't. Bone Cold's done well there after what got so sketchy. Uh, that was awkward. Uh, uh, again, if Chronicle was able to close the distance a little quicker, I think that tag with the Hunter's Fury ultimately is why he decides to creep ramp. Um, yeah. I, I think he thinks that he's caught him off guard there. Oh, here's the diffuse. Starzo. Starzo. Uh, see, jump peeks are there. Starzo. Did neither of them consider the fact that he could have just sat that? Moving swiftly on. 10 9 now. <laughs> warm it in. Oh, okay. Gambit. Gonna be having to suffer with a little less. And 
I'm still going to be able to bail them out with one, but that's probably about it. And there's the rest of you know, ghosts and not much else. Uh, yeah, again, it's a, that's the stars are going to invest the rest here to get Zeke back on his feet. It, it's criminal if Gambit find any more damage here. Ah, well, great. Shados will find one as well. So Atti comes to a 3v3. The res has already been invested. Rolling Thunder available. I'm not sure on the weapon situation, but potential here to invest it. And they do just that, Lauren. They're going to try and force their way into towards site. Defo closes the distance very quickly. Finds the first key. They're going to trade that out. But it comes down to 1v2 now. Cena called upon. I'm in pieces. Oh, Cena still going to get one at least. The follow up. Thank God for that. Saving Ascend from what could have been a bit of a nightmare, to say the least. And again, Cena, the last man says the plant even isn't even good for him. I think Gambit are considering that he's got to be playing elbow at that point. 10-10, tied up here. Gambit, make it costly. Get a chance to look at the economy here. Again, not an awful lot left for Gambit. It's got to be a clean victory here. You can send just about take the edge in terms of the finances. Sometimes you have these really beautiful strategic games that are gorgeous to watch. It's kind mm. of like chess game. And then sometimes it's weird. <laughs> a couple of these rounds are a, a little odd to little watch. Bit. Yeah. But again, I, th I think it, it, with what we saw, Defo trying to achieve on attack. Well, Redgar eats a lot of that damage, actually. That's unnecessarily. Defo tries to swing on the back of that flash, but. Uh, again, I think a send have seen more than enough to call upon this rotation, at least. They will head towards ropes here. Nats and Defo will be called upon to defend A-site. The first wire dealt with pretty quickly. Chronicle will send some shots through, but now they've got to be careful. Defo will actually find Zeke on the he way in. Noted. I think Nats got spotted, but it doesn't matter. Chronicle got there so quickly. Killers? I don't even know how he saw those or where he got those two from. This is, again, it's such a... Weird exchange of frags coming through. Shados is noted towards CT, tries to slip through, and he does. Where's that spike? Kind of no man's land right now. Killers again going to continue forward, picking up a big left. frag towards the back of the side. Defo now removed. Spike can go down. And these final two for Gambit. Spike planted. Going to try and work this one back in. Most of the players right now for Ascent are at least tucked towards the site, kind of stacked up. One towards you know, the back of the screen, two almost towards that pillar. Shados for that first steps forward and seen it still here who's been pretty much the anchor of ascends frags at this point keeping them very much in this red guard the shoulder peak and yeah seen it is going to get red guard here but shados did create that space shados how is this happening again hyper what is this game I mean, that's the neural theft's invested, so they know about the flank coming through from Redgar. Cenad's the one to hold that initially. I, I think once they know how close Redgar is, uh, they have to try and engage with Shados, and they don't. I mean, Gambit, they, they, they play a 2v3 perfectly. The, the damage is done on the way in. Yes. They're able to trade out both kills favorably. That last member of Ascend, uh, was it Kilo's in elbow? I think it was. He's got a swing on that. One enemy that's remaining. the last opportunity to recover this round. Seen it. Plays perfectly there, but he tried, but he just didn't. Commit, just a split second behind that yeah. trade, and Shados punishes them for it. Great work from Shados to be able to find that space, right? But bloody hell, ten to eleven. This might be a late one, mate. Get out of my way. Cancel my breakfast plans. Yep, this one is going to be going on. And Shados Ooh. actually defo. Going to find Zeke to start with. Falls away quite quickly. Initial damage done. Send me operating with four now, but again, the leveraging didn't pick factor. up that weapon. I don't know if he, did he thinks think he, he did? did. I hope not. But he definitely didn't. No. She don't have full buy at this point <laughs> or ascend. So maybe someone else has collected that. Maybe Starzo is going to get it now. I'm not. Yeah, I feel as though they're going to realise this at some point. Now, though, it's uh, leaned towards that B side. You can Ooh, see hesitation oh, oh, oh. on rotation. Messina does the head shade off, and now towards the B side we go. There is still a pl player here, that being Redgar. Playing towards the back of the pillar, does find the damage towards Cened, but a quick trade. And Bone Defo cold. dealt with almost instantly. Shot was disgusting there. Spike planted. Now, just Chronicle and Nats once again. How many times have seen them? The last two standing for Gambit here. Keyleth's very late on this lurk here, Gambit. 
Got to be careful about this. We'll make a move quickly onto site to kind of mitigate that risk. Enemy Together, Bone Cold finds the first Chronicle and he trades it out. He's going to find the second as well. Keyless now. Look, he's thought about it. Oh, oh my God. The galaxy brain. So close. <laughs> that would have been insane if he catches that as well. You Keyless know he put together those pieces, man. He was yep, like, oh, yep. so close, dude. So <laughs> close. He lives with a cheeky smile because I think he knows he's got yep. away with that he's there. The fact that that it. smoke drops and Chronicle is staring down at him. Wow. It's mad. Back and forth now. And this is going to put Gambit under the gun. Uh, and this is awkward again because I think Defo quite late on throws his Blade Storm in there to try and get yes, the, the retake kind of a, a little more feasible. Um, but with this round and this purchase, you'd almost wish Love he didn't, to be honest with you. A site wide open, Gambit, walk mid. Nothing to stop this from happening. Look, Look how spread Ascend are already. Yeah, they have pushed so deep on this. They've got to be able to call out these this retake position. Planted. And again, uh, for Gambit, you know, you've got to try something in these rounds. Bit of a Chico. But how do you deal with these sort of positions, right? They're so unfavorable for these sheriffs and any of the other you know, ghosts and, and, and odds and ends. So, again, this is going to be tricky for Gambit. We still have to give it a good go. So much utility still left as well on the other side. Just kind of adding to that strain. Never now garnered, but the dance continues in time. Every step is a second four, but that is a body now put to bed. Shados with a good trade. Defo still keeping in this one. It ain't pretty. There's now a 1v1. And there's no time for it. But still, you can see how close this game is even in these sort of rounds. That's the one thing I think Gambit there just need to, to stretch this purchase as thin as possible in the next round. So they're not even interested in approaching the side. They push straight towards heaven. They stack up and they do uh, I mean, all the damage they can really ask for if you get a chance to take a quick look at what the knock-on is from that. Because I know it was shaky previously uh, light armors I mean, I mean it's it's actually pretty decent it's, really it's, it's that much. exactly i mean zeke's gonna run this through with a specter he's got the showstopper available bone cold though he's forced to run a specter through here I, uh, the way ascend were kind of playing into that i really thought they would be pretty flush for cash but <laughs> fair enough okay let's see what the look is to start with now as is 12 to 11. fire in the hole yeah, the old popped and this is a lot of look towards B and actually Chronicle had no idea That's where to look. How has he done this? Now look at where the hit's going though. It's exactly all towards A. It's all a bit of a bait and a switch and it is going to be towards that A site as we now wait. Slow down though. You can see the utility trying to hinder this. Allow time for a rotation. CNED going to try and power forward. There's a player not too far away from this though and the flash is great. CNED tries to dash around this trying to keep himself alive. There's so much pressure. Shados pins him to the ground finally and it's down to two. Stars are on Bone Cold now. Potential to hit this rotate again with Defo all the way out on rafters and Shado seemingly holding a fault line now. He's got his weapon back out now, but Your try and get Keyless back on his feet. Brings it through a 3v3. But again, a good indicator. 40 seconds remaining now. Ascend have to make something happen. Yeah. The problem is they can't go ropes because that trap wire, once again, it will give away that rotation. Where do they go with this? 30 seconds left. Oh, 30 seconds too. There's not many options, right? Be it hoping for a little something. So much faith Cover put into that up. one wire basically at this point, but it does seem as though the hit will be still looking towards it for now. Can they clear on towards rafters? No. Gambit doing so well, and this game is going the distance. A really, really well played round from Gambit, honestly. Uh, and again, everything done Switching to slow times. down. And again, oh, I talked about the contingencies time. earlier. Yep. Redgar's out there. He's he's the one to kind of confirm their suspicions, right? Whether or not it is a fake the, uh, elsewhere. Shade or so in a position where he can get close enough to throw that Rolling Thunder out. And it stops that hit. Uh, again, Ascend can't force their way through after finding that kill onto Redgar. Uh, the setup, so many times in some of these defensive rounds from Gambit, you just think uh, they've actually considered that. That's That's crazy. Did you have any plans for the evening? Nope. Good. Smart man. Worried about tomorrow's plans, huh? <laughs> Luckily, we were in the right studio. It's been a while like since we've had an overtime, actually. Yeah, they're, they're not only long days because it's technical issues. This is just a good yeah. game. So I'm fine with it. So 12 12 to go back in. The glass cannon is out for CNED and for all. Oh, oh no! That's a wall. Oh, God! This is, this is uh, a tragedy. CNED's going to be absolutely tilted off the face of the earth. 
What just happened? I don't even care about the rest of the round right now. Killers. Oh, it's not nice. It ain't pretty. This is a that's a tilter. That's an absolute tilter. Uh, I mean, yeah, there's a fumble on the side of a end, but Gambit just bully their way yeah, into they that just first powered round. Through. Switching side. Uh, oh no. I mean, it's something like that that happens in overtime. Yeah, get a timeout. Yeah. Get a timeout. Let's yeah. let's untilt from this. <sighs> I'm not sure really of the reasoning. <laughs> again, I'm sure this is a question for Lothar, but but again, what's invested there in terms of was there an updraft available? If if, if there's an updraft available, the yeah, wall's fine. fine. Yeah. The wall is well, it's not great, but it's okay. Um <laughs> it's not a round <laughs> ender, but <laughs> put it that way. I mean, I uh, on the problem I would say is though it may not normally be a round ender for most teams, but when Cnet is literally top fragging by quite a, a fair crack. You don't want to wall him out to mid. No, you don't want to just leave <laughs> him out, right? He's not, you know, in like Jurassic Park where they put the goat out. You know what I mean? Don't do that to him. Don't put him in the little car. I used to be so sad about that goat. Yeah, I don't like that scene. Yeah, no, it's really upset. I used to have nightmares about Jurassic Park. Did Terrified you? me. Yeah, raptors, man. <sighs> Scary. Clever girl. Terrible claw. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> They do move in herds. 13 to 12, we're gonna come back into this. Maybe just a little bit of a uh, kind of course correction for Ascendix. because they gotta get that mentality right. Maybe just kind of talk through uh, maybe what they want to come in with that uh, any sort of facility and whatever just happened in that round. Let's just kind of put it aside again. 30 on the board almost for CNED. Kind of, again, man needed a little more there. Kind of got caught, maybe miscommunication, something went astray. Regardless, Gambit, as you said, just sped up through it. They're like, oh, this is great. Thank you. Yeah, so Gambit gonna back away and leave B side completely open and commit to full retake attempt here. Interesting. Again, the, the big benefit, okay, well, I was gonna say, the big benefit is that they're gonna be very well equipped to do so, but a headshot coming through, gonna leave Shade off down at 10 HP. Redgar running a judge in overtime, obviously. Obviously. But there'll be lots of utility available here. And a three-man flank, actually, from Gambit. They've got a trap wire to deal with. So CNED will be aware of it. Actually, they, spotted they hop so over quickly. the top of it. It's been noted so quickly, though. And he's going to be just dedicated to this. Yeah, CNED is just doing them so dirty right now. And look at him just buying time. He's dominant on the angle. Yes, the rest of Ascender getting tested here. But Chronicle just has a knife in the back, gifted from CNED. Well, and that's why you don't wall him out. No, that's why you don't wall him out, man. <laughs> I mean, the best way possible for that to, to play out is yep. CNED popping off. Yeah. He does just that. Yeah. <laughs> Again, in position as well, it's, they have so much time and space where they can clear everything on site, and that, that's why CNED's in position to, to guard a, a questionable trap. Why? I mean, traditionally, you could put it just in the entrance of B main towards garage, but it's actually in a position to come back and hold that pretty deep inside spawn. 33 kills on the board right now for CNED. 13, 13, we go again. again. Just like that B start coming out from Gambit. We saw this piece before. Quite a bit of pace to it as well. Death focus. Oh no. Correct in time. He was stunned as well from yeah. the fault line. It didn't work out for him. His dogs are just fine. Going to fall away. All off towards B main. Instantly broken, but again. This is just a good start. Just quickly getting that first pick. Defo now gone. Gambit have to rely on the four that still stand. Gambit will freeze for a moment. Three of them begin to re-explore mid. Starzo and Zeke again. Zeke's just going to swing on the contact here. Starzo just going to make sure nobody can creep up for free. Oh, actually, Zeke swings ahead of the curve a little bit there. Nat's good for the trade, but again, it's then do what they have to. They maintain this man advantage yeah. by finding that trade. Cena is, is pretty much in the right place for this. 30 seconds left. Could be forced away, but he seems to be good for one, and he is. Shados now removed. Let's see if Chronicle can find a little bit of a way in. It has been noted quite substantially, so he's not going to get that element of surprise maybe he was hoping for. But Nat's going to at least kind of alleviate some of that stress, but it's still going to be met by an instantaneous trade from Cned. So now just Nat's alive in a 1v3, and it's Cned again. The OT god is just powering through this. Definitely warmed up now. And I love the ability there for Chronicle to try and just bait a little bit. Nat finds a kill on the back of it, but again, the send 
all the time in the world to set up just in case Gambit are able to pull something out of the bag, which they neither did. Mm. Now Ascend, one round ahead. And Gambit a do or die round on their home ground. Gotta say, the observers pelting joy here today. It's been good. Have we missed a kill? <laughs> Definitely not. Me and you counting. probably have. Get one of my fingers to count them. See Ned, <laughs> gonna be the first man forward here. Ooh. That's awkward. Ooh, no, it's not. It's just fine. Okay. It's absolutely fine. He still finds Redgar, apparently, but Shados is on the case. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's just CNED. Let's just get CNED POV. Everyone's like, oh, every time you pass CNED, man, all you do is talk about him. Have you seen how he's playing? Should we be to ignore half of the kills in the server? Well, he's knocking on the door of dropping a 40 bomb here. Just casually. So I'm all for it. Zeke got himself tucked up pretty deep inside mail. Again, I don't think anybody from Gambit going to go drifting now. Defo down to 66 HP. Nats and Chronicle still towards A site. Again, no confirmation, at least. You see now, Ascend may be caught wind of this rotation. They make their way through ropes. So Chronicle, you got to be careful he's not found. Gambit need three alive if they want to make this retake a possibility. Ascender walking spawn. Look at this, this is insane, Lauren. They actually try and isolate Chronicle here. Chronicle, he's trying to buy time. You can see him using every piece of utility they could have. And Cena still just backhands him. Who is this guy? <sighs> now, the task presented between Defo and Nats. And that's the man has been a monster in the past and needs to find a little bit of that magic right now because Cena is on a tear. 56 HP and he wants this. We saw this being an issue in the past though. We saw that retake coming in a very similar situation like it's this. Exactly the same setup. Exactly. This post plant has been a problem before, but will it be a problem again? Defo steps in, is noted, time begins to dwindle, and that's fine, Cena. That's a big scalp to be claiming, but Zeke gonna pick up the mantle. Maybe there's still life in them yet. As Zeke is gonna take down Defo, and this one is wrapped up for now, but what a game to kick this series off with. This is going to be a bit of a long evening, I feel like, Bob. Yeah, well, and I feel as if the majority of that it felt as if Gambit were in control. Um, Ascender <laughs> able to just, I mean, ascend on the back of CNED, but probably one of the best performances we've seen in a long while from CNED, just on an individual map basis. I mean... The end on 39 frags. <sighs> madness. Also, shout out as well, Zeke. Between CNED and Zeke, they find 11 first bloods, and Starzo finding four as well. Yep. I mean, Defo doing all he could to find eight of his own, but... Um, Good luck finding your place there. You well, exactly, exactly. Look, this has already been a great start, and I think this is why everyone's touting this as potentially being that longer series, the one that could go all the way. We're going to find out if that's the case in a moment's time after the break. I'm uh, Medo from Giants Gaming, uh, and I'm a Sentinel player. I've been playing with Giants for um, 11 months. It's uh, we joined in January this uh, this year. We have two new players. They joined like before this last VCT. And we've been practicing pretty hard since then. And, you know, we did pretty good in that tournament. And we've just been playing as much as we can, you know, uh, ever since. Uh, we've been struggling a little bit now. These, uh, like, we played LVP before. And we lost against some, like, lesser teams, let's say. Um, but uh, we certainly showed our true potential today, I think, uh, versus uh, really good teams. Fnatic probably, I would say, but 
I felt very confident throughout the whole series, to be honest. I think it's very innovative. Uh, it's pretty cool, you know. Um, with you can lose instantly after two games, but uh, it really benefits the teams which have uh, a bigger map pool because you can't just pick one map that the team is super bad at, for example, you know, because then it can be super hard for for you to to play on if you lose your own map. So I think it's pretty cool. I mean, because the best teams are here, of course. It's going to be really good competition overall. The games are going to be very intriguing and it's just obvious that you have to watch it. Hey guys, I'm Alexander Zig Zygmunt. I play for Ascent, uh, Ascent Club and, and uh, we are playing in the Red Bull tournament today. I've been playing with, in Ascent for about uh, half a year already and I'm acclimated to the team very well and it's uh, really nice. I think it's a really unique tournament with a unique format and it's uh, very fun to play it. I've been playing in already in the first uh, tournament, so I really like the format. It's, uh, I think it's nice. Right now, we don't really have a specific like map that we feel uh, insane on, except like our bind, of course, it's like probably, uh, it's not probably, it's our strongest map by far right now. And uh, the other maps are just like, uh, they're okay, so we, we not, don't really know, uh, like we just know what to pick when we start playing and we never like prepare specifically for uh, for like a day or something. We're feeling good, I think uh, our form got back a little bit and uh, we are we are, uh, we are prepared for the tournament, so we think we might take it all and uh, just like in any other tournament we basically just want to win and that's it. Other teams, I mean, definitely Liquid, like you can see them after the LCQ, how they're playing against any other teams. And uh, so far, like we haven't been really watching that many games, we've been more focusing on us. We kind of changed our work ethic a little bit, you know, we've been taking it very easy uh, before we started playing official games. And like coming into the tournaments, we always just, you know, boost our uh, practice. You know, we've been, we are trying hard and we just want the best performance on tournaments. So we just always start slow when we, after the tournament starts slow, then we start packing, you know, higher, 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 better. And our performance just improves. Uh, and I think we are in a good spot right now. from Azik there. He thinks Bind is their best map and that is coming up uh, shortly. But Lothar, what a performance on Split. This was Gambit's home ground, but Ascend took it. I mean, they had uh, some really ferocious executes on attack and I will always say that Split on pro level is a little bit attackers based, but not by much. But when you play Jet and Raze, you gain so much space on those executes that it's kind of hard to stop. And now um, Gambit with that Sova pick they have a little bit less utility to stop them from pushing while they gain utility to reclaim space. But if the executes are fast, then you don't really have to like get the space back because you just need boots on the ground. So, um, a very good showing by, by Ascend and uh, the entire club. And there was also like something when it comes to the duels itself, it seems like CNET made a lot of um, impact with that operator on that jet. He heard, he heard us. He heard us say that we weren't that impressed with the Astra, and he's back on the jet doing what he does best. Now, uh, the game against NIP when we first saw the Sova come out for Gambit, it was a little bit difficult to judge. Uh, but here, Lothar, what do you make of it? Are you a fan of it? Do you understand why they're playing the Sova? Um, there is some, um, like, a definite value in, in using the Sova. We have seen the shock Shoktas being used to just stop the utility from uh, Cypher to have any kind of value and there were rounds where it did actually matter because the rounds were slower and Gambit was uh, then relying on an example uh, getting 
retake, uh, retake by using Suez from mid to go to A, and then they didn't have the trap anymore to check if someone is going from there. But in general, like uh, Chronicle was just having a having a great game, and because of that, he was able to fuel up his uh, ultimate way more often than typically would have seen it. So um, it's I think it's a very low sample size right now yeah. to judge how often this will be useful. Maybe it will be even more useful against uh, a Killjoy. Uh, an example on, on Split if someone will be playing it because the Shock does will have even more value against specifically the ultimate. Uh, but it's definitely not a bad pick and you have seen how much value brings the drone. In many rounds, um, Gambit was just playing with no, uh, no power on mid. They were just letting it, it being taken by, by Ascend. But then they were using the drone to just reclaim the space or at least the vision from heaven on B side and on mid. And they were they exactly knew what is going to happen in the next um, seconds because of that drone. Well, let's talk about the Jet head-to-head -head as well. Uh, CNED completely popped off there. What did you make of um, the differences between CNED and Depot? <sighs> All right, so I'll bring up some basic stats. Let's do it. CNED has 39 kills in this game, uh, had five first bloods, only one first death, mm -hmm. which is super impactful when you are able to get the first man advantage without dying. Right, that's actually nuts. And now we have Defo, he had 24 kills, eight first bloods, which is massive, but 10 first deaths. That means that in, uh, how many rounds did we have? We had um, 28, right, 28 rounds? Uh, that means that Defo was participating in the first duel in 18 out of them and lost 10, right? So he, he's um, out there trying to make a main advantage, but he was losing a lot of duels uh, and that could put his team on the disadvantage. Would have to also divide it, bef like in between. Oh, those are def first deaths on defense. Those are first deaths on attack. Mm -hmm. Because on defense, they are more valuable for the opponents than on on the attack. Because on attack, you try to be traded, which is a very good example of how a jet should just play on attack when she's dashing in. Right? We have seen from both teams, Defo and Cnet were opening rounds by just dashing into the smoke and had a lot of impact on the teams. I mean, he had one huge round as well with the defuse behind the Astro War, which that was, was kind of nice. crazy. Yeah. Uh, I feel like the whole uh, map was a little bit like that. We There was a lot of rounds, like you just named, 28 rounds, I think you said, but you picked one to break down for Yes, us. I have one, and it's uh, more of a basic thing to explain, uh, just to show how the composition from Ascent is working when it comes to the attack. It's a very simple but powerful thing. Even though the entire site is empty, Ascent doesn't know that when they try to execute. So they're gonna do a very basic thing, but very tough to, st to stop. Jet will gonna dash next to the um, wooden box inside of a smoke, while Zeke on the, st uh, on the race will reclaim the space on the right side, then the entire team will follow it up. Let's play the clip and see how that goes, because those two duelists now reclaim the space here. You have perfect timing with the paranoia as well for, um, for Zeke, and now the smokes, when they appear, on those spots, th this space is already taken by the attackers. So something that the Sage would typically would do is have a wall here. But because of the power of the race and the jet, she's able to save the wall for CT for the post-plant situation. Right. So it shows how much of an impact simple movement uh, is uh, is having because of the dash and the satchels. You would save other piece of key utility, and that's where. In example, cipher cages are being saved uh, for the space on site because they don't need to have any fights because they know the already space is there for the taking. They can save the utility, and because of that, the post plant is very powerful and it's hard to stop. I mean, this is in overtime as well. Yes, uh, it's the fact we talk about these two teams of being the being the two of the best teams, and even in overtime, they're like, we're going to stay organized. We've all got a job to do, and we're going to do it well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, but we are going to move on to the next map now. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we heard Zeke say, there's a couple of maps that, you know, we don't really care for, but Bind, this is our strongest. But on the side of Gambit, Lothar, this is not in a situation where they've somehow got Haven, where they can maybe gamble it and be like, oh, Gambit, you know, they don't have a game plan. <laughs> But Bind, Gambit are very, very strong too. Yeah, one of the focal points of, of Gambit is Viper from that. Uh, yeah. On Bind. He's um, one of the innovators, I would say, as well, or when it comes to how to play uh, the character on this map. So I'm looking forward to that. But in general, um, my biggest fear, maybe, when it comes to Gambit's performance on Bind is that typically they play very slow on the attack. 
they play the default. Very slow. <laughs> they, play, they play the default setup. There's one person on each lane with one flex player just changing the positions to strengthen one point of the attack and try to get some informations going. But we have seen it over and over again that many teams can counter the way Gambit plays on attack just by being passive. And when a team is being passive and patient, that's where Gambit fails to gain advantage. And when they fail to gain advantage, the time is running low and they have to execute without even having any kind of utility being drawn out from the defenders. So this is one of my worries that can happen here. And because of that, Ascent can be very, um, very, let's say, um, having a, a strong appearance on, on the defense uh, but yeah we'll see I mean I hope that the gambit will change up the the, the pace of the attack that they typically have uh, it's funny how you mentioned the slow attack because I remember Ye was saying right after uh, from MB right after mm -hmm. Masters that the most annoying thing against Gambit on Bind is that they take so long to do anything, <laughs> you kind of almost fall asleep a little bit and you take your eyes off the angle for one second and bam, like Defo is just there and it kills you. It's very <laughs> similar on Ascent yeah. as well. Those are the two maps where Gambit has the slowest attack time from all of the maps. Um, but you can see that being in general a rule of thumb when you play against Gambit. So on, on Icebox, it also happens when uh, there's always one player also just holding like shit. Yeah. Maybe in the spawn for like 40 seconds, if someone just goes in through mid or through long B, he's gonna get punished. Well, uh, but yeah. yeah, let's go to the agent select. We're going to agent select now. This is pretty much a tried and tested yeah. combat yes. on both sides. We're not expecting any changes. But Lothar, interesting thing is the last time Gambit lost this map, it was to Ascend, and that's when they decided to change their comp from their old comp into this new one, and they haven't changed their sense. I'm very happy to see that there's no race on, yep. on, on Gambit eSports lineup. Uh, as we talked before, I do understand why so many teams are valuing race on this in this composition because the uh, Boombot is a very powerful tool when it comes to reconnaissance. But at the same time, I do value the jet on dash, uh, with the dash on site, as a, having a bigger impact than the Boombot. And also on defense, well, you can't really compare it, right? Jet is just unprecedented like there's no other character like that right now in the game yeah i love this this is both teams using the bind comp that they are known for that they're mm -hmm, good on mm -hmm. and i feel like this could go to another overtime lothar what do you think i'm hoping for it because uh we're kind of let's say on the short end of the stick when it comes to like the length of the game so far right <laughs> it was just 2-0 2-0 and now we have the first overtime it, it's pansy and hypoc it's, it's, gonna, of it's course, gonna be overtime hopefully no technical issues uh, <laughs> you've and jinxed pansy. it now you've jinxed it i'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh but of course you know gambit they're behind uh they they have to win here. Do you think they can do it? Can they break Ascend's win streak here as well? Well, I hope, hope so, because I want to see more of those teams. But at the same time, it's Ascend's pick. It's their home ground. And in theory, on paper, Ascend should have a higher chance of winning this map than Gambit. But you cannot write Gambit down. It's like They also are great on this map. Yeah. And um, I really feel there's a lot of impact being done by the duelist on this map. And this is gonna be the focal point because the defense is both on great of those teams, but the initiation on attack, on a bind, on a map where the attack is way tougher to do than, on, than the defense, is gonna be very uh, impactful for the teams for the success, when it comes to the success. I can't wait to see it. Well, this has uh, what it takes to be potentially the best map we've seen so far in the tournament. Pansy and Hypog, I know you won this. Let's take this to OT. Oh, you just love jinxing it, don't you? This could be a nice 2-0, quick game, in and out, good games of Farscape. No, I'm, I'm all down for it, if it's as anything to the calibre of what we just saw. However, we have to wait and see. Now, it did feel as though on the desk that maybe Lothar was leaning this being almost an Ascend favoured map here, but I, I, how do you feel about this one? Is this now got the potential of that 2-0, or is this where you'd expect oh Gambit to find a bit more space? It's comfortable, but I'm... I'm I'm stuck on the fence. I'm going to be honest. Okay, uh, no, no, again, it, it, we look at the last three months or so, map record-wise, both teams pretty much dominant. Yeah. Uh, the only actual blemish on either record is a loss to either of these teams. So uh, they faced off previously twice, and it's 1-1 one, one, um, in terms of buying face-offs. But uh, Gambit have had a couple of struggles um, throughout their bind appearances, at least. We'll have to wait and see. I guess that's why Lothar is maybe leaning in a sense favor. Fair enough. See here, actually, initially, Shadows with a flash down short and no confirmation on the other side of it. Preemptively rotated this direction. It'll be a three man 
defense here towards B site. And actually, there you go. That will be the confirmation of Ascend's presence. Yeah, Ascend could get funneled on this, but I want to see how they try and navigate past that double stack if it does come into play. But now, though, Shados is in a lot of trouble, and Nat's just got removed from his side. So this is where things start to get a little bit dicey for them. Yeah, Ascend have done actually very well to try and slice through the issues that could have begun, but it's actually Defo to win out through towards Hooker quite quickly. And the follow-up, Starks who seemed completely unawares or almost belligerent to the fact that Defo could be there. And CNET and Zeke, though, keep things in check, and it doesn't spiral out of control. Lucky there, actually, CNET able to land the shots when absolutely necessary after a fantastic performance in map one. It's been said too many times already, but then get themselves on the board. Zeke with some decent early ultimate progress as well. Whether or not he's going to be able to find an ace here, get it online, or maybe some orbs to boot. But again, it's good to see Zeke really kind of play with his agent pool as well. Again, you think back to the, the first time we really saw Zeke kind of break out with that G2 okay. roster. Now starting to dabble a little bit and looking comfortable doing so. Speaking of comfortable, bone cold, a freebie onto Nats through the smoke. Stars are actually yeah, in position to greet the. Uh, the TP from Gambit as well. And Chronicle, a little swing, a little late. Starzo finds that one. Uh, Defo, well, finds it on the second at least, but the first was a little delayed. I don't think Ascend are going to want to give him anything else in terms of ultimate progress. At least any further damage to the economy. Spike planted on B now. You can see already Bone Cole's picked up that position just inside spawn. He's creeping this direction. As if he at least wants to take it. Oh, Bonko did have to shoot there, but the readjust there from Defo will find Starzo as he creeps through pipes. Ascend. Alive. Yeah, three weapons saved across here. So a good opportunity to have a stab at this bonus round. And see if there's any adjustment here from Gambit. Whether they want to play this one out pretty slow and wait to see what mm. Ascend want to throw into this round. Yeah, the buy's actually not that bad for Ascend, really. Got two rifles, the Bulldog's it's still in. Again, so the, bu the Bulldog purchase again is what kind of changes that dynamic yeah, altogether. It's not as if it's a extra spec that you have to run it down and try and close I'm the coming. distance here. There's still the opportunity to kind of play distance. And maybe find an opening pick. Bomb buddy out. The flash goes in. Bone Cold's going to be working his way up towards Hooker. That's on the other side. Security Judge noted. <laughs> that's it, that's important. Down a. Zeke did actually lose life. Now, I can't remember if Zeke had one of the weapons. Oh. Okay. okay. Count enough. to three. Yeah, count to three, hold down mouse one, and you might get away with something. And he does. That's such a big opportunity now. Do they try and springboard off the back? I mean, uh, I guess logically you think, don't really want to hit Hooker when there is that judge lingering around that's kind of tricky to get past. We've actually got a pick towards the A site, and we have Showers Control building. Now as Seeker's coming in, they can kind of find at least one towards the site. Uh, not as much as you wanted. Yeah, almost nothing gained on the back of that. Red guard, this could He's be... So a... close on this. Brilliant, or it could be a disaster, oh, and no. it's the latter. Uh, Killer's going to just push him aside. It's now Chronicle feeling a little alone. He's got some support through heaven, but he's basically on an island here. The support's not going to be there in time, but he does at least manage to take down Bone Cold. So we are into a 3v3, but it is a post plan. Stars are creeping closer and closer. That wall goes up, will allow him to pass underneath heaven. Or he's pretty close to spawn here. And actually, a really nice flash through. He's going to find the first. Nat's good for the trade. A 2v2 presented now. Whether or not Shados and Nat's can. Do any further damage here, or actually make this a possibility. Killers has to respect it. Back away flash didn't do as much as they wanted. And look at the hold as soon as they tried to come through. Shados will have been noted now as well. So again, options looking very, very slim. Oh, and it's not pretty. No, Ascend going to do exactly as required. We did Last note that that remaining. purchase was pretty decent. And as soon as that judge was found, their options looked as though it was a gilded path towards that site. But again, a good thing. Yes, the round victory, but also fantastic ultimate progress across the board. Bone Cold now one away from the orbital strike. The Seekers invested in, again, in a round like that. You can't really blame it, even though they didn't really find anything out on the back of that. Dealt with very, very quickly. But key lens with that Viper's Pit. Available here for them to throw in. And uh, again, with this purchase coming out of Gambit, yeah, potentially could be a little messy because, I mean, they've got shotguns. They're going to want to play close contact and yeah. get up close and personal. That could cause problems inside the Viper's Ultimate. Death 
Ooh, couldn't. It's not pretty, but he does actually Spike get away with it. Down. Yeah, that's actually a big find. So, happy enough as a beginner. You can see now more commitment to the spot. rotation coming in from Gambit. Spike is recovered, though, so they could fall away from this if they want to. I don't actually think Shados purchased the regrowth here, so it's looking like Defo going to have to ride this out very low HP. Oh. Oh. There you go, yeah. He will actually get found as he tries to regress his way in. I'm not sure if this was an attempt to retrieve the weapon. So looking like Shados and Redgar will stack up to try and do just oh that. No. Well. What's Nat's got? Yeah, yeah, I think you can see looking it. Looking like a judge. Yeah. It's a little thick in the hand, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And we see what Link can do. Let's see how Nats does. Yeah, it's quite effective, isn't it, really? A little upgrade if he fancies it now, but they will take long off the back. So they've, I guess, it may be an information play, if you want to call it that. But it will be almost all players now coming back through from Gambit through Hooker at this point, at least. So I doubt they're going to be doing too much, and especially with this, Killers going to be keeping a this is so fair amount of space. Because he can literally just play at the, the safe distance here to the window dropout. It, it makes it so hard for anybody on Gambit to come through. As they actually send a couple of bullies Damn through it. long, try and navigate past this. God, I'm going to clear out some of these close angles here. Oh! Stars are nearly caught there. He's seen him. He's, he, he's in so much of a weird position now. He's just going to be traded. And it's killers to find Nats. You can hear the shotgun rattling off the shells. The trade for Zeke is now the 1v1. Time is everything. Shados gives in an attempt, and he actually gets it. I don't know how much time he'd have on this one, and it seems as though he's going to back away from it. There's a chance there if it is inside tube where he does he just could've... about have enough, I think. <sighs> but the fourth on the board for Ascend, and really trying to, well, starting to stretch their legs now. Seemingly, actually, four rounds in a row, the, the economy's not as flush as you'd maybe like to think. Viper's pit investors, we know. Zeke two away from the showstopper. Starzo one away from those seekers once again. Looking like a, a little bit of focus towards hookup from the side of Ascend here. Actually, on the flip side of that, three members of Gambit, early round at least, set up towards eight. Trying to clear through for now, but it's Red Guard this time. But they've heard a rifle, so I mean, if anything, that could maybe get them a little too comfortable. But what? actually, somehow Zeke turns that, and neither of those shots did enough to actually do that much damage. What on earth is this brute force from Ascend? Forcing their way through there against Stars are respecting, or not respecting, sorry, the uh, the Viper no. setup there. All the snake bite follow up. Ascend get themselves a comfortable post-plant situation here on B Gambit, uh, i got to say, probably considering the save here. The wall yeah. going up, that's going to seal the deal. More time, it's just nothing, nothing. But there's got to be a timeout from Gambit soon, right? We, uh, surely? Yeah, I, I mean, there's a little bit of a fumble there from Redgar. you got to argue he should have found that kill. Zeke's sure. able to readjust and find it. I mean, shooting out the back of his rifle, it looked like initially when he comes into hooker, but um, after that, it's it's... It's Nats to really find something, and like I said, Starzo just not, they're paying no respect whatsoever. Charges through, finds the second, and it's at that point the round's pretty much concluded. Mm. Well, Gambit do need to get a little bit of a grip on this one. 5-0 is where it starts to get to that time where the scoreboard looks a bit worrying. Now, depending on the purchase, Gambit comes in on this one with. Timeout could be now, or it could be in the next couple of rounds. Again, they can still... I mean, they can scrape something together. It yeah. won't be pretty, but Red, it, it Red Gar can light armor and drop a rifle. And that's sure. if he wants to invest the Vipers bit here, he can play a judge by all means. Exactly. Play a judge it's here. We've already seen him happy to lean towards it. So maybe not in this round, would you call the timeout? But soon enough, you've got to maybe consider addressing a couple of the issues. And it looks like you were bang on with what the purchase was going to look like. Not here, but neither Nats nor Red Gar over towards McGratty. That's going to take the TP at the start uh. of the round. Oh, so much faith. Defo fully trusting there, and actually the Viper's bit going to be invested to re-secure control oh, of Hooker. Ooh, a little fruity, like it. Or different, but... Is that quick to act on this? Look at this. Oh, wow, Starzo's in a 
bit of danger. Look at these HP. He's been absolutely like ripped down. Now, at this point, if you're Ascend, you do want to speed up the pace, right? You've been almost herded into this direction. Maybe into that shotgun. Maybe just Chronicle. But a one-for-one one trade-out still allows safe passage enough for the spike to start being ferried to the site. But there's a lot of players here from Gambit. Defo being one of them. Killer's now down. Seen it on towards the site itself. Taps the spike. Doesn't go for the full plant, though. Oh, no, I see dug oh. out of lamps here. It's dreamy. You tap the spike, you wait to see if Gambit get over aggressive, and they do. Now that's one not bad though, that's enough to at least give you a bit of hope, but it is now down to just one. Half HP at that for Shados. He's have to try and find something, you can see it. Straight through the TP, Cena, it's out of there. 49 HP. Yes, he's got the rifle now, but uh, again, Cena, gotta be careful here. Shados can get here kind of ahead of the curve. Might be able to find a 1v1 before Zeke's able to stabilize, but finds that position now. Shados made even more difficult with the showstopper being popped. It's just like a barrier gets kind of put up throughout this map for that time. Just going to send it, but it has bought a fair amount, and these angles are going to be tricky to clear in a quick fashion. Not going to happen. Zeke going to keep it in wraps, it's and this is looking one-sided, mate. This it's, it's clinical from Ascend. It's, uh, I mean, they're, they're finding all the information they need at the start of these rounds, yeah. and again, finding every single kill that they need as well. Now, Gambit got a little creative in that last round using, you know, the, the Vipes pit to an extent in a creative manner. But again, you know, that kind of then oh. spurred on the hit from Ascend and kind of went to the way. I mean, the response was immediate there. I if anything, if the plan initially is for Nats to come through on the back of contact, pop that Vipers pit and secure control of oh. Sand and Hooker, there needs to be a third person for Gambit on A. Uh, yes. I mean, it's, it's almost a given that what you've got between five and 10 seconds if it's send full boot it towards a site that they're going to be able to find a 4v2 yep. um which is again for one of the discussions we had in map one you talk about the contingency plans for gambit it's, it's almost completely absent in that round um almost part of, there's no way that viper's pit gets popped and they send hang around to fight for hooker there's, oh. there's just no scenario that happens it, it's you know what your utility is intending to do, but you've also got to then step to that next layer of kind of making the assumption of what the other team's going to do in response, right? Like, that's what you're trying to do. You're yeah, trying to so good at that. that. Exactly. Normally, that's their bread and butter, right? That's what we've kind of always credited them towards. They're very good at manipulating the opponents, kind of reading that next layer towards them, but uh, maybe ascend. Again, as, as soon as they touched that spike, they were so ready to find that next layer of aggression that was coming out from Gambit through uh, through lamps. And let's roll our minds back a little bit to when we talked about, yeah, Gambit flawless on the defense. Defense, right? That was always kind of the yep. uh, the That's trademark the here, but uh, they're trailing by six rounds here. Um, and Bind, one of the maps where I, I feel early on, especially when we saw them kind of break out of the CIS matchups, Bind down. was one where they did actually struggle the most on attack. So let's wait and see here. It's, it's getting a little weird on short. Oh! Right <laughs> Just hold down that one. Yeah. He yep. was fully blind. Fully blind. Blink and you miss it. Yeah, just a casual. Miles end. around. Yeah, no worries. Back on the Viper's pit as well. This was meant to be the one to go the distance. Uh, I mean, it's it, it's looking scary at this point because now what it, what a gambit did. Uh, does a pace does a pace change suit them uh, with the way these rounds have gone out? No, I don't think it does. Oh, um, really? I think Ascend have been in the driving seat since since the pistol round. To be honest with you. Yeah. Wow. So this is essentially what the timeout should be for this round. So the last one was just kind of get it out of the way, see if our, you know, force, not even forced by that kind of little bit of an investment could have got them anything. It didn't. Now this has to be it. But Gambit do look like they want to switch up a little. This will be found, though. Great work from Defo to still get one. Do they get away? Yeah. Still a trade for Bone Cold. Yeah, if anything, that favors Ascend more so. The Seekers invested over towards a site. Will be dealt with pretty quickly again. They're not going to learn an awful lot on the back of that. <laughs> Keyless so Keyless lands more when he's blind. It looks like it's uh, going to get himself set up comfortably here. Potential here to pop the Viper's pit. There you go. It does come through. Bone Cold will get the spike planted. Okay, Shados. Oh, what? What are those two kills from Shados? <laughs> That was disgusting. I don't understand. I don't understand anymore. Nothing makes sense. Ascender down to two. Three players on the playback in. Zeke. Oh, my word. Zeke, what is going on, Hypo? What are these rounds, dude? And now Chronicle just left to die. 
That was absolute filth from Shados there. Yes. And they still somehow... Still lost. I mean, they, they removed the one kind of safety net that Ascend have there, which is the Viper Spear. Literally within three three to five seconds, we were being arrested. Check him, PC. Check him, PC. Something is not normally. See what isn't normally. <laughs> yeah. Eight nil. <laughs> yeah. What is going on, Dan? <laughs> uh, oh. <laughs> Fair enough. Yep. Spike down Fair A. enough. Uh, we've seen that before, though. And it looks like Gamba have dabbled with aggression as the answer just yeah. run at him. The first time we've seen him, I think, convert a first blood into a second here. Yeah. Uh, send now pile on the pressure, try and swing through. Oh. Stars out. He's not afraid of any presence shown here. Again, just feeling themselves. The Hunter Fury actually gets invested here. No tags come through unless Bone Cold tagged with the last one. Oh, actually very close because the snake bite in that combination there, nasty. that could have been deadly. Yeah, Bone Cold, lucky boy. Launching smoke. Ow. Look at Gambit. They're, they're literally locked. herded into into spawn. Sarzo, what are you going to do with this? You know he wants to. Maybe wait for the smoke to do. Pop flash, and away we go. Yeah, oh, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Sarzo can back he away from down. that. He's done everything he needed. Molly goes in, more time, more options removed, a little bit more damage. One enemy remaining. To give him the bone cold now to try and find the last. Maybe Starzo to get it. Uh, this, this is. is. Uh, they are putting on a clinic right now. Yeah. Uh, and Gambit seemingly just don't have a response whatsoever. Oh, there's nothing. They've had a timeout and they've come up with absolutely nothing at this point. It was point. a 3v5. Yeah. Uh, again, yes, you could argue lesser investment. Gambit now back on a purchase. Defo with that operator in hand. Bladestorm available as well, but Ascender able to cycle their ultimate so effectively in these rounds. Cnet's three and three right now. <laughs> Barely even called upon on the not stage needed. yet. Yeah, it's 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 not. He doesn't need to do anything. Ascender literally bodying Gambit right now. It is nice to see Ascend do well and not be just the Cnet show, right? We've seen it before with other teams where you have that one very like. Uh, top end player, so like Scream for example, then we I'm love it when we see Liquid not have to depend on that, but it just be an element. Party's an element to this could be Defo potentially. Finally, Gambit Five finding two, but we've seen plenty of opportunities like this be dragged out of their hands, but right place, right time for Gambit. Plenty of players on the site. Oh, well, no, I see actually going to get this res on Sand. It looks like he's headed that direction. So we'll come back to potentially a 4v5 in favor of Gambit. Seen it cautious though to invest it. I'm not entirely sure why, because he's got full control of Hooker right now. I think maybe leaving it late enough that, that they don't know that this hit's coming through towards yeah. A. But Bokold is headed that way with the spike. He just has to sell this though. He still has to set just that little bit more. And that'll do it. That should really do it. Now they may stick around, but hesitation is going to be the name of the game. seconds left. And okay. Killers is walking through the signs. Redgar has got him at this point. They've got they to know. know. They've got to yeah, know. What? And Cena does not care though. Chronicle, it's on you, and he's lost it. And now the one v one. But it's gonna be enough time to get that spike plan. They know where Redgar was. So Bone Cold, what do you do with this? HP is a little lower than I'm sure he'd like. Slips away towards long. What's he have left? Doesn't no. Okay. Nothing. He's going to reset the hooker. Again, this is going to run the clock down here. Redgar going to clear out all these close angles. He's got to be cautious of elbow. He's got to be cautious of all these ratty spots. Yep. Cue the Benny Hill music. I prefer Around the World. Okay. Bone Cold could have spotted here. It's not even halved yet, so... It's just... Have you ever heard the phrase put a fork in it? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, this is kind of wild to consider, actually. We, we maybe on the brink of a 12-0 half. Against Gambit. Yes. Against Gambit. On their defensive half. <laughs> you know, like the current holders, I guess, of the highest accolade in Valorant, Gambit. This is madness. And again, <laughs> Ascend play that so, so slowly. Oh. Um, the fact that Defo and Chronicle stay as late as they do to consider the possibility of the res, and Cena doesn't just throw it in the winds. Kiles does everything he can to sell that fake. Unfortunately, I think Redgar finds the kill just at the right time. 
<laughs> what is this? Where were you when Gambit was killed? I mean, this is just... The first map went to overtime, by the way. Yes. Like, it was neck and neck. I mean, I didn't get this version of the script, if I'm honest. I don't know. Is there a new version that we missed out on? Maybe there was a meeting. We didn't We didn't get the updated version where it's meant to be a 12-0, apparently. It's karma for Yinsu trying to jinx it. Do you know what? It's so nice the gods yeah. are shining on us. Yeah. Didn't do NA last chance qualifiers. Got away with that one. Oh! <laughs> He's getting away with daylight robbery. Yeah, it's just Shados now. With the weight of Gambit on his shoulders and a lovely flash, but it's still not enough. <laughs> it's all working out. It's beautiful. It's actually beautiful to watch. I mean, unless you're a Gambit fan. Round in the Gambit half. fans not loving it. But again, I, I'll say it as well, with the sense kind of <laughs> rise within EMEA, how, lo how long has it been since we've seen them be this comfortable yeah. on, on any map? Again, it's where, where people have, I, I guess, caught up initially to the standard they set, but... This is flawless. There's, there's, there's nothing really you can fault Gambit on here because Ascender just playing completely lights out. Pretty much, and and yeah, you can say you know maybe they don't want to give too much away. They're being outclassed. Exactly, it's it's all encompassing. Now the double stack on Long is actually going to push down, but they are going to be noted. Gun out now. They're still going to gun them down. Shoulder peeks in and just delivers him to the grave. Gambit this can't get. This is 12-0. This yeah. is going to be 12-0. Uh, this is. Completely mad. Uh, a red guard will find Starzo drifting forwards. The cosmic divide invested, so it will slow Ascend down, but it's almost like a desperation to, yeah. to beg them not to hit B site. Ascend reset just a little bit. Try and potentially find one of these kills in rotation, but there's nothing there for them. Defo makes his way back towards pipes on eight. Red guard considering drifting out onto sand here. Now Zeke. Got to be cautious. So they could line up for him here. The first given, a freebie for Redgar. It's oh. actually a second as well. It's third on the round. See, so it invest that res now. Zeke back on his feet. All the steps heard. Chronicle knows that that is now the next pressure point. He knows it's still going to be coming forward. Does spot no. one. Maybe 11 one. Maybe not. A 1v2 left. now. Defo. Yeah. Not an easy scenario. And it's going to be a 12 0 on the half. I cannot believe what we're seeing here. Now, again, we, we can. Th th there's no way in which anyone would have said this is the likely outcome. I don't care who you are. So for Lothar. Do you think he's a 12 0? Did we hear that? Uh, I'd, I'd, I'd love to see his notes actually, just ahead of this. It's a big 12 yeah. 0 tick. That's it. <laughs> well, at least Redgar's still smiling. Yeah, he's, he's happy enough. Get a posture check in there somewhere. Make me sit up straight for a second. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, okay. Yeah, 12 to 0. Observers. They need this pistol round, Lauren. That's a whole lot of cake <laughs> to be shown on the screen at this point. Yeah. Bloody hell, I could hear them laughing. <laughs> oh. Mel's influence echoes, yeah, truly, echoes on. Truly. I thought Harry Bow and Jay would be above that sort of behavior. Apparently not. I mean, Brimstone is. Oof. He has no right. <laughs> no right. <laughs> 12 to 0, zero right. Um, Ascend, though, with such a lead at this point. Gambit, this would be, if anything... It's not looking uh, good. That, it sounds good. like a swan song, if anything, as there's now two of them alive. And I cannot believe what we've seen at this point. It's... it's That's a frenzy. You want that one. There we go. Um, Defo, what you got for us? Anything here? TP going to be taken and a quick dash across towards the other side where Kilos will be waiting. Still utility to play with time to be bought, HP to be dwindled if wanted. Jump that. Chronicle, what you got for us? Nothing. And now it's all down to one. This has been the wildest of games we've seen in a while. Defo at least going to find Kilos, but the rest looks like a mountain in front of him that he has to try and climb. And oh, the shots go astray and so does the entirety of the game. It's 13 to 0. No comment. I, I, honestly, I, I have absolutely nothing to say to Ascend. Putting on a show. Uh, they didn't even break a sweat, it felt like. Whereas in the first map, I felt like it was almost like it was uh, the war of attrition. Yes. Was won out by Ascend. Gambit felt like they were in the driving seat. I, I feel like Gambit didn't connect to that second lobby. No, I'm with you. I mean, Nat's getting two kills. Chronicle didn't even break double digits. It was a flat performance.
But, I mean, again, for us, we were just kind of passengers in this, and it definitely caught us off by a substantial amount. Even if it was an Ascend win, I think most of us are going, okay, fair enough. No one would have gone, yeah, 13-0, of course. Yeah, I, I, I definitely didn't see that coming. And then, but this is now terrifying for Ascend to put up this against what we're currently pitting as the best team in the world, right? This, this is absolute madness to consider. Well, speaking of things to consider, the analyst desk. What on earth are you going to make of that one, Yinzu? This has got to be blowing your mind as well, right? Yeah, I mean, my mind is blown, but more importantly, Pan Pog have just casted something there were no technical uh, pauses. It didn't go to OT, Lothar. I'm more worried about that than this 13-0. What is going on? Is this the reality or is this like a... What's happening? Yeah. It's like a second dimension that, 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 this, that didn't happen in a different one. Yeah. I mean, I... all we need now is for G2 to 13-0 ascend. And now we've got a full circle of everybody just 13 0 Well, definitely not in this tournament <laughs> anymore. <laughs> I mean, you don't have many matches like this. It, oh, he was blind. Too. He was blind. He yeah. gets a 2K after being blinded. This um, just feels like, you know, I, I like to analyze the smart things, utility usage and so on. But in a 13 hour blowout where no one hits their shots and is just being outclassed on a on a fundamental level, it's just kind of hard to say what exactly happened. It just Gambit just gets dismantled, right? And there's, there's nothing else to say. Uh... <laughs> I mean, how much do we read into this? How much do we read into... Uh, are people are definitely going to react to this as, oh, I can't believe Masters Berlin's winners Gambit have been 13-0 so soon after the tournament, but could this just be one of those anomalies that it just happens every now and then? I hope so, because it didn't look like it for um, after the first map. first map was very yeah. competitive. It was 15-13, if I remember correctly, and uh, uh, both teams were just going blow for blow, uh, blow for blow. So, so uh, this second map is unprecedented, I would say, and I have no clue what to read into it unless we would just ask literally Gambit what happened. Maybe there were some external factors that we don't know about, right? But it just feels like that wasn't the team that typically just appears on the server because even the the basic stuff that was there was missing. There was just no. Um, it feels like they were just not communicating at some point. Yeah, I mean we had we had the whole uh, game of Redgar cam and Redgar seemed quite relaxed towards the end. He was laughing a little bit. I mean you just have to laugh yeah. right, when those things happen. Well, just make it, let's make it clear. This tournament for Gambit, like losing this match, doesn't mean like the end of the world. For them, playing at Champions is the main goal, right, mm -hmm. for this year. This is going to be the last tournament for them. Uh, and right now, this is more like a test run against Ascend and other teams here. And even if they lose, you know, no harm done here, right? Yeah, but what about the side of Ascend? Because, you know, outside of the uh, Haven that we saw yesterday, uh, they look great. They look like the best they've ever been. Well, it actually bodes well for Ascend because it looks like they, they are fixing something that was always a problem for Ascent when it comes to just having the, let, let's say, be on the same page for the entire team, right? Mm -hmm. They had some hero plays coming from every single player at some point because they're just so filled with talent on every single slot. But what was sometimes missing was that ability to trade your teammates, to go in the same timing, to be on the same page when it comes to how do we, uh, how do we approach this retake, how do we approach this attack. And right now on, this, on those two maps that we have seen against Gambit, it seemed like they are really on point. And what is even more important when you think about Split, it was CNET with 39 kills, right? But it was the team working together uh, and just happened so that CNET got the most kills. And on Bind, it was a 13-0 with other players stepping it up and CNET being at like, a, I think, three kills and three deaths at some point, right? So you see that Ascend is being built as every single player is capable of, of carrying, right? While if they work as a team, then it doesn't really matter who steps up because the team just wins as a unit. Yeah, but it also felt like they've kept their cards quite close to their chest because this is the comp they've been running yes, for, for sure. a long time. And even Split, they stuck with something that we've seen before. Uh, do you, would you like to see them uh, still play this comp, which at this point going into Champions feels almost not even outdated. It feels almost like a little bit different because no one else is going to be running this. Um, I mean, there's no point for them to change anything. At this, this stage, if, you, if they play again Bind tomorrow, uh, I don't think they should change anything because 
as we always say about the champions, like you don't want to spill the beans, right? Whatever yeah. you have prepared. And I feel like that's very important. And also it just works. So if it works, why change it? Mm. Uh, but also, what does this mean for the rest of the teams in this tournament? Everybody wanted to face Gambit. Everybody thought Gambit would be the favorite, but they're out here in the quarterfinals, which, which means oh, it's setting us up for quite an interesting semifinals and also finals because G2, the previous winners, they mm -hmm. cannot win the tournament. Uh, yep. Gambit, the big, big favorites are out. Uh, I'm kind of looking forward to one of the lesser known teams maybe sneakily take the crown. Well, we're going to have Giants versus Ascent, mm -hmm. right? And I feel like that's, um, I would like to say that it's going to be close. But if I would have said, oh, it's my hope it's going to be closer than against Gambit, that sounds like so ridiculous, right? <laughs> because who would have, we thought, we all thought that this map, that this match between Ascent and Gambit is going to be at least four maps, most likely five. No one would predict it. It's going to be the home ground yeah. run, essentially, for Ascent, right? And it's a 2-0. But also, Ascend and Giants, they both pick Bind, right, as their home ground today. So yeah. that will be very interesting to see these two teams play against each other. And specifically because Giants have such a different approach to Bind than any other team. They don't play the Viper, they have Astra as a controller, right? Uh, and and they, they just play it more, let's say, on the basic level that we typically have seen Bind being played before the meta of the Vipers. Uh, which is interesting because it, it's like a clash of styles. And I hope, I'm hoping CNED sticks with the jet tomorrow, give it his all, and we get a really, really competitive match. But now the pressure is off a little bit because I'm sure they wanted to get their revenge on Gambit. They mm -hmm. want to at least beat Gambit. Do you feel like tomorrow might be the place where they go back to that experimentation phase, bring out something new again? I don't think so. When they're so close to the goal of winning this tournament, I mean, this is just me reading into like human psyche right it's just <laughs> oh we're so close let's just grab it right why troll now yeah uh, well uh, thank you very much Lothar I'm gonna let you rest for a second because uh, we've got Bone Cold standing by for a post-match interview hi Bone Cold welcome to the show congratulations on that victory a 13-0 against Gambit uh, how pleased are you with our result I don't think Bone Cold can hear me <laughs> Uh, we're going to come back to Bone Call later. I think we're going to fix some... Uh, I, I, I guess he was, uh, he was doing his best CNED impression, Lothar. That's all I can say about that. <laughs> all I can hear is just Tom Biz uh, laughing uh, in the background. It's also awesome. Mitch laughing, yeah. everyone's laughing. <laughs> but oh. I honestly think... Well, we'll take that as him doing his CNED impression because I feel like <laughs> CNED would have responded to my question in the same way. But oh. here is the bracket uh, going forward. Uh, we've got... Giant versus Ascend and Ten Star versus Team Liquid. I'm going to put it out there, but I think Ten Star have a chance. I really think they have a chance. Well, I did pick him for the group from to get out of the groups, right? As um, most likely a second place, but maybe even winners. They did look really well in, uh, when they were played in the, uh, when they were playing in the VCT. They played together since I remember correctly from September. So very fresh team, uh, but they are a force to be reckoned with. We didn't see them yet on stream here uh, so i'm really looking forward to tomorrow and this is gonna be because uh, they already won 2-0 against london united if yep. i remember correctly against liquid i don't think it's gonna be a 2-0 so really looking forward to this match yeah me too uh, i believe bone Cold is ready once more uh, okay, let's I'm try this up. again uh let's try this again let's bring him in and hopefully he can hear me this time hi bone Cold. welcome to the show i'm hoping this time around you can hear me Yes, now I can. Awesome, awesome, thank you. Uh, well, my first question to you is that you guys managed to 13-0 Gambit. Uh, how good does that feel? Uh, I mean, mine is one of our strongest maps. I mean, uh, I, I feel like the whole team today was, um, what is it? We were very well prepared. Um, I feel like uh, like the whole team was going full speed today. It was very nice. Uh, I don't know, we just had very fun today playing against Gambit and it really showed. Uh, well, I want to rewind things a little bit to yesterday because we saw you play on stream yesterday as well. Uh, what happened on Haven with the comp? Because we didn't expect all of that to come out. Uh, and did you, have you guys planned for that? Has CNET been practicing his Astra? Uh, like CNET has been feeling a lot on ranked. Uh, we have been feeling that maybe Starkshaw could be a better fit for, to be our <laughs> superstar of the team. Also, uh, we had our Zeke, he, he really wanted to experiment things that the community wanted, so he wanted to really play KO, so it kind of all just came together and we just wanted to 
Uh, we kind of were bragging a little bit to play that comp. Uh, we had we had a lot of fun playing that game. <laughs> well, uh, if Haven comes out again tomorrow, are we going to see that comp again? It's a possibility. You never know. We are in boot camp. We are making ours too. You never know what to expect from us. <laughs> well, I look forward to it. But Burncold, what about you? I, I want to see you. You know, do a Redgar, get on that Rainer, get on that Jet. Uh, have you ever thought about trying one of those agents? We actually had a, our community Discord. We had somebody asking me to play Reina, and NBS actually gave me a big thumbs up on the comment that I should pick it up. Mm. So we have to we have to see and prepare something nice for the next games. I can't wait for that. If NBS is giving uh, giving you the uh, thumbs up, I think you can definitely whip it out in an official. Uh, now your next opponent, are Giants. They are looking very good as well. They're also at boot camp. But what are you expecting from that matchup tomorrow? Uh, I mean, we're here to, to just, uh, what is it, get our uh, fundamentals correct, have fun with our teammates. Uh, I feel like one of our giants will be no problem for us. Oh, I look forward to it very much. Uh, thank you so much, Burncold, for joining us. And best of luck in your game tomorrow. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, I think we should address the oh, Stark, so it's going to be that big uh, star player now. <laughs> maybe maybe, maybe yeah, He's a star direction. for the team, for sure. He dances around, you know, yeah. he's always in the, <laughs> in, in the lights, right, in, in the spotlight. But uh, you can definitely tell that that was a joke. Yeah, I... I approach I, from Bob I, We should just perpetuate that narrative. Everyone's just going to... All the Turkish fans are going to freak out right now. For <laughs> sure. CNET is not going to be on that jet anymore. But it's good to hear that they're relaxed, they're having fun. And uh, this is the ascent that we want to see, right, when they're not under too much pressure and they can just, like Bonecold said, work on the fundamentals. Yeah, I'm really happy to see them in, a, in such a mode. But who wouldn't be when they're 13-0 gambit? Mm. Right? It's just like, okay, we just did it. Everyone will be talking about it for the next year. Yeah, I'm, I, I feel better for G2 now. Everyone's going to forget the G2 13-0. <laughs> it's going to be the new Gambit 13-0. Uh, but we saw a lot of incredible plays today. But the Legion a play of the day goes to none other than the man, the headshot machine, Scream. See the drone clear the close angle of Soulcats. Actually leaving in quite an awkward spot. He fights it and does actually manage to get a one for one trade. And although there is a red Scream has just started oh, popping and it's three in a row. What's oh, going for the whole team? Four now down for Scream. He's looking to put the final nail in the coffin. And there is only one man remaining in his way. It's the ace out from Scream. And you can even see him on the camera. He knows what he's just done. I feel like Fnatic are going to have nightmares about that tonight. Uh, but Scream, back on form. It's always great to see ahead of an international tournament. He was dead. He came back from the dead. Yeah. And just <laughs> from the grave, he killed five people and fragged out and got an ace. Like, that's something that you just put in a script, right? And just play it out, right? It, it shouldn't have happened. Yeah. And also, is the Sage getting five assists from that? That will, we should go back and check on that because that's the. I'm actually not certain. That is the most uh, big brain res of all time. Who would have known? You just <laughs> yeah. res Scream and let him do the, do the thing. You get the stats buff. Uh, exactly. But Scream, he is the gift that keeps on giving. And speaking of a giveaway, I've got a great one for you guys at home. It's competition time. Lenovo, Lenovo Legion are the official hardware partner of Red Bull Homeground. And they've got a great giveaway, like I said, for you guys to get involved with. The Legion Y2525 is one of the fastest PC screens on the market with its 240 hertz rapid refresh rate the images are crisp free from motion blur and let you see every detail you need to get the drop on your opponent and if you want a chance to win one here is what you need to do first make sure you go into twitch chat now and use the command exclamation mark a legion you can also go to win.gs forward slash legion or to twitter to answer the following question now how many Valorant agents are there in the game? The competition is now open. You must be 18 and over to enter and situated in UK or Europe. The closing date is the 7th of November at 11 p.m. GMT. And that's how you can win a Legion monitor. Uh, best of luck to everyone who's entering this uh, giveaway. I'm gonna make you guys answer that question at the end uh, of the show. After the grand finals, maybe when the competition yeah. is closed. Can, can I win still? It? Can I still win? Uh, you'd have to go enter, Lothar. I, I mean, I did yesterday when you said it. It's exclamation mark Legion. I went to the Twitch chat. <laughs> I was like, actually? exclamation mark Legion. <laughs> I can do it again. 
Yeah, you can do it again. I mean, I think this it would be a bit unfair for you to be the winner. Uh, okay. We do we do have an MVP award coming up soon as well. I can announce. I think to tomorrow maybe. Uh, that's another monitor as well. So Ooh. maybe you can win that. We can go vote Lothar MVP. Wow, that would have been the first. Then, <laughs> oh no, don't say that. Okay, we're gonna have to make that happen now. Uh, but that is all the time we have for today in terms of the action. Let's check tomorrow's schedule so you guys know exactly what is happening in the semi-finals of Red Bull home ground. Ten Star will be taking on Team Liquid first followed by Vodafone Giants versus Ascend. I'm going to put you on the spot here, Lothar. Mm -hmm. uh, who's booking themselves a ticket to the Grand Finals? I would say Liquid, but it's going to be a close match. Uh, and then I would probably say still Ascend. Ooh, Liquid Ascend. The champions teams you feel like mm -hmm, are going through. Mm -hmm. I feel like that might be the case. I think it'd be really important, really exciting for a 10 star versus Vodafone Giants as well. I mean, it would have been cool to see. And I'm rooting for both of those teams because um, it's always nice to root for the underdogs. And right now, 10 star and Giants, it's kind of funny to be named Giants and being the underdog. But <laughs> they are the underdogs in those matchups, but it would be really cool if they win their matchups just to have like this storyline being built here. Yeah, we got a bracket uh, as well to show you guys uh, one more time today. Uh, like I said, 10 star versus Liquid, followed by Giants versus Ascend. Uh, the winners of those will be going to the grand final. Of course, the home ground rules still apply. We haven't seen a single game here on stream that go past 2-0 uh, Lothar. For me, I mean, I, I, I would like to see some of the underdogs go through, but I would also like to see it go the distance. I just realized that. You're right. Yeah. There was not a single game that wasn't a 2-0. Mm -hmm. What the? These teams are just too good at this point. <laughs> or Every too bad. <laughs> well, everyone's. I feel like everyone's got their map pulled down. You know, I feel like the uh -huh, last home uh -huh. ground we had some like iffiness here and there, but for this one, every single team is really on top of it with their map pulls. Yeah, and it, in the previous home ground, it, it all came down to who had a better ice box, essentially. Yeah, right? yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, um, and that's it for today, I believe. Uh, like I said, tomorrow we have two very exciting semi-finals. Thank you so much, Lothar, for joining me. Uh, thanks to... <laughs> I'd retract that. <laughs> Thank you to Patty at High Fog and Mitch and Tom as well. And to all of you guys are watching at home. We're going to be back tomorrow with a semi-final starting with 10 Star versus Team Liquid. We'll see you then.